Hey everyone, welcome back to another video, and in today's video, this is basically a massive compilation of some of my most well-known iceberg videos. So basically, it will be three different iceberg videos in this one video to make a giant iceberg video, and I will have a title card with the thumbnail of that video at each section of the video for each iceberg that I have made before. And quickly, just before the video starts, make sure to support me with the YouTube memberships by clicking the join button, or if you want to support me on Patreon instead, make sure to check out the link in the description where you can support me on Patreon. All right, let's get straight into the compilation. Tier one, not scary. Smallstep.gov. Smallstep.gov is a PSA campaign from Ad Cancel that encourages people to change the ways they do things in their life with their health. All of the PSAs follow different scenarios where people find parts of the body that seem to be overweight, such as the stomach, hips, double chin, and even those fat peaches. I'm pretty sure the campaign was ending in 2004, as all the PSAs I could find in this campaign are only from 2004. They basically use the ideas to stay healthy that are on their website and make PSA out of it to convince people to do some of those steps. Smokey Bear PSAs This is an American campaign telling the viewer that only you can prevent forest fires from the company Ad Cancel. This campaign in particular started in 1942 when the US government lost the rights to use Bambi in their fire safety PSAs. After losing the rights, Smokey Bear was finally created in 1944 with a long-running slogan of the campaign, Only You Can Prevent Forest Fires, was created in 1947. There have been many different PSAs made using Smokey's likeness. Some are good and deliver a good message to the viewer in a well-done way, and there are other PSAs that I mentioned in my last iceberg that are just confusing. Even with the weird PSA Smokey Bear has had over time, it's still the longest-running PSA campaign of all time. McGruff the Crime Dog McGruff the Crime Dog is another series of PSAs from the company Ad Cancel. This series of PSAs started back in 1981 and mainly had PSAs about, well, crimes. The most well known one in the series is about kids talking to strangers, where McGruff tells us how 60 kids disappear every day in the US and that you shouldn't talk to strangers because they might have the attentions of kidnapping you. Even Family Guy had a skit where Brian becomes McGruff's sidekick in the well known PSA that I just mentioned. Ad Cancel made quite a few PSAs with McGruff all the way through until about the late 90s, which I've seen. The series is still around as there is a McGruff the Crime Dog YouTube channel, but they seem to have separated from Ad Cancel at one point. Also, I haven't watched the recent Chip and Dale movie, but he shows up in the background in one scene, and that's interesting. Danny Elfman PSAs There are only two of these PSAs I could find, and they're both from 1986, and are set in the exact same place as they're both represented by the LA Sheriff's Department. The first PSA talks about drinking and driving, whilst the other one talks about not doing drugs. I just find it weird that Danny Elfman says he's from Oingo Boingo for people to recognise him. By the way, if you don't know who Oingo Boingo are, they made songs like Weird Science for the movie of the same name, Dead Man's Party and Stay. Nowadays, Danny Elfman's known for his movie scores, such as his scores for Nightmare Before Christmas, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy, and Tim Burton's Batman. Also to note, he's made scores for almost all of Tim Burton's movies. Anyways, the PSAs themselves just have Danny talking to the viewer about these topics and saying that you shouldn't do those things. And for drink driving, Danny tells you to literally take any other option to get home before even thinking of drink driving. Tips for Former Smokers Tips for Former Smokers is a series of American PSAs under the company's Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC for short. The PSAs were aired around 2012-2014 and they center around people that have suffered long-term effects from smoking, trying to give other smokers tips to deal with the effects that they have. The most well-known out of the campaign are definitely Terry Hall's PSAs, but they all do serve the same purpose, so I don't really have much else to say about this campaign. Be Travel Wise A Canadian PSA released in the year 1986 follows a few puppets of geese arriving back in some Canadian airport. The wife puppet discusses how people can't bring certain things back like animals from other countries and plants as they may carry diseases. But is there really anything else to say about this one? It's literally just puppet geese coming back from somewhere with items that they shouldn't have. That's literally it. The Real Cost A lot of American PSAs So The Real Cost is a company that started making PSAs in the 2010s and is trying to tell the viewer not to smoke by telling them different things cigarettes do to your body. Some of their most well-known PSAs are definitely the ones from around 2014 where people have to give up more than cash to pay for their cigarettes, such as smooth skin and teeth. The company still makes PSAs telling people not to smoke. So I really don't have much else to say about this company, and their PSAs are just kind of average. Besides the ones I just talked about before, the 2014 ones without the pay, their cigarettes are more than just money that they give up something else. And I know those kind of traumatize kids when they're younger too, but I don't really have anything else to say. This job will break you if you let it. 
Yet another Kenyan PSA, but this one's a very recent one as it was only released last year as of recording this. It follows a woman being overworked in an office, staying until extremely late hours, stressing that she may get fired if she doesn't keep on staying. When she's in the office, a biscuit comes to life and sings to the worker that she should go home, and how staying at work all the time is affecting everyone else around her. Also, let me say that hearing a PSA say words like fuck and shit is really strange. Listen. This 60 second long PSA from the American company you know more made a PSA that aired at the time of the 2015 Super Bowl. Also, it's apparently the first ever Super Bowl PSA to address domestic <laughs> and sexual assault. And the PSA was actually funded by the NFL. So the PSA lets us listen to a real phone call to the authorities where a female pretends that she's ringing into a pizza shop to try and get out of her abuse situation. The PSA visualizes a messy house with a sink full of dishes, a messy bed and a hole in the wall as well as a few other things as we hear the phone call to get a good idea of why she's ringing the authorities. Text fades in at the end of the PSA to say when it's hard to talk, it's up to us to listen. He-Man A PSA that was released sometime in the 80s that it's actually from the show He-Man and the Masters of the Universe follows the characters He-Man, She-Ra and Orko. The characters talk to the viewer about inappropriate touching and how you should tell someone if you've been touched wrongly. I don't know, I just always found it weird how kids animated shows have to have messages for kids at the end of each episode or just randomly on TV. It's one of the weirdest things in the 80s that I will never understand. Francis the Firefly Francis the Firefly is a 90s PSA from Fire Kills in the UK and it's an animated short to tell kids not to mess with matches. They do this by showing the main character Francis getting convinced by Cocky Roach the Cockroach to use a match because Francis doesn't light up like the other fireflies. When Francis uses the match, he accidentally burns his wings in the kingdom. After that happens, he meets with the king to give us a reminder to never play the matches. Dog in a Hot Car This is a PSA that was released in 1987 from the American Humane Society, basically telling people not to leave dogs in their cars. PSA explains that leaving your dog in the car on a hot day could kill your pet as they can suffer really bad heat stroke and temperatures above 110 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 43 degrees Celsius. It's just a pretty simple and straightforward PSA without any graphic imagery. Charlie says, A simple series of stop motion paper animated public information films from COI in 1973. The PSAs play at a few different events with Charlie the cat and the boy. Drenning PSA, which I've talked about quite a few times, follows Charlie playing in puddles with the boy near a lake until Charlie accidentally jumps into the lake and almost drowns. It's until the dad fishes out the cat of the lake that the message is delivered to the viewer when Charlie and the boy are at home. The boy tells the viewer to stay near your parents and to be careful around water. In another PSA, we follow Charlie as he watches sausages cook on a stove. Little bits of oil splash onto Charlie and then Charlie walks away until the boy tells us to stay away from stoves and that there are many hot things that can hurt you. In the last PSA I'll mention, Charlie and the boy are playing in the playground until a man comes up to the boy and asks him if he wants to see some puppies. He says yes and as he's about to go with the man, Charlie comes in to stop and tell him that he shouldn't go with a man that he doesn't know. They both end up going to their mother and telling them about what happened. The mother says that they did a good thing so the boy got an apple and Charlie got a fish. Partnership for a Drug Free America This is an American company that made plenty of PSAs trying to tell people not to do drugs and it was founded in 1985. Partnership for a Drug Free America has made so many different PSAs from well-known ones like This Is Your Brain on Drugs, Cleaning Girl, I Learned About Watching You, to really weird, less well-known ones like Join the Party, Puppet Strings, and I'm Not a Chicken. To be fair, Partnership for Drug Free America did make some great PSAs like I've mentioned before, Cemetery, Everybody's Doing It, and Nebraska Couple. The PSAs that Partnership for a Drug Free America made were shown to actually make more people do drugs, mostly in pre-teens. In 1996, weed use had actually doubled in that age demographic, which is actually wild. Concerned Children's Advertisers Concerned Children's Advertisers is a Canadian company that made plenty of PSAs throughout the 90s and early 2000s, trying to educate children about many different topics. Their most well-known PSAs are probably Hip Choice, House Hippo, and Don't Put It In Your Mouth. The Concerned Children's Advertisers have actually made some great PSAs, such as Rehab and The Trap, which are honestly masterpieces. They do have PSAs like I Scream and Head, which are just strange. The Head PSA apparently traumatized a lot of young Canadians when it was aired, and is seen as disturbing when the head falls off, and honestly, I can see why. Crash Test Dummies Vince and Larry The one PSA series I have talked about so many times in the past. 
I have a full video on their history from how they started off and how they ended up being. So if you want to watch that video, links in the description or it'll be a card up on screen at the moment. So for everyone that doesn't actually know about these PSAs, I will give you a quick little rundown on their PSAs and what they managed to do. So this is an American PSA campaign from AdCancel that decided to come up with a campaign to start getting people to buckle up, as only about 14% of people in 1985 actually buckled up. Both Jim Ferguson and Joel Machat came up with the idea to create two crash test dummies that love doing their job of being a crash test dummy. This idea came to them after they were thinking of making the PSAs more disturbing where the dummies were being dragged into getting into car crashes. So they ended up making it more lighthearted, which is a brilliant approach that actually aged really well. The campaign ran for 12 years, with the last PSA being Backseat Baby in 1997, and the campaign proved to be very successful and probably one of the most successful PSA campaigns of all time. It actually spawned a toy line from Tyco and a pilot for a TV series that actually didn't go anywhere, and it would have actually been the first CGI animated TV show if it actually went through. No other PSA campaign's done that. Anti-Piracy Australia PSA so this PSA is pretty much an every DVD I remember watching when I was younger, it came out throughout the 2000s. In the PSA we hear an area to talk about how Australia makes great movies, even though they're actually showing Happy Feet, which I wouldn't consider to be an Australian production. But she talks about how pirating is ruining the Australian film industry as we see the poster burn. The narrator says that burning or pirating movies may seem harmless, but what you're really burning is the future of our film industry as the text what are you really burning shows up. As I've said before, this isn't really a good example of a non-Australian film because most of the people in this movie and most people that worked on it aren't Australian, even though like the effects and the animation was probably done in Australia, the rest of it wasn't. Keep it real. Keep it real is a PSA released in 2020 from the New Zealand government, and it tackles the topic of monitoring what your kids are looking up on the internet. They do this by having a naked male and female walk up to the mother's door saying that they're here for her son, and that her son watches them all the time on different devices. Also, honestly, this PSA is pretty damn funny, and I really like the approach as they do talk a bit about how in prawn videos they don't discuss consent or any serious things that people need to know about with these acts. It ends with the mother telling her son that they need to discuss the differences between seeing things online compared to real life, which is a good message for viewers, even if it isn't just about this, like it's just in general about being on the internet. Dumb ways to die. This is a PSA released in 2012 from the Australian company Metro Trains. If you haven't seen this PSA by now, I'm really surprised because it blew up around the time of its release, and it actually spawned two different phone games. The PSA sings a song about dumb ways to die while showing dumb ways to die in a cartoony way. The message gets delivered when the dumb ways to die are things to do with trains, and finally at the end of the PSA, the message be safe around trains, a message from Metro, is delivered to the viewer. As I mentioned earlier, this PSA absolutely blew up everywhere. Not only just for the state of Victoria and Australia, but the video blew up worldwide on YouTube, and I still think it's the most viewed PSA on YouTube. I think it blew up so much because it was so different from other train safety PSA campaigns. For example, I remember seeing so many disturbing train safety PSAs, and some were even from Metro, and when this came out it was just so unique and fresh. By the way, as I've mentioned before, as someone from the state of Victoria, I still see print PSAs based on dumb ways to die at train stations, and it's been that much of a success that Metro Trains, even though the campaign is a decade old, still shows these ads. Lastly, I just found out now, but Metro Trains actually licensed the campaign to other companies such as RTD and Denver, so obviously other countries wanted a piece of their pie as well. The Anti-Drug Slush Above the Influence Both of these campaigns are American PSA campaigns trying to tell people not to do drugs, which most of the PSAs I've found with both companies are about not smoking marijuana. But these PSAs mainly showed up in the late 90s, early 2000s, trying to tell people to stay off drugs, even though the company above the influence made some absolutely terrible PSAs like Flat. Even Family Guy made fun of this PSA. But from what I could gather, neither of these PSA campaigns did well at all and didn't make people stop doing drugs. Pee Wee Herman. This is probably one of the most infamous PSAs of all time, and it features Pee Wee Herman himself, Paul Rubens. As I've said before, the backstory to this PSA is a lot more interesting than the PSA itself. Long story short, what happened is Paul Rubens had to make a PSA in 1991 after he was required by court to do 75 hours of community service after getting in trouble for smacking it in an adult theatre. With the 75 hours he was given, he decided to make this PSA and another PSA featuring a character from Pee Wee's Playhouse called Penny. This Pee Wee Herman PSA is in a series of PSAs which are all basically the same but feature different celebrities such as Clint Eastwood, which yeah, the other PSAs are better since you can actually take those celebrities seriously, you can't really take Paul Rubin seriously, sorry. The Search for Signs of Intelligent Life 
This is a British PSA that was released in 1988, and it tells people to be smart with their car. They do this by having three weird aliens breaking into their car and stealing the car when the narrator says that it doesn't take an intelligent life form to steal from an unlocked car. Just a pretty simple PSA, but the aliens do look really strange. Like, I don't know what they decided to do with these people, but oh my god, they look weird. Most shocking second a day. This 2014 PSA from Save the Children in the UK follows a young girl living in London and plays out the situation if London end up turning into cereal. The PSA does this by showing how a normal day is in London until the whole area turns into a war zone and the family have to try and get out to stay alive. This is meant to show that just because it doesn't happen where you live, mostly in the UK where it's aired, it isn't like it doesn't happen anywhere else in the world. And the PSA ends with the hashtag save series children. MTV PSAs Most of you probably had no idea that MTV made PSAs, but they were made in everywhere besides America. Basically the MTV PSAs that were made were actually made in Italy and also in the UK. But most of these PSAs came out around the 2000s. There's about six of these PSAs I could find, but I only talk about a few of them. In one of the PSAs, it follows a couple in a cornfield making out and eventually start going at it, until one of the corn cutters comes and runs them over as the text pops up saying, Unprotected s can be dangerous. Another one of their PSAs follows a man in a nightclub in a bathroom as he tries to walk out of the bathroom. He ends up back in one of the toilets, continuing the same cycle over and over again, until we see him stop behind a wall as the text pops up saying, 68% of drug users think they can always get out of it, comes up. The last one I'll talk about follows a few drunk people in the back of cabs around Christmas time and they're all acting like idiots. People in these PSAs made themselves look terrible as they're very drunk and the PSA ends with the text real idiots drive themselves home. Obviously it's telling people not to drink and drive and that the better option is to get a cab or get a lift by someone else. Love Has No Labels Love Has No Labels is a 2015 PSA from the American company I've discussed quite a few times now, Ad Cancel. The PSA takes place on Valentine's Day, where there's a massive x-ray set up with people from different races, sexual orientations, and religions going behind it. Each time people come out of the x-ray, it will say things like love has no labels, love has no religion, and love has no race, etc. The PSA was a pretty big deal when it was released, as not many PSAs talked about just loving people for who they are and not judging someone for their beliefs, orientations, race, etc. 1000 horsepower. An Aussie PSA from the government of South Australia decided to make this PSA under their road safety campaign, and it shows a group of horses running as some rope is getting less loose. The narrator comes in to talk about how trains engines are over a thousand horsepower. The narrator stops as we see a man tied to the ropes and that the horses are attached to. The man wakes up as it cuts to the same man avoiding running into a train. Then the narrator comes back in at the end of the PSA to say think about that before you cross the tracks. Mascaras Mascaras is an anti-alcohol PSA from the Argentinian company SITEA. In this PSA we see a man laughing with a mask on and as I've said before the music just reminds me of something CD like listening to this again it sounds like something straight out of something CD. But the PSA keeps going on where the man in the mask is drinking and laughing but the music starts to speed up more and more until the man turns around and we see a sad face. The PSA ends with the happy and sad mask next to each other as the narrator narrates in Espanol. So what the narrator is roughly saying at the end of the PSA is these are the two faces of the same problem. When you drink alcohol in excess, alcohol ends up taking you. Which hey, it's actually not a bad message, just a really strange PSA, I guess it's because of the language barrier, and maybe they think this is a bit more normal in that country, but I don't know, over here it just seems really odd and strange. Alone. The 1993 PSA from the company AIDS Information Center in Japan shows an animation of an arrow getting approached by a man as it starts to move. The man gets attracted to the arrow and even starts to hump the arrow, obviously symbolizing sex. The arrow seems to confess something and then after pulling on the arrow, the text AIDS comes up. I personally see this as the partner confessing to the other person that they got AIDS and then as the text comes up, it starts to get worse for them. After that, a crowd of people come up to him and the man explains something to them. As he does, the text of AIDS says goodbye to symbolize that the partner dies from AIDS. When that happens, two people come out to try and tell him that they won't leave him alone. The piece is kind of strange, but it's also interesting. Hashtag rough life. An American PSA that was released in 2015 from the company Friends of Animals follows Danny Trejo in a dog suit, which just sounds extremely strange. But Danny Trejo talks to the viewer about the experiences he has of being a dog. 
I don't know. I just find this one really weird as the PSA is pretty self-explanatory. It just follows the daily life of a dog that hasn't been adopted by a family. But it's just strange to see an actor like Danny Trejo in a PSA like this. And especially to see him in a dog suit acting like a dog. It's just weird. 2000s EPA Mercury PSA. So this is a random 2000s PSA where the PSA had a narrator talk about mercury and how dangerous of a substance it really is. The PSA talks about how much mercury can spread around very fast and that there's a skull that talks to the viewer about how much it can spread and that the EPA can deal with the mercury property and if you see it, you should call them immediately. Personally, I don't really find this PSA scary, but people might be scared of the skull that shows up because it kind of caught me off guard a little bit when I first saw it. But besides from that, it's pretty tame. 911. 911 is a controversial PSA that came out in 2009 released in Brazil from the company WWF. As the title suggests, it follows the events of the three numbers and talks about how the tragedy killed 2,819 people. But the PSA amplifies it by adding a lot more planes headed toward those buildings. Then it cuts the text saying that a tsunami in 2005 killed 280,000 people and that's 100 times the deaths of the 2001 tragedy. But after the dick measuring competition between both tragedies, the PSA tells us that our planet is brutally powerful and that we should respect it and conserve it. I don't know if it's just me, but I don't think the message really matches with what the PSA is showing. Forest. Forest is a PSA that's pretty obscure, as I feel like I'm like one of the only people that remember this PSA. But this PSA follows a few businessmen in suits walking into a forest as they approach a man dressed up as a bunny. Yeah, this is a really strange one. But the men in suits tell the bunny called Bob that he has to leave because they own his home. As they go up to tell Bob to leave, he runs up to one of the co-workers and knees him in the balls. Bob then runs the other direction and there's chainsaws start up. As we hear them start up, Bob ends up walking to an area of the forest they've already cut down. We hear Bob scream the typical, "No!" as Tex comes up saying 1.5 million trees are cut down every day to make cigarettes. Which by the way, I still don't know if that's true or not. All things dark and hideous. A 1990 PSA released in Scotland from the company FOE follows the camera going over the planet Earth from space as a song that I don't recognize is being sung in the background. After that, the PSA fades to black where the text, if you're concerned about what's happening to our environment, contact friends of the Earth. Go electric. A Canadian PSA from 1984 made by the company Ontario Hardro shows a furnace that has a face and talks. Yeah, it's literally the only reason why this PSA is on this list. But the furnace is singing about how it's making oil bills rise as the narrator comes in telling the viewer that they should switch to an electrical furnace to save money on their bills. The PSA ends with the text go electric coming up. Greenpeace. This is a Canadian organization, believe it or not, out to preserve the lives of animals. I thought this company actually was founded in the UK, but no, it was founded in Vancouver in 1971. But this company is known for their PSAs such as Everything Is Not Awesome, which is going against LEGO's partnership with Shell, and a recent PSA called Turtle Journey, where they partnered with Artman Animations, which are well known for making Wallace and Gromit, Chicken Run, as well as quite a few animated films and shorts. That doesn't say that Greenpeace doesn't have some more disturbing PSAs. Which one of their PSAs will come up later, but as most of them go, they aren't really that scary. Spider-Man, register to vote. You might be thinking they really decided to make a Spider-Man PSA? Yep, but this time Spider-Man wants you to vote. This PSA released in 1992 from the company VSDA follows Spider-Man talking to the viewer about how voting can help the future of your country. The main disturbing thing about this PSA is the music with a mixture of the dark background. Everything else is alright, it's just that. Also, seeing Spider-Man tell the viewer to vote is really weird and hear him just saying how serious it is and that how important it is it's just strange. Extreme Meth Over A 2000s PSA from America by the company Drug Free Arizona parodies the typical dating game shows. The PSA does this with a 70s style set, it's literally copying like a dating game and whatnot. And it has all the 70s looking fonts and the flowers all over the set. The host tells us that meth will change your life as images show how meth changes your appearance from your arms to your face. The PSA ends with a rep from the company talking to the viewer about how big of a threat meth really is. Under the Sheets Under the Sheets is a 2010 PSA released from the German company Deutsche Tischutzbund. Yes, I know the pronunciation would be shit. And it follows a woman getting undressed to join her partner in bed for some frisky time. 
She joins him in bed in the weirdest way possible by sneaking into the bed under the sheets from the end of the bed? She sneaks up to his chest area and then pulls a knife to stab him as we hear the most stock man screaming sound effect there is and it's it's just hilarious. That's literally the reason why this PSA is only on tier 1 because the sound effect cracks me up every time. The PSA cuts to black where text in German comes up which roughly translates to no castration of piglets without Anastasia. For a new animal protection law, which is broken English, but this PSA was about animal and how slaughterhouses treat piglets? What? The Pirates Are Out To Get You The Pirates Are Out To Get You is a PSA from the UK company Fact that was released in 2002, and I've talked about this one way too many times. It follows a man as he's burning a bunch of DVDs and VHS tapes as a narrator tells us that the Pirates Are Out To Get You. The narrator goes on about how piracy affects many different industries and encourages terrorism apparently. I just find this PSA hilarious because the man pulls off the funniest faces of mankind and the whole PSA is just extremely exaggerated and way too serious. It, does, it just takes itself too seriously. It doesn't kind of like have a bit of leniency on that one. It's just way too serious. Never give up giving up. This is a PSA I remember seeing quite a lot. Well, the PSA was released in 2011 from the Australian company Quitline and it follows a man talking about his experiences with smoking and how he's tried to quit but keeps going back to smoking. At the end of the PSA, it actually ends with an optimistic note where the bloke in the PSA hasn't smoked for over three years and he basically tells the viewer to never give up giving up on smoking as the more you try it, the better you'll get at it. I really like the approach to this PSA because it's a lot more realistic than other PSAs and it actually shows people how you will try to quit but can't quit and that you should just keep on trying because eventually you'll get it right. Train. A 2007 PSA from Ad Cancel in America depicts a man on a track as a train's approaching. The man is talking to the viewer about global warming and how the irreversible consequences are 30 years away. He then goes on to say it won't affect him at all, and as he goes to walk off the tracks, a little girl standing behind him on the tracks says the train's about to run the little girl over. The text comes up saying that there's still time to fight global warming. Every Mother's Worst Nightmare Every Mother's Worst Nightmare is a 1979 PSA from the UK, which starts off with a scream that sounds like Tom from Tom and Jerry. Is that just me or what? Because it does. This is... But anyways, the nightmare the PSA is talking about is a baby knocking over a pram and landing face first into a lady's bag hanging at the end of the pram. The PSA has a narrator talking about ways to avoid this from happening, and I just find it weird that they really needed to make a PSA on how to keep your baby safe in a pram. Like, was it really needed? Were there really that many babies falling out of prams at the time? Trick of the light. Another PSA from the UK, but this one was released in 1991. The PSA follows a man walking around a neighborhood as some houses have their lights on and some don't. And then it talks about how this is a game to see which houses have people in them and which don't. There are three houses that we have to guess which have people in them and which ones don't. Two houses don't have lights on, but as we look at one of them, it has a light on and it turns off as we look at it. But until we see the third one, it has no lights on. The narrator actually ends the PSA saying that there's actually no one in any of the houses. But if you don't want people to break in your house, make it look like they're actually in your house by leaving a light on. The PSA ends with the campaign slogan, Crime. Together, we'll crack it. Tier 2. A little spooky. Think. This is a British company that was formed in 1946 to try and save more lives when on the road. Think released the first PSA campaign in 1950, which is an animated short telling people how to be safer drivers in many different ways. It's honestly just a simple animated short, but since then, Think has released many PSAs and even made a PSA with Adam West Batman because, yeah, 60s Batman had to be in every late 60s PSA, didn't it? But Think definitely does have their fair share of disturbing PSAs, such as Eyes, Julie, and It's 30 for a Reason. I Helped I Helped is an American PSA that aired during the 2002 Super Bowl. The PSA follows people saying that they helped do horrible things such as murder families in Colombia. After someone says that they helped do something terrible, someone else follows up with things like it was all harmless fun or they were just having fun, etc. The PSA ends the text, drug money supports terror, and that if you buy drugs, you might too. Icons Icons is a 2006 PSA from the California Department of Public Health, and I've talked about this one about a million times. Basically, the PSA shows the viewer how tobacco companies try to fool people into thinking that smoking is cool. This PSA does this by the setting constantly changing into different scenes and different characters. Each character keeps talking about how tobacco companies try to fool people into smoking, and that the lies they tell people until the last scene shows a man in a wheelchair struggling to talk to the viewer, and that the reality of it is that you can end up like him. 
And this PSA is probably one of the most well-known PSAs in the 2000s because it's on a lot of DVDs. And like as I mentioned in my childhood trauma video, it's actually in The Dark Knight. Don't worry, be happy. This is a PSA that was released in 1999 from the Australian company Transport Safety. The PSA has the song with the same name of this PSA from Bob Marley, as we get to see cars getting close to being in accidents, and some of them actually in accidents as the accidents get worse and worse throughout the PSA. Some cars even hit pedestrians walking by and one bloke on a motorbike almost slides into another car until at the end of the PSA, text comes up saying take another look at intersections. Youth Ambassadors KC This is a company from Kansas City in America trying to help kids that grow up in bad situations. The company's most well-known PSAs are the three lessons from a neighborhood PSAs. This series of PSAs are all meant to be like Sesame Street, even down to having puppets that look like they were built by the Jim Henson's Creature Shop. All of the three PSAs focus on different topics, such as one about kids starving and how to avoid feeling hungry. Another focuses on how to dodge bullets when being shot at, and the last one focuses on dealing with an overdose. The company has also made another series of PSAs called Welcome To My Neighborhood, which talks about the same kinds of topics, but has kids tell their stories as a picture shop, illustrating their stories. Frank Frank is a British company that made PSAs mostly around 2005 to 2010. Most of their PSAs just talk about how certain drugs are dangerous. The company is mainly known for the Pablo the Mule Dog PSAs, where a dog stuffed with cocaine and walks around talking to different people, and things whilst the people he talks to are on drugs. Obviously, the Pablo the Mule Dog PSAs are mainly known from John Tron's video, where he talks about the series of PSAs. Before it's too late. A PSA from the 2010s made by the Ministry of Health in South Korea tries to show you that you should stop smoking before it's too late to stop smoking. The PSA shows that smoking is difficult when he's a normal guy smoking, and then it shows him in a hospital saying it's going to be harder to quit now. The PSA ends with the text, quitting smoking is difficult, but it'll be harder when you don't hang up. Hanna-Barbera Anti-Drug PSA So this is just a really interesting American PSA from the 1970s from the well-known animation company Hanna-Barbera. The company is responsible for many well-known animated shows like Scooby-Doo, The Flintstones, The Jetsons, and even Tom and Jerry. So yeah, as the title suggests, the company made an anti-drug PSA that follows a man as he gets high on some kind of drug, and then he gets led into his own demise. It's a pretty trippy PSA with the visuals and all, but I do like the animation, it's pretty solid. 20 Seconds 20 Seconds is a PSA from Australia released in 2011 by the company Play It Safe by the Water. The PSA follows this one angled shot from the pool's level as a child jumps in the pool and a timer starts. The timer keeps going, and around the 17 second mark, a narrator comes in to say 20 seconds is all it takes for a toddler to drown, and that you should never take your eyes off your children around the water. Randolph This is a PSA from Switzerland from the company Barreau for Fire Prevention, and was released in 1998. The PSA follows a man talking to the viewer with him in the shadows, as he narrates a scenario where his brother grabbed matches from the kitchen whilst the parents weren't watching, and accidentally lit the person narrating the PSA's pillow. When he reveals that his brother lit the pillow, he turns around to show his face and to say that his brother didn't find cookies in the kitchen, he found matches. ACC Think Safe NZ Campaign A New Zealand series of PSAs from the early 2000s is a whole campaign around making sure people are safe around their house. All of these PSAs have the same kind of formula where it starts off lighthearted, presenting itself as an advertisement for a fake product, until the main character falls into or off of something, such as a falling into a table, falling off a ladder, and falling down the stairs. And I don't want to be that guy, but I kind of find these PSAs funny, it's just so all of a sudden when you watch these PSAs, it is wild. Parents Parents is a PSA from the UK that was released in 1976. The PSA follows a group of kids as they're playing with fireworks until they light them and one of the kids burns their face from them. This happens whilst the couple is coming home from the shops as they talk about parenting and being strict on children. The couple get home and the husband ends up asking what their son's doing, and as he talks about it, someone else comes up to tell the wife what happened to the kid. After that, a narrator comes in to say, if your kid was hurt in an accident like this, would you go and play the other parents? Then the narrator goes on to say that your children are your own responsibility. The PSA ends with the narrator telling the viewer to be careful around fireworks. Sandy Hook Promise This series of PSAs were made after the Sandy Hook school sh** that took place on the 14th of December in 2012. Parents of the sh** victims came together to create the organization to make more people aware about school sh**. Their most well-known PSAs are obviously Back to School Essentials and Evan. In Back to School Essentials, kids talk to the camera about essential items for school until we hear a sh** on the school grounds. 
as normal school items are used to help students escape or defend themselves. In the Evan PSA, it's focused around a normal school day where a boy ends up talking to a girl by writing on a desk in a library. They finally find out who each other are as a enters the school gym. But the whole point of the PSA is to be aware of the signs that someone might be planning a It doesn't do it that well because the signs they show to the viewer are a bit far-fetched, but not a bad idea for a PSA. They have made quite a few PSAs since their creation in 2012 and still going today. The Spirit of Dark and Lonely Water This is a piff from 1973 where a hooded figure meant to be the Grim Reaper follows a few kids playing near water as some kids fall in and die. This is until one kid falls in and gets saved by a group of kids nearby and the message trying to be pushed to children is to be careful around water. By the way, if you didn't know this, the narrator's voice is Donald Pleasance and he's known for playing Dr. Loomis in the Halloween film series. The original Halloween film series, not like the other two reboots. Truth An American company based in Florida that was formed in 1998 tries to make people stop smoking. Truth focused more on the youth of America and aimed their PSAs more around them so they can try and stop them from smoking before they start. This approach that Truth took got extremely obvious when they basically tried to pander to that age group with cringeworthy It's a Trap PSA. The company ended up releasing their first PSA in the year 2000 and Truth actually proved to be effective throughout the 2000s. Their PSAs didn't try and scare the viewer, all they did is tell the viewer what tobacco can do to you. Also I've made a full video talking about Truth for their history and how they've ended up, so the video will be up in the title card above or link in the description. Grain Drain this is a UK PSA that was released in 1975. Grain Drain follows a scenario where someone's filling up a grain drain whilst the narrator talks about how they look like sandpits to children. Then we get to see a toy baby thrown into the grain drain as we hear crying sound effects as the toy doll is going under the grain drain. After that, the narrator ends with put a grid on it to avoid children falling in and possibly dying. Human Ball Human Ball is a Belgian PSA from the Doctors Without Borders. His PSA is an animated short where a man starts rolling after falling over and more and more people are getting caught in his rolling ball. The ball gets bigger and bigger going all across the country until it ends with the ball being huge, rolling over heaps of people in the city. Then it eventually cuts to text when we see the woman singing and it's just about to get squashed. The text fades in saying, don't let AIDS gain more ground. Everyone must have access to treatment. No place to race. An Aussie PSA released in 2009 from Mac of South Australia follows different MotoGP races where riders are falling off their bikes. But this PSA has a twist. As the riders fall off their bikes, they add things like bins, bus stops, and other things you would see on the side of roads outside of the track. After that, the well-known Aussie motorbike racer, McDoohan, comes out so that if these obstacles on the road were on the track, that he would be dead. Rabies Meads Death Rabies Means Death is a British PSA from the 70s that talks about how dangerous a disease rabies is. Most of the PSA takes place in an airport as we see shots of kids suffering from the disease randomly disrupting the PSA. A narrator comes in about halfway into the PSA, talking about how the outcome of bringing an animal with you on a plane could result in death because of rabies. Just another straightforward PSA with some disturbing imagery with the kids suffering in a hospital. Knack AIDS This is an Aussie company that ran a campaign all about AIDS from 1984 to 1988 all about the disease and how it can be easily spread during the epidemic. Their most well-known PSA by far is definitely the bowling PSA of the Grim Reapers bowling people down. The PSA released and a lot of controversy came with it, such as people complaining about how disturbing the PSA is and also how the PSA portrays the LGBT community. People claim that the PSA was provoking fear and hostility towards members of Australia's LGBT community and that the Grim Reapers represented gay men. Controversy aside, the creator of this PSA, Simone Reynolds, just randomly thought one day, you know what? I'm going to put bowling in my PSA, and that's how it ended up being about bowling. The bowling PSA alone cost the company around 300,000 Australian dollars back in the late 80s. And also, they actually made the bowling ball, like it's a seven foot tall bowling ball. And for the ball not to crush the cast members, they were advised to fall to the side. Knack Aids did release another PSA that is less well known, with a couple playing Russian roulette as a metaphor for having sex without a condom and rolling a dice to see if you get HIV. Picture. Picture is a PSA released in 1990 from the British company Motor Neuron Disease Association. The PSA shows us a picture of a man suffering from the disease as he talks to the viewer about the disease. He basically says to the viewer that the disease eats away at his muscles and is slowly dying because of it, and he also hopes that there's hope for other people with the disease. The PSA is pretty simple, but damn effective. Clunk Click A series of British PSAs is a campaign telling people to buckle up. The PSAs usually show some kind of car accident where people would go through the windshield or something else. 
Three PCs I could find under this campaign all cover the same topic of buckling up as you shouldn't take the risk. They're pretty simple, straightforward PSAs. I don't know what else to say about these. Setedroki Tespengi. This anti-drug campaign from Italy, trying to get people not to do drugs, is very odd. There are only three different PSAs which all follow the same premise. All these PSAs have someone's head spinning around in a circle until their head spins back and their eyes are completely white. What is this, some creepy pasta? I will never understand how this PSA is not meant to make people do drugs. Like, what's the connection here? Do drugs make your eyes white? Bump in the road. Bump in the road is a Greek PSA that was released in 2004 from the company St. Francis of Assisi Animal Shelter. The PSA shows cars driving on the road and going over a bump. The camera slowly pans down to the road to see it's a stuffed toy animal that's meant to represent a dead animal. The PSA ends with the text, you abandoned your dog and you condemned it to death a number of times. Enjoy your holiday. The number keeps going up every two numbers every second as at the bottom left of the screen since the start of the PSA, the number was going up at a similar pace. I don't know if it's just me, but I find this PSA to be quite strange and it doesn't make that much sense. Embro. This was a really bizarre PSA from the Ministry of Transport in the Czech Republic from 2008. In this PSA, we follow a really weird looking fetus in which we see it react to the woman's partner's speeding. The fetus is swinging back and forth in the room until it gets flipped around and dies because the couple got into a car accident. Then text fades in saying, do not decide about life other than their aggressive driving. The fetus just looks terrible and it's the most disturbing part of this PSA. Also, I think this, this PSA does have some pretty broken English, so it's hard to understand. Brazilian Partnership Against Drugs. A series of PSAs from Brazil that are out to tell people not to do drugs like every other anti-drug company. In one PSA called Rewind, the events of gun and go in reverse, where a woman got shot in the head in her car and it goes back to see where the perpetrator got the gun and it follows how he got that money to get a gun came from selling drugs. The PSA is trying to say that if you are buying drugs, you're also funding illegal gun trading. In another PSA called Simon, it focuses on a Simon Says game which someone's playing and it fails on the second level. Text fades in to say marijuana almost inoffensive. Because yeah, marijuana turns you into a little sloth. Yeah, don't even remind me about that, that's Sona Sloth PSA. In the last PSA I'll mention called Board Game, three kids are playing a game where the punishments they get in the game seem to be serious things like stealing cars and stealing from your mother. It ends with one of the kids in the game getting an overdose card so they're out of the game. Sneaking that little anti-drug message in the end of the PSA with that last board piece being about drugs. Hmm, you know, if you didn't have that in this video, you wouldn't know what it's about. But yeah, this PSA is meant to be a metaphor for life, and it's pretty obvious what it's meant to be representing. Apaches. Apaches is a 1977 public information film that was mostly shown around schools to tell kids to be safe on playing. Throughout the PSA, we see kids playing cowboys and Indians, and as the kids get killed one by one in different areas of a farm. Kim's run over by a tractor she was standing on, Tom drowns in a slurry pit, Sharon dies from accidentally drinking chemicals while pretending it was alcohol, Robert gets crushed by a falling gate Mark will accidentally knocked over, and lastly Danny crashes the tractor he was riding onto a ditch. Danny continues his narration after his death and talks calmly about how his family is all arriving for a party being prepared earlier in the film. After that, Tex comes up with all the different kids that died on farms in the year Patches was made. And this is probably one of the most well known public information films of all time. Burnt Memories A PSA from the London Fire Brigade that was released in 1994 follows a point of view shot of someone walking through a burnt down house. Whilst this is happening, we hear a priest talking at a funeral for two kids that died in a house fire. After that, a narrator comes in to say 8 out of 10 times a house fire starts by someone who lives there and that you shouldn't let a fire be your own fault. Lucy this is an Aussie PSA that was released in 2008 from the company Animals Australia and the PSA follows a pig talking to the viewer with the young girl's voice. The pig talks about how she hates being where she is and that she gets so hot and cold and that now because she's so big she can barely even stand. They keep on talking about how bad of a situation they're in by mentioning that they have massive sores on them and that they have a sore stomach. A narrator comes in to say that it's believed that a pig has the intelligence of a three year old child and that you should help them end the practices of Australia's pork industry. I imagine this PSA actually works as from a little bit of research about the topic and the treatment of animals, it has actually apparently gotten a lot better over the years with companies like RSPCA stepping in to make sure animals are being treated better. Amnesty International PSAs Amnesty International PSAs are just extremely strange. 
One of their PSAs follows a bunch of leaders blowing, such as Saddam Hussein, Kim Jong-il, and a few others. At the end of the PSA shows a lit candle as a fire moves a little, but doesn't blow out the candle. Now the PSA shows a man putting together a pencil like it's a gun, with the PSA ending with a text, your signature is our weapon. And in the last one I'll mention, it's a PSA that's framed like one of those TV shows that try to sell items to their viewers. Instead of selling the typical stuff they'll sell on their shows, they end up telling the viewer that they're selling 10,000 AK-47s for the price of £474.99. Throughout the PSA, we see units sold go up to 9,237, and text fades in to say the arms trade's out of control. The company has way too many PSAs worldwide, but I'd be here for a million years if I talked about all of them. And also, I've actually started seeing their PSAs pop up more recently. Scavengers. This is a PSA released in 1987 from the UK company Lynx. It follows a fly flying around the city until it gets into a room with a bunch of rich people where we keep switching back and forth from the fly's perspective to the rich people. We see the fly nibble on something until a rich couple pulls back a fur coat as we see a bunch of guts underneath the coat with heaps of flies on it as well as maggots. The PSA ends with the text saying when animals are killed for their fur, two kinds of scavengers move in. The difference is flies don't know any better. So this PSA is always on people's most scariest PSAs and whatnot. But I really don't see it because to me, it's really dated and campy and I don't really see how people get scared of this. Alice Gun Safety PSA. A PSA from the Brady campaign in America follows Alice and the White Rabbit as they're walking down a hallway. Alice stops and walks into one of the rooms. She wanders around the room until she sees the shelf. Alice goes over to the shelf and finds a cabinet. She's curious about what's in the cabinet, so she grabs out what's in the cabinet and it's a gun. As Alice grabs the gun, narration starts by saying only one third of American households have a gun. When the narrator says this, Alice accidentally shoots herself in the head. The narrator asks the viewer to ask their neighbour if there's a gun where they play, as we see the white rabbit in shock. I don't get it why they're asking the viewer to ask their neighbour, like why wouldn't they ask their parents if they have a gun in their own house? ISPCC This is an Irish company that was formed back in 1956. The company has made quite a few PSAs about cruelty towards children, as the company is out to try and prevent that issue. I can mainly find PSAs from the company throughout the 2000s and 2010s, as they all cover the same kind of issue, which is cruelty towards children, and that they should have access to try and help those in need. Beach Babes Beach Babes is a 2003 PSA from WaterSafe Auckland in New Zealand. The PSA is all about watching your children around water, as we follow these women setting up to lay down in the sand. The women keep setting up to get ready to relax on the beach, but one hidden detail is that the child is on the raft in the background and he falls into the water about halfway through this PSA. Text fades in, then telling the viewer to watch your kids or watch them drown. Boy. A 2015 PSA from the company Nationwide follows a boy. Kind of a no-brainer. In where he's experiencing things such as riding a green machine ripoff and sailing the ocean with your dog. The boy narrates his PSA saying that he'll never be able to do those things until at the end of the PSA the boy tells us that he couldn't grow up because he died from an accident. Text shows up saying that the number one cause of childhood deaths is preventable accidents, and a narrator comes in to say Nationwide believes in protecting what matters most, you kids. Ripley's believe it or not, but this PSA was really controversial at the time. Well, it didn't help that this aired during the Super Bowl, and also that this company is known for making ads trying to sell their insurance. But the company did eventually come out and said that all they wanted to do was start a conversation and not actually sell anything to the viewer, so this counts as a PSA. Children see, children do. This 2013 PSA made by the company Napcan in Australia follows different scenarios where children are copying their parents. There are a few different scenarios such as a mother smoking and the child doing the same, a mother yelling at another driver and a woman throwing up on the side of the street. PSA starts to get to the point where parents are being verbally or physically abusive and their children are copying them. The PSA ends with the text, children see, children do. Obviously the PSA is trying to tell the viewer that parents set the example, so you gotta set the right example to your children. Chopper Chopper is a PSA featuring the convicted Aussie criminal Mark Brandon Reed, or as he's known, Chopper, talking to the viewer. The PSA was released in 2001 from the company Pedestrian Council of Australia, and Chopper's talking about killing. Well, to be more accurate, he's talking about how you are no different to him if you kill someone while drink driving. There are about two or three of these PSAs, but they all follow the same format where Chop is sitting at a table talking to the viewer. Real tracks, real life, real trains. This is a British PSA that was released in 2016 from the company British Transport Police, and it shows us real footage of people around trains. As the PSA goes on, more and more disturbing imagery shows up with quite a few close calls, and even one scenario where someone got squashed and pushed underneath the train. This PSA wouldn't be that disturbing at all if it wasn't for the last scenario where we get to see someone die by a train. Computer. 
A 2006 PSA from the company DVLA in the UK shows a man going back home from work. It starts with him getting into his car as we follow his journey home and the whole PSA is shot like a horror movie with a mysterious black rectangle following him. Oh, you know, it might be like 2001 A Space Odyssey. The man finally gets home and parks his car in his garage. We see the black rectangle on the back of his car. Text fades in saying you can't escape the computer which is meant to tell people to pay their registration. I really just asked the question, why would you make a PSA about this? Like, is it really that big of an issue in the UK where you really need to make this? Chainsaw Chainsaw is yet another UK PSA that was released in 1990 from the company Elefriends. The PSA shows a man with a chainsaw cutting up lots of stuffed toys with random sound effects in the background. After that, text comes up saying in Africa they use it to chop down elephants. I literally wouldn't have known what this PSA was about if it wasn't for that text at the end of the PSA. Because besides from that, it's just someone chopping up like toy animals. Everybody knows. This is a PSA from the company Quitline in Australia, released in 2008. The whole PSA is actually a compilation of clips from their own company's clips to other companies' clips that they hopefully got the rights to use, but who knows. When this PSA is playing, the song Everybody Knows from Leonard Cohen is playing over the images we see in the PSA. All we see in this PSA is different things that people suffer with after smoking for a long time. And the text comes up throughout the PSA when we see different images telling us exactly what's what. And also a bit later in the PSA, more text comes up saying everybody knows that smoking causes all these diseases, but you still smoke. Focus on the positive. Yet another anti-smoking PSA. Focus on the positive is a PSA released in 2002 from the American government of Florida as it follows a group of young people walking into a building of a tobacco company. The teens ask the question, why don't you tell people that there's arsenic in cigarette smoke? After one of these teens asks the question, one of the men working for the company starts breaking into song about focusing on the positive. Everyone starts to dance and sing along as they talk about how people have to be so derogatory towards the big tobacco companies. I'm going to be honest, the song is really catchy. Not a big fan of the PSA itself, but the song just gets in your head and it will not get out. But throughout the song, they talk about the negative effects of smoking, and as the teens talk about it, the company just brushes it off and says to just stay focused on the positive. The song finally ends and one of the workers for the tobacco company calls security to escort the teens out of the building. Open your eyes. Open Your Eyes is a UK PSA that was released in 1998 from the company Respect for Animals. Firstly, we see a woman walking down a hallway in a shop and then it cuts to a man in a plain hallway. The whole PSA just cuts back and forth from a woman in a shop to a man in a random building that's meant to be a slaughterhouse. So the PSA shows a woman buying a leather jacket and it shows a man in the slaughterhouse killing animals to get the fur that were meant to connect the dots that he's doing it for the jacket. They even compare things like swiping a credit card to pay for a jacket to a man cutting open an animal. Wild. The PSA ends with the text, fur looks great until you open your eyes. Hansel and Gretel. This 2002 PSA made by the company Sheena's Place from Canada follows the two fairy tale characters as we see the witch's house that is made of candy. They start to eat the house and while doing so, Gretel thinks about what her parents told her about eating too much. The text shows up saying how your child feels about their body is up to you. We then follow Hansel as we can hear Gretel throwing out the food she just ate. The PSA ends with let's stop eating disorders before they start. Hooked. Hooked is a 2007 PSA from the company NHS in the UK showing how addictive smoking can be. The PSA starts with an office worker on the phone as he's about to hang up. He hangs up the phone and seems to have an urge to do something, but as that's happening, he gets hooked in the mouth like a fish. The man gets reeled outside, being pulled on the ground by the fish hook, so literally being reeled outside to go and have a smoke. It ends with the man smoking outside as the narrator says the average smoker needs over 5,000 cigarettes a year and that you should get unhooked. Don't play. This is a French PSA from the company Massif that was released in 2006. I probably butchered that pronunciation, sorry. The PSA follows a few different ages of people sitting around a table playing Russian roulette. They all take their turn at pulling the trigger on themselves until it gets to grandma. The grandma, instead of aiming the gun at herself, she aims it at a girl and shoots the girl. It then cuts to what really happened and what happened is the grandma caused an accident and accidentally hit the same child she shot before. Text in French comes up which roughly translates to don't play anymore. Midas. A 2007 PSA from the company TAWAFS in the UK shows a burnt up man with flames coming off his head as he's talking to the viewer about how he loves people and he loves to be around them. He then talks about how he's drawn to certain things that he can't help himself and he also introduces himself as fire about 20 seconds into this PSA. The PSA ends with fire telling us to be careful near him as he can't help himself. Monster Hallway. This is a Canadian PSA released in 2010 from the company Kids Help Phone. 
The PSA follows the kid at his locker. As he closes his locker, we see a puppet that looks like him staring at him. That's until the puppet starts laughing at him because he failed a test. The puppet then starts to change into more of a monster whilst making fun of the child, calling him a tool and telling him to drop out. Finally, the puppet turns into a massive monster that tells the child that dad would love it if he dropped out and that he would get kicked out of the house if he did. After the puppet calls the kid a joke, the text got a problem that won't shut up shows up. Smurfs Smurfs is a 2005 UNICEF PSA from Belgium that was actually approved by the Smurfs creative Peos family. The PSA centers around Smurf Village getting bombed and the whole village turning into a war zone. This PSA didn't end until after 9pm to avoid children seeing this PSA as it would be quite disturbing not to get your childhood ruined by a PSA. Couldn't imagine that happening. There isn't too much else to say about this PSA but to be completely honest, what you get at face value is kind of what this PSA is. Barnardos A company from the UK is known for making PSAs all about how some children need help. This company is mostly known for two PSAs called Break the Cycle and Life Story. Break the Cycle follows the cycle of a woman that goes through a then drug then ends up a people for money and ends up in custody. This PSA is telling us that we need to try and help stop the cycle for thousands of kids as the cycle will only continue if we don't do something to help. In the PSA called Life Story, the PSA shows the life story of a man called Michael as the PSA keeps going back in time showing what he went through in the past before he got better. The PSA is meant to tell people that people's lives don't have to end like how it began. Peter Yes, it is that Peter. It is the one you're thinking of. They actually made PSAs, yes. But besides from making knockoff Flash games online for the purpose of saying every game is about animal <laughs> they've made quite a few PSAs. By the way, they aren't good. But the company has made PSAs since the early 2000s about animal cruelty. And I think the company's most well-known PSA would have to be Silent Scream, where they compare things like an elderly woman being mugged and getting bashed and a father <laughs> their partner to a dead fish. Also, only 1.7k likes on a video with over 250,000 views. That's not a good sign. But as the company goes, I don't think anyone likes Peter, and they still make PSAs here, and they aren't good at all. Carousel This PSA released in 2001 from the company Center of Riga Anti-Drug Control in Lativa, of all countries. Well, this PSA follows a group of people as they're walking around and having fun with each other. The group ends up at a carousel, and they go on the ride. Everything seems normal and dandy as they're enjoying the carousel, and then people start to slowly panic, and then they eventually all die on the ride. Text comes in to say words like drugs and addiction, and the last bit of text that comes up says choose life. Stroke PSAs So this is yet another series of PSAs from Ad Cancel in the US, but these PSAs released in 2004. All the PSAs have some celebrity, if it's Michael Clark Duncan, Don Rickles or Sharon Stone, and they all play the part of being the physical embodiment of a stroke. They all talk about how no one likes them and how they like to attack people no matter who they are, where they come from, or anything like that because they're a stroke. In all the PSAs, each actor makes strokes look really threatening with the way they're talking and acting to the viewer. Casualty a Scottish PSA from Scottish Executive that was released in 2001 follows a scenario where a bar is set up in a hospital as we see people in hospital after accidents and even a sign that says happy hour 5 to 8 p.m. What the fuck? But after that, it goes back to the bar in the hospital where we see a blood vial next to the bottles of alcohol where the text binge drinking everyone's paying up shows up. I honestly just don't understand this one at all. I really don't. Fight Back Fight Back is a PSA from the company EIA released in 1995 and the whole PSA follows a monkey as it seems to be stressing out about how people treat animals. We see flashing images and videos of animals that have been hurt by people or hunted by people as the monkey starts to freak out more and more. It finally gets to the point where the monkey's completely freaking out as it flashes back and forth until we see the monkey get a gun and the text comes up saying help wildlife fight back comes up. Also the music in the background of this PSA is the song Burn from Nine Inch Nails. Egg This is a PSA from the WRAA in New Zealand that was released in 2003. As it follows a woman's face on an egg. The woman talks about her experience with the she had to deal with when she was with one of her partners. She talks about how she was woken up at 2am and dragged into her kitchen to be yelled at about how she cooked his eggs. After that, she talks about how she got kicked in the stomach and hit with a baseball bat and text comes up saying that she was 7 months pregnant when that happened. Just depressing, that's all I can say. Have a smoke. The PSA from the Ministry of Health in Poland that was released in the year 1999 follows someone as they'd light a match to have a cigarette. But the PSA then transitions to a lit candle above a grave as we see the text come in say have a smoke. Just a really simple PSA and there's nothing really to say about it. 
It's pretty short, pretty straightforward. That's really it. Maggots. A 1996 PSA from the Arizona Department of Health Services is meant to show us how gross it is to smoke. The PSA does this by juxtaposing a lady in the bathroom with a grey girl with maggots in her teeth smoking and spitting out maggots into the sink whilst playful music's playing in the background. And it does this throughout the whole PSA, obviously trying to show how bad smoking is and how disgusting you look. Play Safe Play Safe is a public information film from the UK made in 1978. It's a 10 and a half minute long public information film and it's all about how kids should be playing safe and the PSA shows examples of kids playing near dangerous areas such as power lines and electric substations. We get to see examples of kids hurting themselves by playing near those areas such as a boy with his kite hitting a power line and kids trying to retrieve a frisbee from an electric substation. Save Ralph This is a PSA released in 2021 made by the Humane Society of the United States follows the daily life of a rabbit voiced by Taika Waititi that constantly gets put into testing facilities to test new products on. Also, there's a background voice that's meant to be like a director or something like that for the video, which is actually voiced by Ricky Gervais. Ralph the Rabbit is talking to the audience in an interview style, talking about how he lives his life, and he talks about different things to do with animal testing and how rabbits die getting tested on. We eventually see Ralph get tested on, as other rabbits in the facility are aware of the camera crew and are begging to be saved. By the way, the male voice actor is Zac Efron. The PSA ends with the text saying that no animal should suffer and die in the name of beauty. Make It Home for Christmas Make It Home for Christmas is a PSA from the FIA Foundation in the UK that was released in 2017. The PSA follows a man and her daughter texting and the daughter is excited for her father to come home by Christmas. But the dad is texting her whilst driving and ends up dying because he got into an accident whilst texting and the daughter finds out and starts crying. The PSA ends with a photo of the two in front of the tree whilst text Make It Home for Christmas comes up. Superhero a very bizarre PSA from the UK by the company NHS that was released in 2006 that follows a party where someone actually lets go of the balloons. A superhero comes up to retrieve the balloons that are stuck in a construction site about four floors up. The superhero climbs up and pulls off some sick maneuvers until he's just a little further than arm's reach away from the balloons as he slips and falls to his death. A narrator comes in saying too much alcohol makes you feel invincible when you are most vulnerable. Network Rail this is yet another UK PSA following the story of a man named Nathan where he got an electric shock from a train cable. He was mucking around the train tracks with the cable where he was going to throw the cable to a friend but ended up getting a deadly amount of electricity through his system where he sees him struggling to live on the ground. We then said that we had a friend with him that died instantly but Nathan ended up surviving that situation as he said that 25,000 volts went through his body and that he was lucky to survive. Tar Tar is a 2006 PSA from the company VUKA in South Africa where an older woman is getting ready for something in a bathroom. She then randomly coughs out some black substance and after that it gets worse and worse as she starts throwing up in the sink. This happens whilst the song The Dress Looks Nice and New from Serve John Stevens plays in the background. More and more black liquid keeps coming out until it finally stops. Text comes up saying 20 a day, 40 years, 3.4 kilos of tar. Enjoy. Yeti this is a 2009 PSA from the company Landsar in New Zealand and it follows a man that's almost dead in some mountains until a Yeti comes and saves him. The Yeti takes him out of his situation and walks through all the hills to a campfire where the Yeti tells him that there's no such thing as Yetis. We then cut back to him still being in the tree where he was dreaming about Yeti saving him and he was stuck in the tree and almost dead and then we see the text saying in reality where you're on your way out and then it comes up with the company's logo. Toys That Kill the 2004 PSA from the company Mothers Against Guns in the UK follows a few younger and older kids that are playing with BB guns in a forest. They're playing around with the guns and they seem to be having fun except for one kid waiting behind some cover. His younger sister comes up asking if she can play with them and the young boy kind of brushes her off and then one of the other kids comes and shoots the boy in the head with a BB gun. But the twist of this PSA is that it was a real gun and the narrator comes in and says that BB guns are turning into real guns as we see other kids dead in the forest. Venomosity a wild series of PSAs that was released in 2011 from the Arizona Department of Health in America. But one of them follows a classroom where a person is tempted to go and have a smoke, and as they're tempted, a weird looking venom tentacle comes out of them. The tentacle then goes and drags them outside to have a cigarette, and the text cravings brought to you by addiction comes up. Another one shows the insides of someone smoking, as we hear a narrator meant to be venom talking to the viewer about how it's feeding time, and that the more you give him, the stronger he gets, obviously meaning the more you smoke, the stronger it gets. After that, zooms out to see him smoking in a shed and text confinement brought to you by addiction comes up. Also, I want to mention that the website does not work anymore, unfortunately. Welcome to the battery. 
This is a 1988 PSA from the company Compassion in World Farming, or CIWF for short in the UK. This PSA is following a man talking to the viewer with a black background. He's talking about how you are being put in a certain system as he mentions cages and lanes and that they're made for your safety. He then talks about how people are going to remove your teeth and nails as it reduces the possibility of cannibalism and that it's in your interest to comply. The man tells us that this whole system is completely legal and that you are part of one of the most cost effective systems and that you should have no worries. We then see that chickens are being put into this system and then this is happening with your approval. The PSA then ends with the line, welcome to the battery. Tier 3. Disturbing. Montana Meth Project. Montana Meth Project is a well-known anti-meth organization started in 1999. The company released a lot of anti-meth PSAs throughout the 2000s and overall they made a lot of PSAs. Montana Meth Project's PSAs were actually shown to be quite effective when they started showing all the disgusting things that meth does to you instead of just trying to scare kids. The company does have some great PSAs such as Ben, Deep End and Jessica but they have some very strange PSAs like everything else which is the only PSA to have a corn song in it from what I can find. WSIB slash Prevented.ca A Canadian organization that focuses around making PSAs about being safe in the workplace with their most well-known PSA definitely being Top Chef. WSIB made most of their PSA in 2007, but they did release one PSA in 2009. Besides from those seven PSAs, the company has not made any others. It's quite strange to see a company with barely many PSAs at all still being remembered. I guess they're mainly remembered for their Top Chef PSA. Can you hear me? Can You Hear Me is a 90s PSA from the UK made by the company Safety on the Move. It follows a scenario where someone's lying in a hospital bed with people around the bed looking at them and talking about what happened before and what has happened to the person in the bed. One of the people standing talking to the person in the hospital bed admits that it's their fault and begs for the victim's forgiveness. Heaven Can Wait This 2002 PSA from the company Axion in Belgium centers around a few guys in a car crash that crashed into a tree. All the people in the car seem to be dead until we see the spirits of all the people start to rise. Their spirits go to the sky, except for the passenger that kept his seatbelt on because his spirit goes back into his body. After his spirit is back, he wakes up to his friends dead in the car. PSA ends with the text Heaven Can Wait, belt up. Jacqueline Jacqueline is a PSA released by the Texas Department of Transport in 2004. The PSA shows a woman holding up an old picture of herself before she got into a car accident caused by a drunk driver. She explains how she ended up in that situation and what happened to her until near the end of the PSA she pulls down the photo to show what she look at, looks like now after the accident. This is more of a depressing PSA than it actually being scary as it's sad to see someone that had to go through so much. Jacqueline got into the accident back in 1999 and after that accident she had this PSA in 2004 and also made an appearance on Oprah in 60 minutes. Unfortunately she died of cancer on the 20th of April in 2019. RSPCA British company that's released some PSAs over time was made to try and help animals find homes and get out of dangerous households. This company was founded all the way back in 1824, almost 200 years ago, but they started making PSAs around the late 80s, all the way up till about the late 2010s. Their most well-known PSAs are definitely How Much Is That Doggy in the Window, My Little Puppy, and Yard. The first two PSAs I mentioned are known for being absolutely insane. I do want to mention that the RSPCA is one of those companies where they have one country's version and then another country's version which it's still the same company like RSPCA in Australia versus RSPCA in the UK. The UK RSPCA PSAs mostly try to scare the viewer or shock them without giving the viewer much information about what the company is trying to do or how to help animals in need. RSPCA in Australia on the other hand has only made one disturbing PSA but the rest of their PSA is actually just light-hearted PSAs that try to inform the viewer that animals need your help or they actually try to inform the viewer on how you can help those animals and educate them. Lost Dreams Lost Dreams is a 2001 PSA from the Australian government of all people. But this PSA follows a few different scenarios of people using drugs whilst their younger selves narrate the PSA, seeing what they want to be when they're older. We start the PSA with the same woman being used, a man looking through someone's wallet they stole in the bathroom, a woman abusing their mother and a boy that's being zipped up in a body bag. Text fades in saying drugs destroy lives, let's work together against drugs. Fire Kills Fire Kills is a British company that started in 1988 and they mostly try to warn people about the dangers of fire and how dangerous house fires can be. The company has made some well-known PSAs such as Victim, Night Vision, which I'll also mention later, and On Your Child's Life. They've made some absolutely great PSAs that are very well done such as the ones I mentioned before, but they do have some of their very weird PSAs such as Pull Your Finger Out. The Pull Your Finger Out PSA is just the most British thing possible but not in a good way. I really just find that I can't take this seriously 
And also, if I'm trying to think that this is funny, I don't think it's funny. Operation Trident. This is a metropolitan police unit in the UK set up in 1998 to tackle mostly gun crime. They released a few PSAs around 2005 tackling gun crime, such as people not telling the authorities when knowing that someone has a gun, imprisonment because of gun crime, and being charged for gun possession. Danish Road Safety Council A company from Denmark basically is out to try and prevent car crashes released two PSAs in 2003 that both follow the same premise. The two PSAs have car crashes going on in reverse, so they start off with the crash itself and rewind as all of the damage of the accident goes away. One of them has a collision with another car, whilst the other has a bloke that hit a bike rider. Both PSAs have the person who caused the accident talking about how they wish they could reverse time and that the accident never happened, tying into what we're seeing visually. Mothers Against Drunk Driving Mothers Against Drunk Driving is an organization that's trying to stop people from drunk driving. The company started back in 1980 after a mother lost her 13 year old daughter to a drunk driver from a hit and run incident. It's honestly really sad that some companies are made after tragedies have happened. Like with a lot of these PSA companies, it is because some kind of tragedy like say one of their family relatives or even like their own sons or daughters would get hit by a car or something like that or had something serious happen to them. The company released some PSAs throughout the 90s and 2000s telling people that they shouldn't be drunk driving by showing them what could happen if you do it. NSPCC This company is a British company that out to protect children from any kinds of dangers. NSPCC started making PSAs around the 90s, which are mostly about child abuse and child sexual abuse, and still make PSAs to this day. Some of the most well-known PSAs are Cartoon, Can't Look, Excuses, and I Saw You Willy. I'll talk about some of their more disturbing PSAs later on this iceberg, as they deserve their own spot in this iceberg, because some of their PSAs aren't really disturbing at all, and then some are very, very disturbing. I honestly can't think of one bad NSPCC PSA, because they're all well done and deliver their message across to the viewer very well. Speed An Aussie PSA released in 2005 from the Australian government follows a few different people as they try the drug speed. In different people, they show the extreme reactions of people using the drug and how it affects people. We see one girl crack it at her friends and a guy punch a hole in her door. After that, we get to see a shot of a bloke in his house making drugs as they put a bunch of random stuff in it and the PSA ends with a girl in a hospital bed saying that they didn't know what was in it. Finally, the text, speed you don't know what will do to you, comes up at the end, which was actually a campaign run by the Australian government at this time. I'm pretty sure there are a few of these, but I can only find this one. Phone line. Phone line is a PSA made by the company Samaritans in 1991 from the UK. This PSA is an animated PSA, planning out different stressful scenarios that someone's going through, such as a divorce. There are many different voices coming in the PSA, adding on top of each other to make the situation seem more stressful. This keeps on going until the main character we're meant to be following starts to scream from all the stress. Also, the visuals in this PSA are actually really cool and interesting and keep me quite engaged with the PSA. The text we understand shows up to say to the viewer that the Samaritans understand the kind of stress that you may be going through at the time and that the Samaritans are there for you. Dancing Bears This is a PSA from the UK released sometime in the 2000s from the company WSPA, which stands for the World Society for the Protection of Animals. They made a PSA that's basically a glorified saw flick, but instead of a saw trap, there's a man cutting different parts of a wooden bear, showing what people actually do to bears, such as drilling through their noses and cutting off their nails. After that's done, there's a string in the wooden bear's nose that the man pulls to make the wooden bear dance, as the narrator says, captivity, torture, or dance until death. The WSPA is here to protect animals. Honestly, this PSA is in such low quality that it's hard to really see what's actually going on in this one. DOE an Irish company that makes PSAs about the dangers of driving, if it is drink driving, speeding, or anything else. The company's most famous PSA by far is the Shame On You PSA. Which, in my own opinion, it's probably one of the funniest PSAs of all time. It's so ridiculous and taking itself too seriously that it's just funny. Shame On You is meant to be disturbing, but the end of the PSA is just straight up hilarious for how fake and far-fetched it is. But the company has released some good PSAs like Shame. Biggie Bear PSAs. Biggie Bear is a series of PSAs in 2004 from South Africa made by the company Parents for Responsible Viewing. The company shows the viewer different acts that shouldn't be shown to kids on television, which ties into their slogan for this campaign, What is your child learning from television? Which I just found out recently that Biggie Bear is played by a well-known South African actor named Rob Van Veren. Biggie Bear Surprise shows us Biggie Bear trying to cheer out one of his friends, Mr. Spotty, by injecting him with some kind of drugs into his arm. Biggie Bear says hello follows a new character called Mr. Rabbit as he comes in to say hi to the kids. Biggie Bear doesn't like that someone besides him is getting the attention, so he ends up beating and killing Mr. Rabbit by shooting him. 
The last PSA the company made was called Biggie Bear Meets a Friend, and it shows Biggie Bear meeting a new person called Miss Pussycat. After we see the new character, Biggie Bear ends up talking to her for a bit, and after that, Biggie Bear ends up grabbing her and rapping her. Shoeboxes A PSA from the company Africa Rwanda Relief appeal in 1995. In this PSA, we see footage of African children walking around or upset, as the PSA tells us we know that you hate giving money, so please send us your old shoeboxes. After that said, we see dead people all over the ground, and more text fades in saying we're running out of coffins. The main reason why this PSA isn't higher on this iceberg is that I don't actually find it that disturbing. Sure, the dead bodies is disturbing, but that's kind of it. Grotesque Grotesque is a PSA from the Ministry of Transport in the Czech Republic, released in 2008, and it follows a group of friends packing their things into a car after staying near a lake for a while. Circus-style music's playing in the background as they pack their things into the car, whilst they're sped up. They manage to pack everything into the car, but they're all squished in the car. The man in the driver's seat decides to turn on the car, and when he does that, he looks back to see everyone besides him dead in the car. The music slows down a lot, and the narrator comes in to say this is no joke, and that two to three die or hundreds injured daily, and it mainly happens from obscuring the driver's view or squishing into a vehicle. Sunday Lunch This fucking strange 2006 PSA made by the Southwark Council shows a family having lunch at a table. Everything seems alright and all good, until the mother pulls out a gun and shoots the youngest son in the head. The whole family's horrified and you can hear them all crying, and one of them even throws up after seeing the youngest son dead at the table. Tex fades in when you can hear the family crying, saying if you keep quiet about gun crime, it's like pulling the trigger yourself. Just another PSA that tries to intentionally scare the viewer, there's not really much else to say. ECPAT ECPAT is a company trying to end sexual exploitation of children. The company has a few PSAs such as child sexual exploitation as a crime, in where we follow a few different girls that are being exploited for sex as their ages come up next to them. The PSA ends with an underage girl naked in bed as the authorities storm the building. A picture of a man shows up on screen as the text 10 years covers his face. More text then comes up saying sexual relations with the minor means prison and then lists off a few names of people that got prison time for this reason. Another PSA which is actually from Australia follows a man talking to his wife about how he'll be home soon and it all seems normal until we see the camera slowly pan back and we see an underage girl sitting on the bed with him. Consumer Safety Institute A company from the Netherlands that made PSAs about several different topics. Some of the most well-known PSAs are Stadium Fire, Eye Candy and Rocket. Stadium Fire shows a real stadium fire next to a lit cigarette to show the viewer how the speed of fire is unpredictable and that you should always be prepared. Eye Candy is a PSA where the creators make in inedible things look like delicious foods such as mothballs with bleach and shoe polish with fire lighters. The message of Eye Candy is that inedible things can look like food to children and that they should be kept away from those things. In the Rocket PSA, a kid's lighting up fireworks as the narrator is talking about what the characters are doing. The narrator then ends up asking the question, what are you doing wrong? And when that happens, the rocket falls over and hits the girl. Tex comes in to say secure bottles by filling them with sand or water, and that windy weather conditions increase accident rates by 48%. Landmine So this PSA really doesn't have any info of when it was released, but it was made by the United Nations. The PSA takes place at a local girls soccer game where the girls play, and eventually a few people playing the game are blown up by landmines. Obviously, everyone's panicking and people are starting to blow up from the landmines as we hear them panicking. Text comes up saying if there were landmines here, would you stand for them anywhere? Luke Starler This PSA is about a man that is suffering with AIDS as we see him trying to get out of bed as he's struggling. We see that he has stage 9 AIDS and it takes him a whole PSA just to get out of bed and we see and hear how much pain he is just trying to get up. The PSA ends with a text and you think it's hard to get out of bed to get a condom. Action Man Action Man's a PSA made by the Veterans of Peace, or VFP for short, in the UK, talking about how people after war usually need help but end up doing any substance to deal with the PTSD they get from war. The whole PSA is framed to be a parody of the old G.I. Joe toy commercials that they actually imitate really well. There's a few of these PSAs, with one centering around a man that abuses substances and eventually hangs himself, another about a paraplegic in a wheelchair that shows how he has to deal with life after war, and another about a dead Action Man figure that you have to take care of, identify, who the doll was, and eventually bury, and actually set up a funeral for. St. John Ambulance A company from the UK that has actually made quite a few PSAs over the years, and they're also around in Australia, so there are UK and Australian St. John's PSAs. All the PSAs encourage people to learn first aid in case of an accident or any kind of scenario where someone gets severely injured. The most well-known one is Save the Boy, where a man and his son are out, and the son falls off a tree, and the wife knows first aid, but she's actually at home, and she doesn't know that this has happened. 
I actually saw a St. John's PSA on TV recently, but it was about someone that drowned in a river and their group of friends were there with them but didn't know first aid, so they encouraged the viewer to learn first aid. By the way, did you know that the creators of Don't Hug Me I'm Scared, Becky Sloan and Joseph Palling made this PSA in 2016? Yeah, they made a PSA about a bunch of fairy tale creatures making a rhyme for baby CPR and it's pretty enjoyable. RSA RSA is an Irish company that makes PSAs about the dangers of driving, if it's drink driving, speeding or anything else. The company has made some disturbing PSAs, but to be completely honest, their PSAs aren't memorable like at all in my opinion. I'm not saying they're bad at all, but it's just nothing to say about them. Creeping This is a PSA from South Australia that was released sometime in the 2000s from the company Mac of South Australia. The PSA follows a few different scenarios where people are going too fast and can't slow down in time so they cause accidents. It starts with a car hitting two people crossing the road, and then the PSA flashes different videos of accidents caused by the same thing. The PSA ends with a shot of someone driving as cuts and bruises fade onto their face and then fade off of his face. Then fade off of his face and then the text stop creeping comes up on screen. Is there anybody out there? Another Samaritan's PSA. But this PSA came out in the year 1986 which obviously released in the UK and it features the Pink Floyd song Is There Anybody Out There from their album The Wall. As the song's playing we see a grey wall and then a person trying to get through the walls we see their hands and head pushing up against the wall. We see that the man's struggling to get through the walls, he ends up screaming because he can't get through. The person ends up slowly giving up after frantically trying to get through, and when the person pulls away, the text says yes. The Samaritans comes up, responding to the question if anybody is there to help. Neighbours Neighbours is a PSA from the company Family Violence Prevention Fund that was released in sometimes in the 90s. PSA follows a couple in bed as we hear the couple arguing in an apartment above them. We hear that the woman in the apartment above is being abused, and as the couple are in bed, they don't do anything, and they just try to go to sleep. After this happens, the text fades in saying it is your business. Mirror A Swedish PSA from the company Anorexi Polemic on Duct, released in 2007, shows a young woman looking at herself in the mirror, as she seems to be unsatisfied with how she looks. We can tell she doesn't like her body, she keeps grabbing parts of her body and thinking that she's overweight and not healthy. This is until the camera pans out to slowly show that the girl in the PSA is actually anorexic and sees herself in a different way to how she actually looks. Text fades in saying, help people with eating disorders. SWR A company from Germany that actually stands for Soda West Ronde Fong, I probably fucking butchered that, is a broadcasting station that broadcasts radio and TV stations. They were founded in 1998, but from 1999 onwards, they started making PSAs for their radio and TV stations. Their most well-known PSAs are Day Trip, A Mock, and Nightmare. Day Trip is by far their most well-known PSA, and I've talked about this one a lot, where a father and son walk around a city and see disturbing things. The things they see is such as a man being hit by a car, a fist fight, and a woman possibly being raped. But PSAs like A Mock are just really offensive, making the Columbine school shooting that happened in 1999 into a video game to say video games called school shootings. I really wouldn't be surprised if this company just made these ridiculously over-the-top PSAs just to get attention. SWR hasn't made any good PSAs in my eyes, and the PSAs they've made either seem to not deliver their messages across well, or just don't understand what they're talking about. Photograph This is a Scottish PSA from the company Scotland Against Drugs that was released in 1996, showing a teenager in a photograph slowly deteriorating over time. The first thing that happens is some spots appear on his face as well as teeth rotting to make him look worse. The picture then changes to the video of, a t of the teen looking more stressed before it changes back to an image of the teen. More video shows up with the team stressing out, nearly having an anxiety attack until the photo changes of the team being deformed with a bit of Photoshop's liquefied tool. Photo then slowly fades to black. I find it hard to understand why people find this PSA to be really scary. It's a cool concept and all to really show the transformation of how drugs can really ruin someone's appearance, but this PSA doesn't do it that well. Faroe Islands Faroe Islands is a British PSA from the Whale and Dolphin Conservation, which was released in 1989 and has Anthony Hopkins narrating the PSA. This PSA is an animated short that uses paintings for its animation, and it's quite unique because of that. The narrator tells the story of the Faroe Islands, where people from far and wide come to the islands to kill and cut up whales for them all to eat. When the people in the story kill all the whales and feed them to the crowd, the rest of the whales are left on the beach to rot. The PSA ends with the company's logo. Speed of Fire a New Zealand PSA from the year 2002 tries to tell people to stay safe around fire. The PSA mainly shows the viewer that the spread of fire is extremely unpredictable. This PSA has two different versions, one where it's the full PSA start to finish, and then there's another where it's cut up throughout three minutes with different ads in between different segments of the PSA. 
such a brilliant idea for a PSA that plays out like a ticking time bomb because at the end of the PSA, the whole fire is in a blaze where we see the New Zealand Fire Service logo. Hand. This is a 1998 PSA released from the UK company Fireworks Safety. And as the company's name says, they make PSAs to warn people against the dangers of fireworks. The PSA has someone light a firework whilst holding it in their hand as we hear people in the background counting from 10 to 0. At number 4, the firework blows up in his hand and we see the end result where the hand is missing two fingers and the text blast off comes up. Finally, at the end of the PSA, the text throwing fireworks, it's not worth the risk comes up. No brainer. No brainer is another PSA from New Zealand that released in 2003 from the company Karen Z. Follows a man at a nightclub going to walk into the bathroom. He goes into one of the stalls and locks the door as we see the man pull the top of his head back to reveal his brain as he grabs a bit of his brain to line up like it's cocaine on the toilet seat lid. The man cuts it up and then snorts his brain up. After he does that, we see that his pupils get bigger as the text fades in saying every day more and more people line themselves up to destroy themselves. Very subtle, telling people that drugs like cocaine destroy your brain. I see what you did there. NIFRS This is an Irish company that stands for the Northern Ireland Fire and Rescue Service and they made PSAs around the mid 2000s trying to tell people to be safe around fire and not to leave things unattended. There are two PSAs from this company I could find. One has a man leave a pot on, and the other has a fire brigade in a burnt house as they find out that their kid died in a house fire because the family didn't have a plan to escape. GLC So the GLC is known as the Greater London Council, and this council sometimes partnered up with organisations like CRY to create PSAs. In one of their PSAs called Risks, an old couple's gone to bed as they leave their chimney fire lit. A narrator starts talking and tells the viewer not to leave fires lit, and when the old couple leaves, the fire spreads until eventually the whole house is on fire and we see it from the outside of the house. Another PSA from the company is the PSA called Shut It Out. In this PSA, we follow a young girl as she's walking to her room. The girl gets to the room and as she's shutting the door, now it comes in to say each night you go to bed, close the door as it should hold back any fire. When the girl shuts the door, the tank shoots out a blast of fire at the door and continues to shoot at the door to emphasize that shutting your door will give you time to escape a house fire. DTR A company from the UK that made PSAs in 1999 follows a few different perspectives in a car crash. They released four PSAs all in the same year in which three of them focus around the person that caused the car crash and another PSA called Mike and Joy which focuses on a victim's parents. All the PSAs are quite the same where the PSA asks people a question. In the three PSAs about people that actually cause the accidents, the question is what is it like to kill someone? And for the Mike and Joy PSA, the question is what is it like to lose someone? All of the PSAs are absolutely fantastic and I think the Mike and Molly PSA is the most effective as you get to hear the parents talk about how horrible it is to deal with a daughter that passed away. All of these PSAs end with a text, please don't drink and drive, as all these accidents were caused by someone drinking and driving. Monolith slash Iceberg Both of these PSAs from 1987 and 1986 both came out from the National Health of the UK and they also both talk about how dangerous AIDS is. In Monolith, we see some natural disasters and then a man carving something as a narrator talks about how dangerous AIDS is and how you can get the disease. It ends with a carving showing that it's AIDS, and the narrator tells the viewer that they should read the pamphlet and not die of ignorance. In the iceberg PSA, it has a camera pan around the tip of the iceberg as the text shows up saying how AIDS can be spread, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. After that, the camera goes underneath the water to see AIDS engraved into the iceberg, and it ends the same way as the monolith PSA. Eyes This is a UK PSA from the company Safety on the Move, released in 1992, and it follows a woman lying down the road as we stare into her eyes. Throughout the PSA, we hear people trying to resuscitate her and we see her pupils grow and then shrink to size to show that she's passed away. We hear the person that's caused the accident say I didn't mean it after being told that there's still no response and after that the text drinking and driving Rex lives comes up. This PSA is a part of that campaign which actually has quite a few PSAs made for it such as the Dave one which I've mentioned a lot. Scream Scream is a British PSA from the Samaritans that released in 1989 and it's my personal favourite Samaritans PSA. It follows a woman in a light blue room as she's trying to talk to the camera but all that's coming out is distorted guitar sounds. This keeps going on until she starts to get upset and starts to break down as she's trying to talk but she can't. She ends up breaking down when the text Samaritans understand fades in and more lighthearted music fades in when the text does. WorkSafe Victoria An Aussie company based in Victoria that was made for the safety of workers in any work environment. The company's most well-known PSAs, released around the late 2000s and early 2010s, was PSAs like Beth, Bakery and Kitchen. WorkSafe Victoria still makes PSAs to this day and even their most recent PSA came out last year and it's all about workers getting harassed and abused in their workplace. As someone that lives in Victoria, 
these PSAs are really well known. A lot of people still remember them today. Also, I could go up to pretty much anyone in the state of Victoria and talk about these PSAs and they'll be like, oh yeah, I remember seeing that when I was younger. Oh yeah, I remember that on Channel 10 at like 12 p.m. on a Saturday. Queensland Transport. This company is an Australian company quite like TAC, which I'll mention later, but in Queensland instead of Victoria. Queensland Transport started making PSAs in the late 90s and all throughout the 2000s with their most popular PSA definitely being Pram. All of Queensland Transport's PSAs are quite the same and most of them are about speeding and the terrible things that can happen if you're speeding and not driving responsibly. The company doesn't actually have that many PSAs, but they're mainly remembered for the Pram one. Drinking and Driving Rex Lives a series of PSAs that all tie into this campaign, which is Drinking and Driving Rex Lives. This series of PSAs were mostly released around the 90s, and all the PSAs show the different ways on how drinking and driving can ruin lives from yours to others around you. The most well-known PSA in the campaign by far is Dave, which I've talked about about a thousand times now. TAC TAC, or the Transport Accident Commission, is an Aussie company based in Victoria that tries to prevent car accidents from happening. TAC are known for their PSAs covering many different topics about driving, such as drink driving, driving on drugs, and speeding, to name a few. They've had some great PSAs throughout the years, such as curtain airbags, what happens when you wipe five off, and if you drive on drugs, you're out of your mind, to name a few. I have said in the past that the company was falling off with their quality of PSAs, but this year when they released two new PSAs, such as the one that's on the screen, they've actually increased in quality and starting to get a lot better again. Also, I love it that this company has a film competition every year where they give people the opportunity to script a public service announcement for them to make the next year. I'll quickly touch on these PSAs as two of the bad PSAs I mentioned are from this competition, but there are some great ones such as Yes Mum from 2012. Which, if I was to be honest, it's one of the best PSAs of all time. NZTA This company is quite the same as TAC but for New Zealand instead. The New Zealand Transport Agency released PSAs throughout the 90s and 2000s, mostly highlighting drunk driving and speeding. The main PSAs from this company are Murderer, Consequences, and Split. There are some good PSAs they've made, but there's not much to say here, really. Natural Born Smoker and Baby Both Natural Born Smoker and Baby are PSAs released in 1985 from the UK. They both follow this weird-looking Natural Born Smoker as the narrator talks about the person, or in the case of the Baby PSA, the baby itself. In Natural Born Smoker, the PSA highlights how the person is a natural born smoker and it's not a real thing. And in the baby PSA, they show how a natural born smoker would raise a baby to be a natural born smoker. Padlock A 2006 PSA from Quebec, released by the company CSST, shows a man doing his job and having to pull a lever. The man comes back to activate the machine and when he does, he flattens someone's head. The PSA ends with the text Padlock. Car Park Car Park is a British PSA from the company Calm, released in 2006. The PSA follows a man parking at a car park as he seems to be going to work. We then see another man seemingly walk up to him. The man that's going out of the car thinks the other guy's going to hurt him, and as the PSA cuts to black, text comes up saying three men are killed in Britain every day. It cuts back to the man as we see that the man that was scared is actually unharmed by the other person because they just walked past him. But after that, we see the hooded man standing on the edge of the car park as he falls off the edge. Text fades in saying it can help stop suicide. Devil. This is a PSA released in 1999 from the company Smokeline in Norway, and the PSA follows a man that's meant to be the devil talking to the camera. The devil asks if there are any smokers out there as he lists a few facts about smoking, like how 50% of smokers will die from smoking. He then decides to flip a coin to decide which 50% of people die, and as he flips the coin, he looks at the coin and just laughs. Obviously the PSA is trying to say that there's always a chance that you'll die from smoking, so it's better off not to do it at all. By the way, I really like the performance this guy's giving in this PSA, it's pretty solid. Dirt Racer A PSA released in the year 2000 from the Aussie company Market Force follows kids playing with their tricycles called Dirt Racers. The PSA plays out like an ad for the product where the kids are enjoying riding on tricycles until one of the kids accidentally ends up riding on the road and getting hit by a car. We see a broken tricycle in front of the car and then the camera pans to the driver upset as the narrator says you can't always see what's coming. 10 kilometers an hour makes a big difference. Have a break. This 2011 PSA from Greenpeace in the UK follows an officer worker needing a break. The PSA imitates a Kit Kat commercial where their slogan is have a break, have a Kit Kat. But the man goes to pull out his Kit Kat and as he opens it, we see an orangutan finger. Everyone else seems to see it except for him as his co-worker is in shock as he takes a bite out the finger. Tex then comes in to say give the orangutan a break as their rainforest is being cut down by companies that Nestle partners it with to get their palm oil for their chocolate. High Rise 
Hard Rise is a New Zealand PSA from 2006 from LTNZ. The PSA follows a family in the cars, and narrator talks about when people drive fast they don't realise the danger they're in. We then see that a car is a floor off the road, and the narrator tells us that this is what a 90km an hour car crash feels like in a car. We then see another car up 5 floors, and the narrator tells us that's how it feels at 110km an hour. And finally, we can see a car 9 floors off the ground, and the narrator says this is a 125km an hour crash. The PSA ends with the top car falling as it cuts black. Text comes in, then saying, the faster you go, the bigger the mess. Inside Out This is a 2003 PSA from South Africa, made by the company National Council Against Smoking. The PSA follows a woman in a forest all alone. As she moves her head to face the camera, she pulls out a cigarette and starts to smoke it. When she's doing this, the camera is panning around her until a tree wipes across and then we see her skin looking completely burnt as she's still smoking a cigarette. Smoke then covers the screen and text fades in saying, would you still be smoking if it did to your outside what it does to your inside? Made in Taiwan A PSA from the UK made by the company EIA that released in 1995 shows a group of rhinos on the TV. A narrator comes in to talk about the species of animals and that they are almost the last of their species. After that, blood starts shooting out the side of the TV and the narrator talks about how rhinos are being hunted and exploited only in Taiwan because it's the only country that hasn't made hunting rhinos illegal. Playhouse Playhouse is a New Zealand PSA released in 2005 from the company Women's Refuge. The PSA acts like a typical kids show where a woman's making a cake in a playhouse as the father gets home from work. Everything seems normal and happy, like a kids show, until a woman actually knocks over a cup. The music then cuts out when the cup falls over, and the man seems to get annoyed, and after that, the father pushes the woman against the oven. He cuts the text saying that last year we helped over 10,000 children. I actually really like the approach to this PSA. I thought it was a bit ridiculous at first, but when you really think about it as an interpretation of how a child sees this situation, it's pretty it's pretty well done. Red Banana A 2004 PSA from Italy depicts a child being tested on with a bunch of toys as the child goes around playing with different toys until it comes across a red banana. When the child plays with the red banana, we see a general of an army as well as a few scientists are watching this unfold. As we see the people watching the little girl in this scenario, we hear the banana explode. The last thing we see in this PSA is a toy train driving past the girl's blown off foot. SAAQ So SAAQ is a company from Quebec and they usually make PSAs about car accidents and trying to prevent them from happening. I've talked about the PSA to Hero Cesaro in the past which shows real footage of a man speeding and flipping his car over when he was at 200km an hour and unfortunately he died from the crash. The company started making PSAs in the 90s and still make PSAs to this day and their most recent one I've seen is from about 2020 and it's about marijuana use while driving. It's a strange PSA where a weed plant takes the wheel and makes people in the car crash head on with a car passing by. Accident An Aussie PSA made in the 90s from the company Transport Safety follows two different scenarios in a split screen style. One scenario where a woman gets hit by a car and the other scenario is where a woman's walking along and she avoids a car crash. At the end of the PSA, speeds are revealed on each side of the split screen showing that in the, right, in the situation on the right, he was 17 kilometers over the speed limit. Homefront Homefront's a Canadian company that released two domestic PSAs in the year 2003. Their most well-known PSA is the Coffee PSA, so we'll talk about that one first. We start with a family eating lunch at some restaurant as a worker comes to ask the man if he wants coffee. The man says yes please and the worker pours the coffee and accidentally spills a little bit of it. The man laughs it off at first saying that she spilled your coffee, but he then gets angry and calls her a fucking bitch and then grabs her and pours coffee all over her and then smacks her. After that a narrator comes in to say you wouldn't get away with it here, so you won't get away with it at home. The other PSA is called Office that has the same premise, but instead of a restaurant, it's an office, and the man abuses the co worker after they said their opinion on the topic. I remember these PSAs blow up at one point because you really don't expect how the PSA will land. Corpse This is an Aussie PSA released in 2000 from the company ORS. We follow a few people speeding in a red muscle car swerving in and out of lanes as rock music plays. Then we see the people in the car enjoying themselves and talking about a party and so we see that the people in the car look like corpses with widened out wire eyes and cuts all over their bodies. All the people that are in the car are trying to encourage the driver to drive faster and faster and then the text comes up saying speed and you're as good as dead. Don't let ice destroy you. Another Aussie PSA released in the 2000s but this PSA is from the Australian government. This PSA follows one doctor as she narrates the PSA and talks about the effects of ice, whilst we see visual representations of this and what drugs can do to people. The PSA follows one doctor as she talks about the effects of ice, whilst we see visual representations of what the drug can do to people. Things we see are people digging into their own skin and even someone going nuts in a police station. 
PSA ends of the line don't let ice destroy you. Double accident. A French PSA from 2006 made by DSCR depicts the result of a car crash, which is a car flipped over in the middle of the road, as two people in the car are talking to each other. The text comes up, which is actually in French, and it translates to that that day he was driving too fast. This is until all of a sudden, as the man's trying to get out of the car, another car comes in head on with theirs. More text comes up saying, and he was driving a little too fast. The PSA ends with a text that says, always obey speed limits. Impacts. This is a PSA from the Denmark company Danish Road Safety Council, released in 1999. We follow a doctor as he's talking in Danish to the viewer about how the human body isn't made to withstand a car crash, and that injuries similar to sports injuries can even occur at 30 km an hour. In the PSA, we see visual representations of everything the doctor is talking about, but the doctor continues to say that a small speed increase may cause serious implications. The example that the doctor gives is being hit at 40 km an hour would feel like a 6 meter fall. The PSA ends with the doctor saying that 50 km an hour, there isn't much he can do, and it's a job for his colleagues in the basement. It rarely stops. An American PSA that's released in 2010 from the National Domestic Violence Hotline depicts a woman staring at the camera with bruised eyes and tears down her face. The woman's trying to cover up her abuse until more cuts and bruises show up on her face after covering up the first set of bruises on her face. PSA ends with her frantically looking to her right as the text, it rarely stops, fades in. Lend a hand. Lend a hand is a 2000s PSA made by Unifem in America and it shows a couple eating dinner whilst we can hear another couple arguing. This is until we can hear the man hit his partner and we even see a painting move on the wall because he threw her against the wall. The man at the dinner table ends up getting up to deal with the situation by grabbing a bat and going to the door. He knocks at the door and the man answers. The man with the bat then gives the other man the bat and says I thought you could use this. Six fades in saying do nothing he may as well lend a hand. Vivisected. The PSA from 1990 from the company Thames Television in the UK shows a rat being vivisected. But a narrator comes in to ask what a rat eats. Then we see what a rat eats with some, some text such as like chip packets, sweet wrappers, and fast food containers. The narrator then says that rats spread disease, and the more litter we have, the more rats will come, as we see the rat cut open. Text fades in saying, more litter isn't a disgrace, it's a danger. Dave. Dave's 2005 PSA from the Road Safety Council in Australia showing how bad car crashes can injure people. The PSA shows a car crash of a poor old AU Falcon, the narrator tells us that in a car crash, how hard you hit something is determined by how fast you're going. But the PSA gets rid of the car and just shows Dave floating in the air as like he's driving the car, showing the injuries he would receive from a car crash like this. It shows everything that would happen to his body, and at the end of the PSA, his body falls to the ground as text comes in saying drop 5 saves lives shows up. The Exploding Tiger Trick This PSA was released in 1996 from the company EIA in the UK. In this PSA, we see some kind of magic trick where a magician pulls a tiger into a box. The narrator talks about how India made a reserve to protect the remaining tigers, the national symbol of their country. The magician puts the tiger into the box, and then he stabs swords into the box as the tiger is screaming. We see blood coming out of the box, and the narrator comes back to say that one tiger is killed every day, and if this continues, there will be none left. When the narrator finishes, the magician opens the box to only see blood all over the box, but no tiger. Text comes in saying, tell the Indian government you don't want the tiger to disappear. Smile. A PSA from the company Boave, released in the year 1989 from the UK. This PSA follows a woman staring at the camera as a cover of the song Smile is playing in the background. We see the girl getting makeup on, but as she does this, we see the marks of a blob on her face, such as scars on the cheek and cuts on her lips. The PSA ends when we get to see all of the marks all over her face as she's looking to the camera. The narrator comes in to say, every year thousands of animals suffer this pain in the name of beauty. After that, the woman in the PSA screams as it fades to black. The Family The Family is a 2002 PSA from DSCR in France, and it follows a family as they're eating breakfast and getting ready to leave the house. We see the daughter and son waiting to leave as the father is getting his keys to take them out probably to school. They all leave, but then all three of them are just sitting on a balcony that's meant to imitate a car drive. As we hear the car engine and we see them just sitting on the balcony. It's until we hear car brakes that all three of them get thrown off the balcony to their death. French narration comes in as the PSA fades black, and it shows some text that roughly translates to at the front as at the back. The place of the dead is that without a seatbelt. Summer Holiday A Nazi PSA released in the year 2000 from the company RTA follows a family about to go on a summer holiday. But we see the family packing up the car to get ready to go on their holiday as their older son documents the events with his camera. The family finally gets on the road as the boy is just recording random things such as a man on a boat and his younger brother. 
This is until when he's eating a lolly, the family gets into a car crash and the boy's face ends up in front of the camera as text fades in saying two people die every day of the holidays. Scarhead. This is yet another Aussie PSA and it's from the Pedestrian Council of Australia as it was released in 2005. All we see in this PSA is a man's forehead as he starts going faster and faster when riding his motorbike, the bigger that the scar gets on his head. The scar eventually goes all the way across his forehead and when it does, the text speed kills slow down shows up. The Mistake. The Mistake is a French PSA from the company DSR yet again, but released in 2005. The PSA follows a family driving a car. A narrator as well as text comes in to say something is missing from this car. But everything goes along normally as the family is driving along and the narrator comes in to say any clue. After that, the father slams on the brakes as one of the passengers in the back goes flying through the windscreen. Text comes in to say the rear passenger's seatbelt as everyone else in the car is panicking about what they have just seen. The narrator then says to always buckle up in the back. The Silent Killer An Aussie PSA that released in 2012 from the company Stroke Foundation is all about educating people about strokes. In this PSA, we follow a man talking to the viewer with four covered dishes and the table in front of him. The man talks about how one in every six Australians has the markings of a bloodthirsty killer inside of them. He goes on to say that the doctors call it a stroke. As he shows that one of the dishes is a brain, he also says that a stroke is the second biggest cause of deaths in Australia. The man mentions that some of you might be lucky to survive, but then he starts cutting into a brain showing that you could lose the ability to talk, to comprehend, or con even control your bladder. The PSA ends with the man smashing a brain with a hammer, and then the PSA ends with the man saying, so ends the lesson, end your life. Toy Gun Toy Gun's a PSA from Scotland that ended in 2009, made by the company Safer Scotland. It starts with a doll with a text saying toy doll, and then a gun showing up with more text saying toy gun with a question mark at the end. It then goes back to the toy doll as the gun shoots off half the doll's face with blood gushing out of the doll's face. It ends with the text an air gun is not a toy. Uncle Mark This is a 2000s PSA from the New Zealand company Had Enough and it plays out the events of a family barbecue. Uncle Mark is swinging a kid around and doing other things with the family having some fun. We then see him drink and slowly get more and more drunk as the night goes on until he's really drunk at the end of like late at night. He decides to swing a child around that wants to be swung around, even though he's really drunk, and when he does this, he accidentally hits the child's head against the cupboard. Everyone freaks out as he's told to get out. Mark then leaves and starts crying up against the feds as text fades in saying, it's not the drinking, it's how we're drinking. What if it was you? What if it was you is a 2014 PSA from the company League Against Cruel Sports in the UK. We follow a mother with their baby as they see something outside. They go outside to see something disturbing. The mother puts the baby back in the cradle as the mother runs away seemingly from something or someone. But the mother keeps on running for a while until they seem to get stopped by some dogs as we hear barking when she falls over. We cut back to the baby as a text, what if it was you, fades in. Join us now to stop illegal fox hunting. Tier 4. Very scary. Excuses. This is a PSA from the company NSPCC that released in 1991. In the PSA, we see photos of different children as the song Tell Me There's a Heaven from Chris Ray plays in the background. With each photo, text comes up talking about the excuses parents give for their injuries that their child had received because of the parents abusing their child. After each excuse, this PSA has more text countering the parents' excuses pointing out the other injuries that the child has. The PSA last parents' excuse is that they had their turn back for a minute and the text after that says that the report showed multiple bruises, internal bleeding, fractured ribs, malnutrition and dehydration, consistent only with long-term The PSA ends of the text, there's never an excuse for children, there's no excuse for ignoring it. Main Nika. A PSA released in 1997 from the company National Children's Month in the Philippines starts off with someone holding a toy doll as the narrator is talking to the viewer in Filipino. They're saying listen to those children crying at the cruelty as we see the person squeeze the doll as we hear the children crying in the background. The narrator continues by saying hurt, exploited, asking for help as we keep seeing more of what we've seen before until a title card comes up saying stop child comes up. The narrator then comes back to say their salvation is in your hands and then more text comes up saying children have rights, people have duties. Partnership for a Drug Free Singapore Partnership for a Drug Free Singapore is a well-known company for making anti-drug PSAs throughout the late 90s. The most well-known PSAs are Rats, Blender and by far the most popular Partnership for a Drug Free Singapore PSA, you're the guinea pig. In the rats PSA, we see a man in chains as a narrator talks about how people used to be tortured by getting eaten alive by rats. We see the rats bite into the man as it's used as a metaphor for what heroin does to your body. Rats ends with the text, 4 out of 5 people who try heroin never escape. Heroin is a living hell. 
In Blender, the PSA shows a brain in the Blender and then a man puts ecstasy in the Blender with the brain. The narrator asks if you wonder what ecstasy does to your brain, and as he asks that, he turns the Blender on. Now let's talk about one of my most favorite PSAs of all time, Yield the Guinea Pig. It shows a man strapped down in a chair being tested on by a group of scientists. These scientists are testing the effects of ecstasy on a man whilst the narrator says no one knows how much brain damage ecstasy causes and that it's still being tested. You're the guinea pig ends with the line to take ecstasy and you're the guinea pig. As we see the man in the chair struggling to get out and the PSA fades to black. Searching. The fire prevention PSA from 1974 in the UK shows someone walking around a burnt down house as we hear radio of people yelling out to each other and echoing. The man keeps walking around the house as well as seeing how badly the house is burnt down. The PSA ends with one of the bedrooms as the video burns the text saying keep matches away from children. Seer. Seer is a company from the Netherlands that released quite a few fireworks PSAs around the 90s and 2000s. Their most well known PSAs are definitely Countdown, Shadow Puppets and Sign Language. Countdown's a 1996 PSA that tells people not to mess with fireworks by counting down from 10. When the PSA is counting down you can see hands slowly lose fingers as the numbers go down until there are eventually no fingers left at the end of the PSA. Text fades in with the campaign slogan, Jerks Only Mess With Fireworks, which was actually their campaign that they were running all throughout the 90s. Shadow Puppets shows two hands creating shadow puppets of animals such as a dove, a swan and a rabbit, as well as a few different other animals. This keeps going on until at the end of the PSA the music slows down as we see a person with a missing hand. When the missing hand comes up the PSA says Rund, which roughly translates to idiot in English. The PSA ends with the same campaign's text. In sign language, it has the same background as the countdown PSA with a full red, but this time the PSA is talking to us in sign language. The PSA is telling us about firework victims and how they lose their hearing or they receive serious injuries. As this is happening, the hands slowly lose fingers and the sign language gets harder and harder to understand because the fingers are going away. Hansel and Gretel Foundation PSA In this PSA by the company Hansel and Gretel against child <laughs> released in the 2000s from Denmark, we hear a girl laughing as we see a page in a fairy tale book of an old man and what's meant to be Gretel. As we hear the girls laugh, we hear a woman say, what do you hear? Do you hear a little girl having an old If so, we'll do everything we can to put you in jail. The laughing stops and the woman says, if not, please donate. Nightmare. This is a Scottish PSA from the Scottish Office Fire Safety from 1995, shows the events of a man's nightmare where a house fire is occurring as we see a photo of the man's family burning. We hear the kids screaming throughout the PSA, which switches from being a normal photo to a video of the family begging for help as the man's trying to reach out to them. We see them disappear one by one until the man wakes up alone in his bed full of sweat. His alarm's beeping and that's what woke him up, so he turns it off and grabs the photo of his family on the bedside table. The man looks at the photo and holds it up against himself as the narrator tells the viewer to always check their smoke alarm and to plan your escape or you might live to regret it. This one honestly just hits in the feels, like damn, it hits hard at the end. Disasters Disasters is a PSA that was released in 1991 from the UK company Disaster Action and it follows a person with a flashlight as they look around an area with dead bodies wrapped in newspapers. We hear a narrator say vague things like King's Cross and Piper Alpha as we see more dead bodies until the narrator says hundreds of victims and thousands of lives ruined. The narrator keeps going on saying it's time to put lives before profits, time to tighten the laws and to put safety first before the next disaster. I don't know if this PSA is referring to some kind of event or if it's just saying its message in general, but I do feel like it's trying to say something about a certain event that happened around the time in the UK. Night Vision This is a PSA from Fire Kills in 2004, follows a few different scenarios where people on a house fire don't know what to do and end up being stuck in their house. They also tell you to make sure you have your exits clear in case of house fire. The PSA ends with the text, make your plan. It's quite an effective and disturbing PSA, and also straightforward, so there's not really much to say about this one. Stairs Stairs is a PSA from the company Family F Prevention Fund, which is a company I mentioned earlier in this video, and this PSA released sometime in the 1990s. The PSA follows a kid sitting on top of the stairs as they're listening to their parents argue. We then hear that the father starts f their mother because the father didn't get any pizza. In this PSA, when they see the kids' faces watching in shock at the whole situation, PSA ends the text, children have to sit by and watch. What's your excuse? Boiled bear anyone? A British PSA from the company Task Force released in 1996 and all we see is text on the screen for a recipe on how to boil a bear. As the text is coming up, we can hear the audio of a bear being boiled alive as people are trying to cook the bear to eat. Narrator comes in at the end of the PSA to say bears are considered a gourmet food in the Far East, despite the fact that the species is endangered and close to extinction. Chase. 
This 1998 PSA from the UK, made by IAW, follows the perspective of a fox walking around the wild. This happens for a while, walking across roads and through different forests until a dog eventually finds a fox and drags it out of a hole. After that, we see photos of foxes because of fox hunting, and then text fades in to say, for pity's sake, ban fox hunting now. Which, from what I know, apparently this is still an issue in the UK, which is actually just depressing. Dangerous Machine A PSA from Quebec made by the company CSST in 2006. It follows a man working in a factory in front of some machinery. The man slides down a piece of metal, and when he does that, his long sleeve shirt gets stuck into the machine. The man tries calling out for help, but no one comes to help, as he gets closer and closer to being crushed. His hand eventually starts to get crushed, and this man's struggling to get out, as the PSA fades to black and text comes up saying, seen enough? Us too. Machines cause 35 accidents a day. Game Game is a PSA from the League Against Cruel Sports in the UK, released in 1989. The PSA follows a man as he's getting on a horse to go fox hunting. He's ready, and then he starts to enjoy being on the horse a little too much. It's a bit strange. Text about fox hunting keeps coming up as the man slowly gets more and more gross as he's trying to hunt the foxes. This keeps on going until we see that he's rocking on a rocking horse, and he passes out on the horse, and then more text comes up saying, how do you get your kicks? Gas Chamber Gas Chamber is a Japanese PSA from the company Alive, released in 2004, and it follows a point of view where we see how some animals are being gassed to death. We can hear a dog crying in one of those chambers as text comes up saying 450,000 dogs and cats are disposed of yearly in gas chambers. We then see another shot where they're putting a dog in one of these chambers and then text comes up saying please don't throw away your pets. This one's honestly kind of hard to watch. It's just upsetting hearing the animals how they're crying out for help. Monsters A 2012 PSA from the company Fragile Childhood in Finland tackles how children see parents when intoxicated. The PSA follows a few different scenarios where children are with their parents and the children see them as something else and always something disturbing. We see children see their parents as a giant ugly rabbit, a grim reaper, a zombie, and a clown to name a few. The PSA ends with one kid seeing their father as a robber and as they're putting the seatbelt on them, text comes in saying how do our children see us when we've been drinking. A lot of people really overhype how scary this PSA is and honestly in my opinion it is disturbing, don't get me wrong, but people act like it's the scariest of all time. Nah, you gotta watch more PSAs. Kitchen Mother This is a Japanese PSA released in 1982 from the Japanese government public relations. We follow a mother passed out on a table as their child's crying next to them. The narrator comes in to say that recently stimulant drugs are destroying housewives, young people and salaried workers. The PSA then shows the mother using a needle to inject themselves with some drugs as they fade out the shot. We only see the child crying as the narrator says, however, not only will it destroy yourself, your family will also be destroyed. Text then fades in saying, let's expel stimulant drugs from everyone. Milk Milk is a 2003 PSA from the Taiwan company Child Protection Hotline. This PSA has a child singing a song until we see a trail of blood on the floor. The camera follows the blood until we see more and more dripping on the floor. The camera pans up to where the blood's dripping from and we see a milk carton in which the blood changes from milk on the table. Text comes up saying she... Shen Chao, 3 years old. Cause of brain damage, hemorrhage. Spilled milk comes up. PSA then cuts to black where more text comes in saying, in Taiwan, there are children violently every day. Distress Call This is a PSA released in the year 2002 for the American company Haven, and it follows a real call to the authorities where we hear what it seems to be a young girl begging for help as we see images of what the situation must have been like. The authorities ask if the perpetrator has a gun or a knife, where well, the girl says yes, and the young girl screams for their mum as she is being a And we see text pop up saying, every day, seven women are killed. Narrator comes in to say, if you or someone you know is a victim of domestic or a to call Haven. Stop. A PSA from the company Transport Safety in Australia, released in 1997. The PSA follows a family in their cars, two young girls are singing, oh McDonald had a farm, and we see that the father's going above the speed limit. We then see that someone stopped right after a turn, which is a really shitty thing to do. Like, if you're pulling over, why would you stop right after a turn? That's gonna cause an accident. So the driver has to go into the other lane to overtake the car that stopped. And the narrator comes in to say, if the driver had kept this car to 100Ks, he would have stopped here. And the narrator then talks about each family member as we see them and then the injuries or death that could have been avoided if Jim's dad wasn't speeding. After that, the narrator says it's too late for that now, and the car continues to go again as the family spin out and crash into a wooden pole. The last thing we see is the aftermath, where the mother's dead in the car and one of the daughters is crying. The Hostage 
the most disturbing PSA from the company in France Air Portage, released in 2006. The PSA follows a family of three eating at a dinner table until the mother slaps the son in the face and the father grabs the son by the ear. The father pulls him by the ear into the room and starts whipping him with his belt until it fades the text. The text says this is a dramatization. In reality, the victim is six years old. I'm gonna be honest here, that one just hits hard. Tier 5. Hard to watch. Can't look. Another PSA from NSPCC that was released in 1999 follows a few different scenarios of children being It starts with the baby being yelled at by their mother as the baby won't stop crying. The next scenario is with the child's father telling them to come sit in the bed with them, obviously insinuating something terrible. Father yelling at their son or daughter, a kid at home alone wanting their mum to come home, and the PSA ends with the man saying not a word to anyone as the Spice Girls have their eyes covered with their hands. It ends with the narrator saying we can't bear to look either, and that cruelty to children can be stopped. Baby Monitor This is a South African PSA released in 2003 from the company Women Against Child and it shows a mother listening to a baby monitor where a partner is saying their child. The mother starts to cry as she hears this happening. As that's happening, a narrator comes in to say if you don't stop him from her, who will? Tentacle Tentacle's a German PSA released in 2008 by the company Dunkelziffer. The PSA tackles long-term effects of child by using a tentacle as a metaphor for the events the main character remembers. We follow a young girl with a tentacle staying with her as she grows up. The girl keeps getting older and older and the tentacle stays with her until she is an old woman and eventually passes away. The tentacle then finally leaves when she passes away as text fades in saying if your children never get help, they never outgrow their trauma. Hey, it's another one I find really hard to watch. I find it's just ones that cover this subject matter it just really disturbs me. Torture by another name. A 2007 PSA released by the Helen Barmer Foundation in the UK depicts a woman in bed talking to the girl about two different people, presumably her before and her now whilst getting <laughs> The two perspectives keep switching back and forth showing how bad of a situation she is in now being trafficked for <laughs> The PSA ends with her turning on her back and the text of women enslaved by <laughs> trafficking lose more than just their names. Trapped this is an Aussie PSA released in 2014 from the company MSWA and it follows a person being trapped in a small enclosed area. We see them slipping as they're trying to get out and even panicking. They start to scream out for help as they're banging against one of the walls of the enclosed space. We then cut to someone looking at a photo as the person stuck in the small space is looking out at them. But it's finally revealed to us that the person stuck in the enclosed space is actually a person with multiple sclerosis and that what we saw was a metaphor for what it feels like to have the condition. Text fades up saying multiple sclerosis can trap you within your own body. Help us find a cure. Wedding. Wedding is yet another Aussie PSA, but this one's from the 2000s and made by adult surviving child. The PSA plays out the events of a father giving a speech at his daughter's wedding. Everything seems to be quite normal until he starts making jokes about the terrible things he has done to his daughter and everyone laughs at what he's saying. He keeps on going on about similar things throughout the PSA until text fades in saying, if only it was this easy to get over child. For more than a million Australians, it isn't. Tier 1 WSIB Top Chef A 2007 PSA from the Canadian company WSIB follows a sous chef as she's talking to the viewer about her life. She mentions that she's going to be head chef by next year, in that she's getting married to her fiancé, but she won't be marrying him this weekend. Why is that? Well, she tells us after that she's getting into an accident and points out how the grease on the floor should have been cleaned up and the fry pan shouldn't have been left out so close to the walkway. As she's talking, she slips and hits the pan so oil goes all over her face and the text there are no accidents comes up. PlayStation. Baby. Baby's one added in a series of advertisements for the PS3 where they would have a few different random scenarios in a white room with the console itself. In this ad in particular, there's a toy baby looking at a PlayStation 3 as the toy baby stares at it and laughs, cries all over the console with tears coming out and going back in the toy baby's eye sockets. I think everyone knows how weird these ads are and god, watching this again, yeah, it is really weird. Adult Swim, The Dawn Is Your Enemy The Dawn Is Your Enemy is an Adult Swim bumper that aired between 2005 and 2010 and the bumper was basically telling the viewer that it dawns your enemy. They do this with a drawing of hills with flowers as the sun's rising with a face on it as well as a pair of eyes with eyebrows in the sky. 
The point of the bumper was saying that Dawn is your enemy because you've stayed up all night watching Adult Swim, and it was meant to scare children away from watching Adult Swim. Dumb ways to die. This is a PSA release in 2012 from the Australian company Metro Trains, and this PSA absolutely blew up when it came out, which spawned two different phone games. The PSA sings a song about dumb ways to die while showing dumb ways to die in a cartoony way. The message gets delivered when the dumb ways to die are things to do with trains, and finally at the end of the PSA, the message be safe around trains, a message from Metro comes up. As I mentioned just before, the PSA absolutely blew up everywhere. Not just in the state of Victoria and Australia, but it went nuts worldwide. And I'm not 100% sure if this is true, but I think it is the most viewed PSA on YouTube of all time. It's kind of funny because I still see these print ads around train stations in Victoria because I live in the state that this PSA was for. I still see those ad campaigns, the whole PSA campaign, in train stations. And also, the campaign was that successful that RTD in Denver wanted the campaign for themselves, and they actually got it for the state of Denver. Anti-smoking PSAs. So this entry is just talking about various anti-smoking PSAs that would air on random television stations. The funny part about these is they'll usually air any time during the day. The more disturbing ones would only air after about 9pm, but a lot of kids would still see a lot of these during the day and get scared by them. Each country does have their own fair share of anti-smoking PSAs, but with America, it's mainly the real cost and truth PSAs. Kfee Coffee This is a series of advertisements for a German coffee drink called Kfee. And I'm pretty sure you know what this is all about. Basically, that would be a normal video, something casuals playing until like a ghoul or a zombie or something like that jump scares you at the end of the ad. There are a few that are fake outs, but the whole point of this campaign is to say that their coffee gives you energy. Basically, because it's scaring you, gives you like a jolt of energy. It's like, oh, this drink will give you energy. These ads are just annoying. And honestly, I'm still traumatized from the car ad one thanks to childhood trauma being shown the ad when I was really young. Domino's Pizza, avoid the Noid. These advertisements for Domino's Pizza would feature a character called the Noid, and this ad campaign started in 1986. The character is meant to represent what a bad pizza is like, such as the pizza being squashed and whatnot, and in these ads, the character tries to ruin Domino's Pizza, but fails in the ads. The ad campaign ran from 1986 to 1995 when they decided to end the campaign. And believe it or not, they did make a game for the NES called Yo Noi that released in 1990. Apparently the reason Domino's ended the Noi campaign was because a man named Kenneth Lamar Noid believed that the campaign was directed towards him and decided to enter a Domino's restaurant in Georgia with a 357 Magnum and held two employees hostage over five hours. If that's the reason Domino's ended the campaign, then honestly, I don't blame him, that's fair enough. But surprisingly, the Noid came back in 2021 for a few ads on social media sites. Trolley Gummy Worms Stop Motion Ads The Trolley Stop Motion Ads mainly run from 2019 and 2020, where a character or a few characters are set in a horror setting. In a few, a character would be hiding from a monster, and then the Trolley Gummy Worms would sing and reveal where the person is to the monster. There are a few that are more lighthearted, such as this one with the troll where he turns into a friendly troll after seeing the Trolley Gummy Worms. I don't know, these ads are pretty simple and basic in my opinion. Little Baby's Ice Cream Little Baby's Ice Cream is an ice cream company that's based in Philadelphia that closed in 2019. The company has a few disturbing ads, with most of them being in 2012. The one the company is known for the most is the ad called This Is A Special Time. In the ad, a man covered in ice cream is eating an ice cream on top of his head. There's a narrator talks about Little Baby's Ice Cream and that the ice cream is a special time and that it's a feeling. The first ad absolutely blew up and from there the company made a few other ads that gained attention but not as much as this one did as I mentioned before, the company did unfortunately close in 2019. Kinder Eggs Humpty Dumpty An 80s advertisement for the kids chocolate company called Kinder Eggs decided to advertise their chocolates by using the kids character Humpty Dumpty, but he looks more human. So the character himself is still shaped like an egg but has more human features and human skin and stuff. And all I can say is, who thought this was a good idea? But in the ad, Humpty Dumpty's sitting on a ledge, and he's kind of talking about the Kinder Eggs in some other language I've heard, apparently. It's meant to be a different language, but all I heard was just random noises. Either way, he's on the bench saying stuff, and then at the end of the ad, he falls off the wall. Pee Wee Herman PSA So the infamous PSA that features Pee Wee Herman himself, Paul Rubens. Honestly, the backstory to this PSA is more interesting than the PSA itself which is kind of funny because Paul Rubens decided to get arrested because he did some very suspicious things in adult theater. 
and because he got arrested, he had to do 75 hours of community service. With the 75 hours he was given, he decided to make this PSA as well as another PSA featuring one of his characters from Pee Wee's Playhouse called Penny. There are a few other of these PSAs that feature other celebrities like Clint Eastwood and Nelly Sheedy and stuff like that, but this one's just strange. Grubhub Cinematic Universe The only thing I could find is this original Grubhub ad, so I don't know what the Grubhub Cinematic Universe means. So basically the 2020 Grubhub ad is a commercial where a father's ordering food through the Grubhub app, and after doing so, he as well as a few other people dance for the rest of the advertisement. The ad itself is meant to say that the perks you get from Grubhub will make you want to dance because they're that good. And the ad became a massive meme in 2020 because of how terribly cringe this ad is. Like it's a mixture of the dancing and the music that just really does not look good and it looks really out of touch. Quiznos, Sponge Monkeys. This ad for Quiznos subs in the US has two sponge monkeys. Both of the characters are singing a song about how they love the subs at Quiznos and a narrator comes in to say a few of their different subs. There's not really much to this ad, but apparently a lot of people really like this ad, even though I think it's really strange and I do not know what they were smoking to make this. Burger King, Pokeball Recall PSA. So this is a PSA from Burger King and the Consumer Product Safety Commission where they warn kids about the Pokeball toys that was determined as a choking hazard that came from Burger King. This happened after a 13 month old girl suffocated on one of them as she had half of the ball covering her nose and mouth and the parents took Burger King to court and won. Apparently how this happened is because the actual Pokeball itself was creating like a vacuum effect where the ball would suction at the person's face. But in the PSA we basically see a photo of the Pokeball as the narrator is telling people to throw them out or return them to Burger King because of this issue. Nintendo Restaurant A 1995 advertisement for the Nintendo game Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island on the SNES. This is a really strange advertisement where a man's at a restaurant and he keeps eating more and more food as the narrator is talking about how they cram so much in their game. The man constantly keeps eating more and more and absolutely inflates like a balloon and he keeps talking about more features in the game and all this stuff while the man's eating and then the narrator mentions a bonus level whilst the man eats a little bit more food and then he ends up blowing up everywhere. Who thought this was a good idea for a game advertisement? Like, what does this have to do with the game itself besides from having a lot of content? And what a weird way to show that. Airheads ads. These Airheads commercials were aired sometime in the late 2010s where people would eat the Airheads candy and their heads would blow up like a balloon. These ads are just really cursed because who wants to see a person with a giant head and a small body like this? It's just strange. Tier 2 Nintendo, you cannot beat us. Oh, this infamous ad I talked about in my last Iceberg video. This ad was released in 1985 in Australia of all places. And we have this weird human CGI person trying to challenge all players on the NES. And after that, we see a few different characters from Super Mario Bros, Duck Hunt, and even a smink from Gyromite say, you cannot beat us. Who the fuck plays Gyromite? It's really dated CGI with all the Nintendo characters, and the synthesized voices really don't help in this scenario. They just make it even more disturbing. And throughout the whole, we get to hear the Super Mario Bros castle music throughout it. So it makes the ad seem more stressful and seem more like a threat. Like the way they're saying, you cannot beat us. It just sounds like a threat to the viewer. You cannot beat us. Smokey Bear, If You Knew It Was Me. This 1973 PSA from Ad Cancel called If You Knew It Was Me follows the actress Joanna Cassidy talking to the viewer about the forest. She goes on to talk about the forest and how forest fires easily happen and that they can happen often and tells the viewer to be extra careful when you're in the forest next. After that, she pulls her hair over and her head then rips off her face to reveal that it was Smokey Bear behind it all. As he says, if you knew it was me, would you have listened? I'm going to give you some good advice for this PSA. Do not pause whilst the mask has been taken off. Like, that's nightmare fuel. Autoway Tire Ghost Tire Ghost is a 2013 advertisement for the Japanese company Autoway and in this ad, a person's driving down a dark snowy road. The two people in the car spot a ghost woman in the distance who then jumps right in front of the screen. The people in the car obviously panic and they reverse out of there. Text comes up saying snowy roads are scary and after that we see the ghost woman holding up a laptop that says have you ever put snow tires in your car. Then the company's logo comes up. Yeah, I can see why this scared people. Milton Bradley, Mr. Bucket. Mr. Bucket's a kid's game where you have to use a scoop to scoop up colored balls and put them in Mr. Bucket as he spits them back out. 
In my opinion, Mr. Bucket isn't scary at all, but watch lots of people make sex jokes about Mr. Bucket with the whole bowls thing going on. I also think a lot more people nowadays know about this because of the Board James episode where they talked about the game Mr. Bucket. Scotland Against Drugs Photograph This is a Scottish PSA from the company Scotland Against Drugs that was released in 1996, showing a teenager in a photograph slowly deteriorating over time. First off, some spots appear on the face, as well as teeth rotting to make him look worse. The picture then changes to a video of a raver looking stressed before it changes back to an image of the teen. More video shows the teen stressing out and nearly having an anxiety attack until the photo completely like distorts and like warps his face. The photo then slowly fades to black. This PSA just doesn't scare me. When the face is being warped, where it looks ridiculous, that's where it loses me. It's disturbing before then, it's actually pretty effective. It's just the ending does not land for me. Snickers, grocery store lady. A 2010 commercial from the chocolate brand Snickers decided to advertise their chocolates by having two kids dress up as a lady and telling people to stock up on Snickers. The creepy part about this ad is the mask that the kids are wearing to disguise themselves. It's just really uncanny and it scares a lot of kids. As the actual ad goes, I honestly think it's pretty funny, but as I mentioned before, the scary factor of the mask really overshadows this ad. WSIB Construction Construction is a 2007 PSA from WSIB, the same company that made the Top Chef PSA that I mentioned earlier, and this one obviously focuses around a work site. But in this ad, we follow a worker as he's talking about how he's working overtime for his family so they can go on a holiday. But then he mentions that he can't do that because his family gets told that he was in an accident. So yeah, this PSA is the same as the Top Chef PSA, but instead of being in a kitchen, it takes place in a construction site. But then he talks about how he's in a harness and that the company should have checked the tanks, and as he says that, the tanks blows up as he ragdolls off the side of the building and hits a truck on the way down. All I will say is that the accident was preventable if he just turned his blowtorch off whilst talking to the viewer. This wouldn't have happened if his blowtorch was off. Japanese McDonald's ads. I originally wasn't even going to talk about these in the video, but I do want to talk about them as they are quite interesting and some people believe that they're actually real when they're not. This is a series of four fake McDonald's Japan ads where Ronald is doing creepy things to someone, such as trying to get into someone's room, ringing someone whilst they're outside their window, hiding underneath someone's bed without being noticed, and lastly Ronald running away from someone. All the fake ads end with a distorted narrator voice saying, always there, McDonald's in Japanese. Apparently, it's please don't sue us for our commercials, but that doesn't sound right for how short the sentence is in Japanese. I know a little bit of Japanese, but it just doesn't sound right. Also, all of the ads are meant to pay homage to different horror movies, such as the first one's meant to be for The Shining, the second one is for Scream, the third one's for The Exorcist, and the last one's for Halloween. While watching these fake ads again, I can definitely see the inspiration. Burger King, Eat Like Snake. A 2006 advertisement for Burger King is meant to promote the new Triple Whopper Burger at Burger King. In the ad, a man's unwrapping a new Triple Whopper Burger and says, mmm, meat in his head, and whilst doing so, then goes to get a drink because he forgot to get his drink, I guess. As he does that, a man behind him is staring at the burger and then falls to the ground and slithers on the ground like a snake to the burger, as we hear a song singing Eat Like Snake in the background. He eventually gets to the burger where he opens his mouth wide and swallows the burger whole, and holy shit, this is unsettling. Audi. Doa Huawa. This Audi ad aired during the 2014 Super Bowl and it follows a couple as they're going to get a new dog. The couple are deciding between two dogs as an employee comes out to say you can always breed them both to get what's called a Doba Huawa. Right after that, a dream sequence happens where a Chihuahua has a Doberman's head and in the ad, the dogs were causing chaos all across the city. That's until a title card comes up to say compromises scare us too and then Audi shows off their new Audi A3 car which the ad itself had absolutely nothing to do with Audi until then, but alright. I guess the dogs can be seen as a bit disturbing. Big Bill Hell's Cars Big Bill Hell's Cars is a vulgar parody of those typical commercials for local car dealership ads, and came out in 1990 where the narrator in the ad basically makes fun of the viewer and swears quite a lot. I don't understand how this is scary, it's honestly just kind of funny, but I've seen this ad plenty of times where I don't really find it that funny anymore. I feel like after you see it once or twice, it's kind of worn its effect off. Nintendo, Super Mario Land 2 ad. This 1992 ad for the Game Boy game Super Mario Land 2 has Wario's head talking to the viewer about how Mario is the enemy, and he talks about his plan to get rid of Mario. The narrator then comes in to talk about the game as we see little bits of footage of the game. I guess people were scared of the floating Wario head talking to them? AIDS Candy. 
AIDS Candy is a candy brand with an extremely unfortunate name. And in this ad in particular, we see the company was advertising their diet AIDS candy in 1989. The ad itself just talks about the candy and how the woman's losing weight by eating it. This ad's just cursed because I don't know how the company didn't decide to change their name with the whole obvious epidemic that was going on around at this time. Panda Cheese. Never say no to Panda. A 2010 advertising campaign for the Egyptian cheese company Panda Cheese has a person in a panda suit terrorizing people as they say no to Panda Cheese. The most well-known one has to be the one that takes place in an office where a man offers a co-worker the cheese and he says no. So the panda then comes up and throws everything off his desk and smashes his keyboard. There are five of these ads from 2010 as the others take place in a hospital, a kitchen and the last two in a grocery shop. Funny about the grocery shop ones is that in the first one the panda makes a mess of all their groceries and in the follow up one it's the same people as they just give in and grab a few of the panda cheese products. In all the ads the song True Love Ways by Buddy Holly plays. Sandy Hook Promise, Back to School Essentials A Sandy Hook Promise PSA that was released in 2019 and it even won Best Advertisement for the Year which no other PSA has done that. But in Back to School Essentials, kids talk to the camera about essential items for school until we hear a in the school grounds as normal school items are used to help the students escape or to defend themselves. The PSA ends with a girl in a bathroom stall as the is walking to their stall. I personally do think that the point of view PSA they made the year before is a better PSA because it kind of shows how these things really happen. And also the fact that I think it's more effective than this PSA. Also, how is this only on tier 2? Fruit Heads. Fruit Gushes. An advertisement released in 1995 from the company Fruit Gushes is an ad showing off their product by having kids eat lollies, and as they do so, the heads turn into different fruits. The cringe part about this ad is how disturbing the kids look, and obviously, just seeing them all together is kind of horrifying. Like, it's so strange to have human features on real fruits. Like, who thought it was a good idea? <coughs> no, 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 sorry. Capri Sun, respect the pouch. Respect the Pouch is a 2000s and early 2010s ad campaign where the kids would drink a Capri Sun and after squishing the pouch they will turn into some weird creature. People turn into random things like an accordion, a turtle and even a pogo stick? What the hell was Capri Sun smoking? Like for real, these ads are so cursed, who thought that making these ads about Capri Sun was a good idea? Baby Bottle Pops, Giant Baby this is a very strange advertisement for the Baby Bottle Pops candy and it has two giant babies sitting on a couch as two kids come into the room and see them with their Baby Bottle Pops. The babies are rapping about the candy and this is only a short 15 second ad but god those big giant babies are cursed. Who thought that two giant rapping babies was a good idea for this? I'm a Styrofoam Cup. This weird PSA from 2007? I'm actually not sure when this came out, but it has a can and a styrofoam cup talking to each other about how the styrofoam cup needs to go in the recycling bin. This whole PSA, well if it is one, is out there to tell people to recycle it and I just don't know what to say about this one. It's just really strange. BAM YO I'M A STYROFOAM CUP YO! Wilkins Coffee Wilkins Coffee is a company that made a bunch of short advertisements created from 1957 to 1961 made by Jim Henson himself. If you don't know who Jim Henson is, he's responsible for doing puppet work for like Sesame Street and even the Muppets. The ad follows two different puppets as one of them resembles Kermit the Frog and even has a similar voice called Wilkins says that people should drink Wilkins coffee. The other puppet is called Wonkins because he won't drink Wilkins. Ah, uh, get it? But he usually interrupts that by saying he doesn't want any or he doesn't like it and as he does that something bad happens to him. Honestly, the funniest ads out there are just the absolutely insane ones where Wonkins gets shot either by Wilkins or by someone else. These ads are absolutely wild, but they have so much charm to them. NRJ Mobile. What? This is a French advertisement for a mobile service where a girl's staring at her phone in a school hallway. And literally, the song of Shooting Stars is playing in the background. Why? There's some numbers going up, and as she sees that, she starts to laugh. As she's laughing, her mouth gets wider and wider until the point where her jaw completely unhinges and it goes super wide and her head goes back. And then someone else in the hallway comes up and sees what's going on and does the exact same thing. All I'm wondering is who thought this was a good idea? Like, what, what does this convey? You're going to unhinge your jaw because NRJ Mobile has good phone deals? DOE, shame on you. A very well-known Irish PSA released in 2014 Follows a classroom as they're going on an excursion to some forest. 
The kids are playing around and having fun, then we see a man had a few drinks since going to drive home. But the man loses control of his car and then flips the car and squashes a whole classroom of kids. The text shame on you comes up at the end. They really try so hard to get a reaction out of you when the car ends up squishing the whole classroom of kids whilst the teachers just stare at the kids getting squashed and do nothing. This PSA looks so fake that it's actually hilarious and even the classroom of kids magically disappear as the car's getting flipped. They literally just turn into jackets. I can't even believe people are scared of this PSA. It's literally one of the worst of all time in my opinion. Tier 3 Nickelodeon Egg and Spoon Nickelodeon Egg and Spoon is a short 15 second bumper on the Nickelodeon channel. In the bumper we see an egg as a spoon hits the egg on top of the egg. And after that the egg turns into a weird looking monster that makes a groan sound as the spoon turns into a chicken and runs away. The monster egg then turns to the viewer as we go into its mouth to see the Nickelodeon logo. Just a random bumper that people would probably forget about but apparently it scared a lot of kids. KFC Kentucky Fried Lie Detector this is a 1967 advertisement for the well-known fast food chain KFC, and in this ad, people are using a lie detector on Colonel Sanders. They're doing this because they want to find out the seven secret herbs and spices, and he says six, and on the last one, he lies by saying four ounces of your grandfather's overcoat. After that, narrator comes in to say give up on finding out about the secret herbs and spices that made KFC so finger-licking good, as it's the Colonel's secret forever. The narrator and the Colonel laugh at the end of the ad, and honestly, I can see why people are disturbed by this. The whole ad's just shot in a dark room with women interrogating the colonel, and it does look a bit off-putting, it's a bit strange. Fragile Childhood Monsters A well-known 2012 PSA from the company Fragile Childhood in Finland tackles how children see their parents while intoxicated. The PSA follows a few different scenarios where children are with their parents and their children see them as something else, and always something disturbing. The children see them as things like a giant ugly rabbit, a grim reaper, a zombie, and even a clown. The PSA ends with one of the kids seeing their father as a robber as they're putting their seatbelt on them. Then at the end of the PSA, the text comes in saying how do our children see us when we've been drinking. A lot of people do say that this is the scariest PSA of all time. And I definitely disagree with that. Like, it's a bit disturbing the first time you see it. But I feel like after that, the shock factor's kind of gone away. And even then, there's many, many, many more PSAs that are a lot more disturbing and harder hitting than this. This just feels like it'd be the scariest PSA to someone that's not really into PSAs. Spirit of Dark and Lonely Water This is a public information film released in 1973 where a hooded figure meant to be the Grim Reaper follows a few kids playing near water as some of them actually fall in and die. This keeps happening until about near the end of the piff where one of the kids falls in and gets saved by a group of kids nearby and the message trying to be pushed to children is to be careful around water. By the way, if you don't know, the narrator's voice is Donald Pleasance, and he's known for playing Dr. Loomis in the Halloween series of films. Original Ronald McDonald ad The original Ronald McDonald ad aired in 1963 and featured a version of Ronald McDonald played by the well-known American weathercaster, Willard Scott. In the ad, it starts with shots of the restaurant as the narrator is introducing Ronald McDonald. We finally see Ronald as he has a tray on his head and a cup on his nose, but Ronald's talking to the viewer about McDonald's food and that you'll really enjoy the food. After that, we see Ronald dancing outside the restaurant whilst we hear a jingle singing about Ronald McDonald. It's very interesting that this is the original design of Ronald McDonald, and then through time, he's became what he is now. Charlie Says This is a series of stop-motion paper animated public information films released from CLY in 1973. The PSA plays out a few different scenarios with Charlie the Cat and the Boy. I've talked about these PSAs quite a lot. But there's a drowning PSA where Charlie the cat nearly drowns in a lake until the boy's father fishes Charlie out of the lake. Then there's another PSA where Charlie watches sausages cook on a stove and then a little bit of oil splashes onto Charlie and they basically get the message across to be careful around like hot pots and pans. And then there's another one as well that takes place in the playground. And the last one's about not following strangers and not going where they want you to and to basically go to your parents if someone's doing this to you. So yeah, these public information films are pretty straightforward and simple but they just deliver simple messages to the viewer, and they do it well. RSPCA, My Little Puppy A PSA from RSPCA in the UK released in 2001 shows a little puppy as the family are happy to get a new dog. As the events of the PSA unfold, the family say they get sick of having a dog because it needs to be fed often, and even ends up accidentally peeing everywhere. So at the end of the PSA, the family end up locking the dog in an area by itself, and then a man puts the dog in a bag and throws it into a river. Just a twist PSA for the sake of being a twist without having really any substance behind it. Burger King, Scary Clown Night. 
This is an advertising campaign run by Burger King during the Halloween season of 2017. With the release of the new adaptation of Stephen King's It, Burger King thought it would be a good idea to give the first 500 guests they go to a certain Burger King restaurants a free Whopper if they dressed up as a clown. Apparently Robert De Niro directed this ad, which is really strange. But in this ad we see a kid go out at night as he steps on a clown horn. The kid keeps going on as he gets on his bike to ride down the road when he sees a clown behind him. The kid obviously panics about that so he pedals more, and as he does so he sees more and more clowns pop up near him. It gets to the point where there's so many clowns chasing after the kid that the kid gets to a Burger King restaurant and shuts the doors behind him. But when he shuts the doors behind him there's more clowns behind him as one of them says I want a Whopper. After the clown says that the text come as a clown eat like a king comes up. Yeah. Some people just get scared of clowns, and I understand it because people were scared of it. So, in theory, this ad would scare them too. Doesn't really help that this ad shot like a horror film as well, so, yeah, I understand it. Montana Meth Project Montana Meth Project is a well known anti meth organization started in 1999. The company released a lot of anti meth PSAs throughout the 2000s and overall made a lot of PSAs. Montana Meth Project's PSAs were shown to be quite effective when they started showing more the disgusting things that meth does to you instead of trying to completely scare kids. The company does have some great PSAs, such as Ben, Deep End, and Jessica, but they have some very strange PSAs like everything else, which is the only PSA I can ever think of that has a corn song on it. I have a full video where I talk about Montana Meth Project and them in detail, their history and their campaigns and stuff, so card should be up on screen if you want to go check that out. NSPCC, Ventriloquist. This is an NSPCC PSA released in 2004 where a puppet girl is in a classroom with other kids. The teacher is asking a question to the kids but then asks Sally the question, who is the puppet girl in this PSA? And she obviously wants her to answer but Sally doesn't know the answer and we see the ventriloquist hold the puppet as the man's probably meant to be the father. Then we see Sally out at the playground as another girl asks if she wants to go play over at her house but the ventriloquist says no. People are laughing at her on the bus on the way home, and then when she's home, we see that Sally isn't eating at the dinner table as a ventriloquist says that she's fine and that she isn't hungry. The text, children can't speak up, comes up on screen. Yes, the puppet is disturbing, but the whole PSA in general and the subject matter is disturbing as well. This could definitely be in a higher tier than where it is. Duck and Cover Duck and Cover is a 1951 PSA trying to tell people to duck and cover when an atom bomb hits. Keep in mind that this was made about 6 years after World War II ended, so it does make sense why this was made. But the PSA does this by using a cartoon turtle called Bert the Turtle where he covers himself with his shell as ladies are singing the line Duck and Cover. We then get a narrator coming in to tell us to duck and cover when an atom bomb hits as we see footage of actors ducking and covering themselves. The PSA shows a few different scenarios where people duck and cover such as having a picnic, at a school and even at home. The little jingle comes back at the end of the PSA. There's a full 9 minute version of this public information film as well, but it's basically just the same thing but just a lot longer and then this version is a shortened 1 minute version of that. Jack in the Box, Clown Explodes This is a 1980s commercial for the fast food chain Jack in the Box where an old woman in the car is asking a group of men what they're doing with Jack in the Box. The men are strapping dynamite to Jack in the Box as one of the men tell her that he's going to go bye bye. The grandpa says that Jack is cute and one of the men says Jack being cute is in the past as the men talk about the new burger for the restaurant. The grandma then eats the burger they're talking about, says that the food is better, and says that the food is better at the box, and tells the men to blow up Jack, as Jack gets blown to smithereens. Truth, unsweetened. A great PSA from a controversial American company, Truth, in 2011, follows a few hospital patients suffering the effects of smoking on a parade float. They're singing a song about how cigarette companies make tobacco taste sweet by listing all the flavors that they make until they ask why they make tobacco taste sweet. Text then shows up talking about how tobacco companies aren't allowed to make candy flavored cigarettes anymore but they still sell candy flavored tobacco products in over 45 flavors. This PSA was made before Truth was absolute dog shit and hey, I've even talked about this company in detail as well so cards should be on screen at the moment. And to be completely honest though, nearly the past 10 years they've made shit PSAs. Tarako Tarako is a Japanese commercial from the 2000s where an army of Cupid dolls dressed in Tarako, which is meant to be a Japanese seafood ingredient. They're all chanting Tarako like tarako, tarako. as they're marching and then we see the kid looking at them in shock, which hey who blames her? I think everyone was shocked seeing this for the first time. But after that we see a fork go into the spaghetti as the product comes up on screen and a narrator is speaking in Japanese. The thing about ads like this in Japan is that they probably don't think it's weird, they probably think it's a normal Japanese ad. 
But because it's not our culture, we think these ads are weird. Halifax, Howard in the class. Halifax made this advertisement sometime in the 2000s, I believe it was from 2002, where a horrible looking CGI man's talking to the viewer about loan rates and saying that some people spend up to 15% on them. The weird animated abomination then tells the viewer with Halifax you can get rates of 9.9% on your loans with them, and they also talk about how the big four banks charge anywhere between from 11 to 15%. The man then sings a cover of Who Let The Dogs Out by saying Who Pays You Extra and the kids in the class chant Who to the song. Like Who Pays You Extra? Who? 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 What the fuck? Denny's. Nanapus. This is a 2009 Super Bowl commercial for Denny's where they have a banana peel with googly eyes and a mustache sitting on top of a stack of pancakes, as people call the thing Nanapus. Then someone's pulling strings to make the banana peel move, and a voice meant to be Nanapus sings a song saying you can call him Nanapus as one of his eyes falls off. A lot of attention to detail in this ad, isn't there? But then a deal for Denny's comes up on screen where you can get a free Grand Slam at Denny's every Tuesday from 6am till 2pm. Mr. Potato Head. Giant Head. Giant Head is an advertisement for the kids toy Mr. Potato Head, and in this 1970s advert, a person has a giant potato head on that barely even resembles the toy. But the man's walking down the stairs as he sees kids walk up to him and he gives two kids brand new Mr. Potato Head toys as the kids seem happy and excited about the toys. Kids play with the toys as they're showing off the different types of Mr. Potato Head such as the Donald Duck version and a clown. The ad ends with the man with the potato head saying Mr. Potato Head toys from Hasbro. I'm really seeing a pattern where all of these like old ads, people get scared of them just because they're like old and vintage. But that's the thing though with these ads, just because they're old doesn't mean they're scary. Yummy Buffet Yummy Buffet is an ad for a local restaurant in Chicago that uses text-to-speech voice where the voice talks about the restaurant. The ad has shots of the restaurant and the voice is talking about where the store is located and talking about how it's an all-you-can-eat buffet. To be fair though, the food looks alright, but it's just weird to have text-to-speech in the ad in general. The company is still around, which is a good thing, and if they're still around then it seems like they're doing well, which is good. Support local business, kids. PlayStation Chris Cunningham this is an advertisement for the PlayStation 2 where a woman with eyes so far apart sits down to talk about the human endeavors. She has a thick Scottish accent and is talking about the man landing on the moon as well as a few other things people have accomplished. She then talks about how you can experience a lot in your mind and it's called the mental wealth, which honestly this ad makes no sense. Like what does this have to do with the PlayStation 2? What's PlayStation Europe smoking, man? Give me, give me some. Kleenex, Ogre Baby. Ooh, a supposed cursed commercial. Like it actually curses the viewer, not that it's just a weird ad. But in this Kleenex ad released in 1986 from Japan, we hear a song called It's a Fine Day from the artist Jane playing in the background as a mother's with her ogre baby. The mother goes to grab a Kleenex tissue and then we see the mother giving the baby attention. After that, the mother lets go of the tissue as it blows away and we get a closer shot of the tissue flying away. And then the company's logo comes up as the narrator says the company's name. Why was this ad cursed? Well, because apparently the line, it's a fine day, is a German curse, even though the actual song that's being sung isn't being sung in German, it's being sung in English. Apparently Kleenex even pulled the ad after a short amount of time of it airing on TV. Say no to crack, say yes to roller skating. A 2012 advertisement from Roller Kingdom follows kids as the first kid has an old drug dealer offer the kid some drugs. Which local drug dealer like this is above the age of 30? Then we see a second kid as a kidnapper in a van is trying to lure them in with candy, and the last kid has a gang leader asking if they want to go join their gang and vandalize some walls. All the kids say no as they're going to go roller skating. All the kids meet at Roller Kingdom where one kid says he wants to be addicted to roller skating, not crack. A bunch of kids just talk about how they want to rollerblade instead of do drugs because they don't want to go to prison. The owner of the company even comes on screen to talk about their business and how they've been trying to keep kids off the streets since 1999. More people come up and say that they don't want to do bad things. Is this an Adult Swim skit? What? Like, for real? Watch this again thinking it's an Adult Swim skit. You will completely believe that it is an Adult Swim skit. It's so weird. At the end, all the antagonists of the ad show up at Roller Kingdom saying that they're ruining their business and they end up just deciding to roller skate as well. This is actually real. I can't get that through my head. MTV. Guillotine. Guillotine is a short 10 second bumper for the TV channel and TV. In the bumper, it shows a guillotine blade being raised up as someone pulls the lever to let the blade drop as the logo MTV drops out of the guillotine whilst looking like an M-shaped head. I don't know, is there much else to say about this one? Ad Council. Crying Indian. 
Crying Indian is an ad cancel PSA released in 1970 where a man's on a boat in a river sailing across the river. We then see as he's going through the river that more and more rubbish is showing up in the water we see many different buildings in the background. The man arrives at shore with a bunch of rubbish on the sand as he's walking off the boat. Narrator comes in to say some people have a deep abiding respect for the natural beauty that was once this country and some people don't. When the narrator says that, the man sees someone lit out of their cars, the rubbish lands at the man's feet, we see him shed a tear. A booklet comes on screen saying 71 things you can do to stop pollution and the campaign Keep America Beautiful comes up. Some people even said that this is one of the best ads of all time. I definitely don't agree with that. Brady Campaign, Alice. A PSA from the Brady Campaign in America released sometime in the 2000s follows Alice and the White Rabbit as they're walking down a hallway. The White Rabbit's trying to rush off as he's saying that they're late, but Alice wanders around and stops and walks into one of the rooms. She then wanders around that room until she sees a shelf. Alice goes over to the shelf and finds a cabinet. She's obviously curious about what's in the cabinet, so she grabs out what's in there and it's a gun. As Alice grabs the gun, narration starts by saying only one third of American households have a gun. When the narrator says that, Alice accidentally shoots herself in the head. The narrator asks the viewer to ask their neighbor if there's a gun where they play, as we see the white rabbit in shock. Why would you ask your neighbor? Why wouldn't you ask your parents? Daisy. This is a 1964 presidential campaign where a girl's holding a flower as she's pulling the petals off the flower and counting them. She keeps doing this until a person counting down from 10 comes in and she looks up and we realize that it's a countdown for a bomb. The narrator comes in to say that these are the stakes at the moment and then the text vote for President Johnson on November 3rd comes up. Well, that's just really strange. Like, did they really have to use fear tactics to try and make people vote for him? Skittles, Midas Touch. Midas Touch is a 2008 advertisement for the candy brand Skittles, where two people meet a man that can turn anything into Skittles by just touching it. At first, they think it's awesome how you can touch anything and make it into Skittles, but the other man comes in to question if it's awesome. He then goes on about how literally anything he touches turns into Skittles, such as him not being able to hold his own baby boy in his arms, and he even accidentally turned a man into Skittles after shaking his hand. The man goes on to answer the phone as it starts ringing, and of course, the phone turns into Skittles, and then in anger, he slams a desk, and that whole desk turns into Skittles as well. The company's slogan, Touch the Rainbow, Taste the Rainbow, comes up. I can see why people are unsettled by this ad, because people just think too much about it, but when you look at it how it is, like, it's pretty funny. I think it's a pretty good ad. Tier 4. Carb Solutions, Baby Shower. This commercial has a few ladies sitting around each other on couches at a baby shower as they're giving the woman gifts. One lady then asks Jenny if they've tried a certain snack that they're eating, as Jenny says that she shouldn't because she's on a certain carb diet. After that, the lady asking if she's tried it turns into a demon lady trying to make her eat the food, as Jenny still says no and that she'll eat her carb solution snack instead. Narrity comes in and talk about the carb solutions items that they're selling. Is air during the day? Oh, look, I can see why people got scared of this. It's just really strange to have a demon lady in a commercial like this. Hirogata. I wasn't going to include this ad as it is a lost ad that no one's found even today, but because it's so popular and well known, I think I should at least talk about it a little bit. So this is apparently a Japanese PSA from Ad Cancel in Japan that aired sometime from the 90s to the 2000s. And the PSA itself is maybe about railroad safety where two white figures fade in and out as we hear two bells ringing. And the PSA itself is meant to be about railroad safety, where two figures fade in and out as we hear bells ringing. After that, text in Japanese comes up saying someone dies every two seconds, and then the logo for Ad Cancel in Japan comes up. There are a lot of fan recreations of this supposed lost PSA, but it's interesting because there's so many fan recreations, but the original hasn't been found. Phones for you, Ghost Girl. Ghost Girl is a 2011 advertisement for the UK company Phones for You where a woman's going to her car in a car park after shopping. As she's walking to the car, a ghost girl appears and disappears as the woman looks to where to see where there was nothing. She then gets to her car and after putting her seatbelt on, the girl's girl's outside the driver's side window with her hands on the window and the woman screams after seeing her. She talks to the woman telling her about Samsung's phone deal that they have that phones for you. The campaign text, missing our deals will haunt you comes up and then you see the ghost girl making signs with one of her hands. Yeah. Who thought this is a good idea to advertise phone plans? Like, seriously, someone needs to have a word with you. UNICEF Smurfs Smurfs is a 2005 UNICEF PSA from Belgium that was actually approved by the Smurfs creator's family. This PSA centers around Smurf Village getting bombed and the whole village turning into a war zone. 
This PSA didn't air until after 9 p.m. to avoid children seeing this PSA, but it is quite disturbing because it's just really unexpected to see Smurf Village getting bombed and turning into a war zone. And look, if you enjoyed the Smurfs as a kid and you saw this, I think your childhood would just be ruined. Hyundai, Grim Reaper. This is a banned Hyundai advertisement released in 2012 for the Hyundai Veloster. In the ad, we see someone in a Ford Focus stop their car at the side of the road as the person in the back is going to get out by getting out on the side of the road. When that happens, we see the Grim Reaper open the door for her as she doesn't see the Grim Reaper there, and after that, the woman gets hit by the car. Then the same situation plays out, but in the new Hyundai Veloster, because the car only has three doors, she gets out in the third door that's on the other side as the Grim Reaper gets hit by the car instead. Text comes up saying Hyundai Veloster, one door on the left and two doors on the safe side. This ad's honestly hilarious and well done, but obviously a lot of people are scared because, ooh, the Grim Reaper's in there and someone gets hit by a car, but... If you ask me, I think it's an awesome ad. It does what it needs to do really well. But this ad was banned in Holland because it was controversial. Gif Gaff, Halloween. An advertisement from the UK company Gif Gaff released sometime in the 2010s where a woman's being chased by a man with a chainsaw. Then the woman trips over as the man runs past her and we see that something else is chasing him. We see that it's a clown chasing him and that the zombie's chasing the clown and it keeps going on until we see people chasing each other set up a choir for their screaming voices. Am I missing something here or is this really confusing? But the text, when you're scared, you're not the boss, at GifGaff where all the boss comes up. Yeah, I still don't understand this ad and how does it have anything to do with a phone network? Beware of Thin Ice. Beware of Thin Ice is a public information film from 1986 released in Finland where we see some animated characters that are a bear and a child as they're playing out in the snow. They end up sliding down a snow hill and they see a bird on a chimney making a noise. The child walks around the frozen lake to go to the bird as the bear walks across the lake and the bear falls through the ice and into the lake. The bear is struggling to get out of the water as the boy comes and crawls his way over to get the bear out of the water. They then walk around the lake to get to the bird where we see a few figures on the building and the kid and the bear walk in. The bear when inside has a blanket wrapped around him and hot water on his feet and then after that all the characters form the shape of a number two. The bear then says, beware of thin ice. This is honestly a bit uncanny in my opinion, but this is just another situation where old TV programs are scaring people because they're old. Crinkles the Clown. Crinkles the Clown is a 1956 advertisement for sugar rice crinkles, where a man's dressed up as a clown, pops his head through a kennel of some kind and says, Breakfast. but then he stands up to say he's hungry and goes over to a bowl of sugar rice crinkles and has a spoonful as he's saying the best cereal is post sugar rice crinkles. Throughout the whole ad, Crinkles is just talking about the product and why it's such a good cereal and that you'll love the cereal more than every other cereal. The ad ends with the text, greatest cereal treat on earth. Huh, another case of old TV programming scaring people. How many of these are we going to get? But with this one too, I do understand that people are scared of clowns, so yeah, I guess it passes, but hey, Crinkles is a homie. Ego, Monster Girl. In 2001 advertisement for Ego Waffles follows two kids as they're sitting down eating breakfast and the girl's talking to her toy doll. The other kid tries to steal the girl's ego because she seems to be distracted with her doll and as he's trying to do that, the girl turns into a monster telling the boy to not steal her ego. Obviously, the boy basically shed his pants and then a narrator comes in to talk about Ego Waffles. Virgin Mobile, Stalker. This is a series of two ads where a woman's stalking someone named Brad. In the first ad, she's in a tree talking to the viewer about things she's doing to stalk Brad. She goes on to say the many things that she can do to stalk Brad with a new phone that she has for $25 a month deal through Virgin Mobile. In the second ad, she's in Brad's closet, basically doing the same thing as the first ad, but she can see Brad through the closet. The whole point of these ads is that the phone deal Virgin Mobile is offering is crazy, and they show that by showing someone stalking another person because that's crazy as well. Happy's Pizza, Friday. Happy's Pizza Friday is an advertisement showing off a new deal that Happy's Pizza has on Fridays where you can get two rib tips dinners or one pound jumbo shrimp for $9.99. The ad has this weird Pac-Man lookalike spinning a pizza and then a narrator comes in to talk more about the deal. Also, I just found out that this company has over 65 locations in the US, but that makes me beg the question, why is this company spending so little on their ads if they have that many locations where they have a decent budget to make half decent ads? Jolly Green Giant this classic 1960s ad has a person in a field that's meant to be the Jolly Green Giant. There's a jingle about the Jolly Green Giant playing throughout the ad, and the giant gives some animated people things like beans that they're sorting out and cutting up. 
Then we see footage of beans coming out of the tin when someone's using a fork to scoop them out of the tin. The narrator's talking about how the beans are fresh, where they're literally putting shit like this in tins. But at the end of the ad, we see the animated characters riding a train with a few tins on the train as well, as the Jolly Green Giant grabs one of the tins. Mr. Yuck. I love this classic PSA. But this one was released in 1975, where we hear some weird music playing in the background at the start of the PSA as we hear laughing. Then we see Mr. Yuck as someone's talking about Mr. Yuck and how he's mean and green. The PSA breaks into a song talking about the dangers in the house as they show off the Mr. Yuck sticker, where it's a sticker to show kids that something is poisonous. The ad ends with pretty much what happens at the start of the ad as well. I don't know what to tell you, Mr. Yuck's a banger. Like it is a little bit disturbing seeing the sick kids and stuff like that as the narrator is saying sick, sick, sick. But I love this shit. It's so good. For Rambo 2. But Rambo 2 is an advertisement from Iraq for different types of lollies. In this ad, we see cursed CGI abomination singing a song in Georgian, and I have no idea what they're singing about. Maybe they're singing about the product, but they go around a carnival doing different things, such as being on a carousel, going on the dodgem cars, and at the end of the ad, the text comes up, which roughly translates to thank you, delicious caramel. Yeah, sorry, I don't understand this ad at all. Freddy Freaker. A 1988 commercial for the party freak himself, known as Freddy Freaker. Freddy Freaker! We see that he's a yellow goblin thing that constantly t poses and just moves side to side as we hear the song that they made up for Freddy Freaker. The ad is advertising their phone line where you can ring Freddy Freaker to hear what? I don't know. He could just be trying to seduce you on the calls, and all I know is that it's $2 a call, and that was $2 back in 1988. Fuck that. But I know this little character became a meme a few years back as the channel only plays talked about the party freak and even sold merch of the character on a shirt. Speaking about merch, over this holiday season, you can get 10% off your orders with the code HOLIDAY10 on my merch store, ZachR.Store. I have three exclusive designs as well as stuff with my logo on it. I have stickers, sweatshirts, shirts, and even hoodies. So remember, if you want to get 10% off your order, make sure to go check out ZachR.Store. Anyways, let's continue. RSPCA, how much is that dog in the window? A PSA from 1987 made by RSPCA in the UK shows a dog looking at the camera whilst instrumentals of how much is that dog in the window plays in the background. The camera slowly zooms up to the dog until a gun's pulled up to the side of the dog's head and a voice says please give us a pound or we'll have to pull the trigger. This is a very controversial PSA for good reason and later had a censored version that replaces PSA on TV just talking about how much it costs to take care of a dog. Which why didn't they do that in the first place? Nasonex B He's a commercial for Nasonex in the 2000s for a nasal spray where a bee that's voiced by Antonio Banderas is giving flowers to another bee. Yet the bee sneezes because it gets hay fever, and that the bee that was giving the other bee flowers talks about how it could be congestion from seasonal allergies, as a different voice comes in to talk about the product. The CGI animation is so bad, so I can see why people were scared by this ad because with this it's just those bees. Like they look terrible. All I will say though is Antonio Banderas' voice could seduce anyone. So that overshadows the ad. Eagle Man. Eagle Man is a 90s ad for car insurance where the ad has two girls in a car as they stop because someone or something jumped on the roof of their car. They get out to see a man in an eagle suit that's meant to be Eagle Man saying that he has something for them. And then the something that he had for them was laying an egg on their roof. But the egg hatches as we see a little chick as it's holding a piece of paper with low insurance rates as well as a phone number in its beak. IHOP commercial. A 1969 commercial for the American restaurant chain IHOP follows a few kids as they're running through a field whilst holding a bunch of balloons. Some weird music's playing in the background that literally sounds like if Elvin and the Chipmunks were possessed in the background. Then they arrive at IHOP and eat some pancakes. When they're eating pancakes, the narrator talks about how their pancakes are priced to be affordable. A photo of one of the restaurants pops up at the end of the ad, and this ad's just wild. Tier 5 Skittles Share the Rainbow Share the Rainbow is a parody of the Skittles ad of the Share the Rainbow Taste the Rainbow ads. And this particular fake ad was released in 2011 where a couple are doing it on their wedding night. They're going at it and then the man finishes and Skittles goes all over the woman and then the Share the Rainbow Taste the Rainbow slogan comes up. People believe that this is an actual ad for Skittles, but no, it is a fake ad and it does have a warning at the start that it isn't an ad for Skittles or has nothing to do with the company at all, besides their product. Mattel, Baby Secret Doll. A 1966 advertisement for a Mattel baby doll that whispers into your ear secrets. In the ad, the girl's playing with the doll and pulls the string on the baby doll to hear it whisper in her ear, 
in a very weird way where the doll's mouth is actually moving as it talks. Did they really have to make the doll's mouth move while it's talking? It just looks so uncanny. It's strange. Greenpeace, have a break. This 2011 PSA from Greenpeace in the UK follows an office worker needing a break. The PSA imitates a Kit Kat commercial where their slogan is have a break, have a Kit Kat because the company is targeting partner companies of Nestle. But the man goes to pull out his Kit Kat and as he opens it, we see a orangutan finger. Everyone else sees this except for him as the co-worker is in shock as he's about to take a bite out of the finger. The PSA then shows the text, give the orangutan a break. As their rainforests are being cut down by companies that Nestle partners with to get palm oil for their chocolate. Family Violence Prevention Fund, Stairs. Stairs is a 1990s PSA from the company Family Violence Prevention Fund. In the PSA, it follows a kid sitting at the top of the stairs as they're listening to their parents argue. We then hear that the father starts to their mother because the father didn't get any pizza. In this PSA, when they see the kid's faces, he's in shock when watching the whole situation. The PSA ends with the text, children have to sit by and watch, what's your excuse? Also, some cheeky bastard on YouTube decided to edit like the Pizza Hut promotion in the Ninja Turtles VHS with this PSA and act like it was on this VHS when, no, it's not. Like a lot of people believe that this PSA was sponsored by Pizza Hut, but no, it's not. It's, it's not. Like if you go and watch their upload, you can tell it's edited, the edited text in between to make it look like it was a part of it. And by the way, I found out that it isn't a part of it because I was watching intros and outros of the VHS tapes on YouTube. Thanks to those people that archive that stuff. Legends. Pepperami. It's a bit of an animal. So this is an advertising campaign for the Pepperami, which is basically a salami stick. And in the most well-known ad, we see a talking Pepperami. The Pepperami seems to be going insane as it can't resist eating itself and then eats its own arms off and says that it can't resist the spicy taste. I guess the image of the pepperami eating itself is disturbing? Star Chick Cockroach follows a man and two kids as a bunch of animated characters are on the side of the road as a cockroach is dancing in the middle of all of them. Then a narrator comes in some of the language and talks about the shoes that Star Chick sells at their stores. But after that we see the characters again but a weird looking woody woodpecker comes in and stomps the cockroach on the side of the road as the man gets upset about it. I talked about this one in my last iceberg but what the fuck? Kelby, Return of the Kelby Dog Return of the Kelby Dog is an advertisement for potato chips where an anthropomorphic dog is watching kids play baseball. Dog then sees one kid sitting on his own and taps the boy on his shoulder. The dog then tries to encourage the kid to play baseball as the kid throws the ball in the other direction. Another dog grabs the ball and gives it to the boy and the anthropomorphic dog grabs it out of his mouth and gives it to the boy to throw him as he throws it in a different direction. Then both dogs go and chase after the ball and they get into a fight. After that, the anthropomorphic dog with bandages on gives a kid a pack of Kelby chips and they both jump up in the air like it's a bloody Toyota commercial. Also, yeah, you might be confused if you live in America because the whole campaign in Australia is Toyota O water feeling. Remco, Baby Laugh A Lot. A commercial for a toy Baby Laugh A Lot follows a girl as she sits the toy under a table and shows off the doll. The doll's in a rocky chair as it keeps laughing and laughing, and a few girls turn their heads around to stare at the doll, then they all start to laugh as the doll's laughing. Everyone's laughing whilst we get a final shot of the baby laugh a lot rocking back and forth. Orkin Pest Control A commercial for Orkin Pest Control follows a man where he hears the doorbell ringing and as he enters it, a giant six foot tall termite's asking him if he can use his phone. Obviously the man's really confused about this and the termite keeps asking and as he's doing that, a pest control ute comes up and arrives and then we see the man go around the house to inspect for termites. Then at the end of the ad, a man from Orkin is standing at the front of the house, death staring a termite in their car as the termite zooms off. What the fuck? Animast, Bunny. Bunny is a commercial advertising a TV channel's creepy animation night, and they do that by having a man walk up to a stall to see a man in a bunny suit sitting in a toilet. The bunny just stares at him as he's wondering what the fuck is going on, until the bunny slides over and pats the toilet seat to let the man sit next to him. I guess it gets the message across well, but it's just confusing. Above the influence, stop looking at me. Above the influence, oh boy, they're bad. But they're a PSA company that makes anti-smoking and anti-drug PSAs, and this one we follow an animated man smoking weed on the couch. The man says to stop looking at me at his dog, and then he goes on to say I can stop at any time I want. The dog then responds to say, okay, how about right now, and the man says next week is better. The PSA ends with the dog saying you disappoint me, and walks away to put a flag up with the dog's face on it. What? Just watch this one for yourself and see how weird and confusing it is.
Pop-Tarts, Yeti. A 2003 commercial for Pop-Tarts follows a Yeti talking to someone about the new chocolate fudge Pop-Tarts and how they're good. There are subtitles in the ad so we know what the Yeti's saying, but the Yeti questions them about why they're looking at him like he's crazy, but we see it's two random kids that are looking at the Yeti as they're in shock. The kids then scream and run away as the narrator comes in to tell us to listen to the Yeti and talks about the new Pop-Tarts that they're promoting in this ad. Why does this narrator sound like Dr. Nick from The Simpsons? Dirt Devil, The Exorcist. Dirt Devil is an advertisement that parodies the well-known horror film released in 1973, The Exorcist. In the ad, we see an old woman walk into the house as a priest is there with her. An old woman walks around the house and hears someone yelling in a room after going upstairs, and the priest walks into the room to see a girl possessed on the roof as lights flash on and off. The priest is in shock, but then we get to see that the girl stuck to the roof because her grandma's using a Dirt Devil vacuum upstairs that's making her get stuck to the roof. This shit is hilarious, but I get why people are scared of it, I guess. It's just really well done. It's pretty funny. Reclamas plus is like I fucked that up so hard, but God, I don't know what it means. This is a PSA from the company's social advertising in Poland, and the PSA is called Bad Touch. In the PSA, we see a girl playing with a toy doll, and then we hear heavy footsteps as she's brushing the doll's hair. The toy doll's eyes then open as a girl's looking around to see if a person is coming in as they're dressing the doll up and completely covering it up. Then the camera pans out to see how many dolls are on the floor as the girl's holding a doll in her arms as a text in Polish comes up saying which roughly translates to each year a few thousand children are harassed. Tier 6 Mets Judderman Judderman is an advertisement from the year 2000 for an alcoholic beverage called Mets and in the ad, we see a puppet walk on stage as the camera focuses on the moon. Then we see the same puppet as a real person walking around a snowy forest as we hear some music and a little rhyme about the gentleman in the background. The gentleman's trying to sneak up on some traveler that is walking around through the forest and eventually gets right in his face as he holds a small bottle of Mets. After that, the traveler follows the gentleman because the traveler wants a Mets bottle. They go all the way through the forest until they arrive at a place where lots of people are drinking Mets bottles. The traveler drinks one then turns into a puppet being controlled by a puppet gentleman. Weird, but also pretty damn cool with some really nice set design. Turok Evolution This is an advertisement for a game called Turok Evolution, where a man's walking out of his house and as he talks to his neighbour. The man's walking out of his house to pick up a newspaper outside his house, and as he's walking back he hits his foot on a sprinkler as a bit of blood is coming out of his toe. Then random footage of the game comes up as the man starts to freak out because he sees the game? But because apparently the creatures smell blood, and at the end of the ad we actually see blood splatter on the neighbor's card as the game's logo comes up. Hanna-Barbera, Anti-Drug PSA I love this 70s anti-drug PSA, but for a bit of context, this PSA was made by the animation company Hanna-Barbera, which are responsible for animated shows like Scooby-Doo, The Flintstones, The Jetsons, as well as many other shows. In the PSA, we see a man light up a nice doobie as he starts spinning around with a rainbow trail. But then we see a joint with arms and legs, as well as a pill with arms and legs walk into a cupboard. The cupboard then opens up to see a few dead people inside as one of them is waving a finger, telling the person to come in. The man tries to run away as he goes nowhere, and the dead man's hand touches his shoulder as his face changes and his hair goes green as he gets pulled back into the cupboard. Partnership for a Drug-Free America Cleaning Girl a PSA release from Partnership for a Drug Free America in 1997 shows a girl on meth scrubbing her house clean with a toothbrush, whilst a jingle about meth is playing in the background. We then see images of her in a corner as she's looking at her skin and eventually trying to itch imaginary bugs out of her skin. There's an alternate version of this PSA with a different sounding jingle that still has the same lyrics as well. American Cancer Society Smoking Fetus Smoking Fetus is a 1984 PSA released from the American Cancer Society to make people aware of the dangers of smoking whilst pregnant. I do this by showing a fetus smoking in the womb as a narrator comes in to ask if you would give a cigarette to your unborn child. They go on to say every time you smoke you do exactly that, American Cancer Society's phone number comes up at the end of the PSA. Crusher. Kittens. How did this ad scare anyone? It's just photos of cats playing instruments as one of the images of a cat sings a song in the ad. It's honestly just a cursed ad for a drink called a crusher, where it makes it easier to make milkshakes in four different flavors, and those are chocolate, banana, strawberry, and raspberry. There isn't really much to say about this one besides from the ad just speaks for itself. Cat's Eye, Pest Control Jingle. 2012 commercial for Cat's Eye Pest Control, where a cat is looking through a fridge. 
We then see a few different animals preparing for something, and we even see an ant army. And don't worry, all the CGI animated animals are absolute monstrosities. But there is a pest alert for these horrible looking things, and they go to get rid of all the pests in the house as a jingle for cat's eye pest controls playing as they're getting rid of the pests. Monkey on their back. Ooh, one of the first examples of a jump scare being used at all, or even the first example ever. But in this PSA from the 70s, we see a symbol monkey clapping its hands together as a girl talks about how people that do heroin have a monkey on their back. Isn't it cute? Right after that, the girl says, isn't it cute? The monkey jump scares the viewer with the funniest jump scare I've ever seen. It's interesting because this is apparently one of the first examples of the jump scare being used in media. Capital One, Troll. A 2002 advertisement for Capital One where a man's fighting a troll in a house as their partner's asking if they're still doing the bills. The man and the troll wrestle as the man says he's wrestling with the credit card balance, obviously trying to show how struggling or dealing with the credit card rates. Then the woman comes down the stairs to dropkick the troll and then tells the partner that they switch to a Capital One credit card and the troll then shrinks down as the woman flicks it away. Narrator comes in to talk about the Capital One credit cards and at the end of the ad we see a hand put a pencil up the troll's back end. No joke, this is how the ad ends. Like, what? Prevent gun violence. The monster is real. The monster is real is a 2014 PSA released from the company Prevent Gun Violence in the United States. In this PSA, we see a kid is there snooping in a closet and he sees something and runs away and hides under his bed. The mother tells him to get out as the boy doesn't want to as they saw a monster in the closet. We then see that the boys stay up late at night because they're scared of the supposed monster in the closet but the parents come in and tell him there's no such thing as monsters and for him to go to bed. The next day after walking past the closet, the boy snoops into the closet to find a gun sitting on top of the set of drawers. The boy grabs the gun and inspects it and then accidentally shoots himself in the head with the gun. The text, the monster is real, 1.5 million US children are living with unlocked loaded guns comes up on screen. Well, talk about a twist ending, holy shit. Low pack, Ardman ads. This is an interesting set of ads for the butter brand low pack but the animation studio responsible for Wallace and Gromit, Armin Animation, animated these ads. The full ads themselves are still lost, but there are segments of the ads up on YouTube with people that worked on the ads narrating them. In the ads, a block of butter turns into a person and does some kind of activity, which usually ends in the butter person talking about the butter. NSPCC Cartoon This 2002 PSA from NSPCC in the UK follows a cartoon boy being by his father at home. It's played off like a cartoon because the cartoon boy gives very exaggerated reactions to the that is endured on him, such as getting a massive cartoony style bruise on his head, and at one point his whole head's on fire. The whole PSA builds up until the boy is in his room and his father approaches. The boy's scared and backs himself into a corner until he soils himself when his father picks him up. The boy runs away until the father catches up to him and throws him down the stairs. Then it's revealed that it was a real boy thrown down the stairs, as the text Real Kids Don't Bounce Back comes up. It then ends with the text, if you think a child's being a... Do something. Also, it's apparently supported by Microsoft. Stay Out and Stay Alive Stay Out and Stay Alive is a public information film about staying out of old mines and staying alive. The whole thing is actually 24 minutes long, and it's basically the whole piff is talking about how mines are very old and very dangerous, and you shouldn't go wandering through them, you should just stay out. They talk about many different abandoned things to do with mines, such as the mines themselves, sticks of dynamite, and even old abandoned buildings, and how you should definitely stay out of them. The PIF doesn't show any deaths, but there are people talking about those events where people do die from exploring these type of places. Tier 7 TV3 Horror A 2008 Irish advertisement for the TV channel called TV3. In this ad, we see a band playing a song as they're cut off, and the woman gets hit by one of the guitarists, and is bleeding to death. And then after that, everyone attacks everyone, and even the drummer slices a person's head in half of the cymbal. But it's funny, because after all that, the drummer just casually goes back to playing the drums. Was this actually an ad for a horror channel? I really don't know. Teletoon. Baby. Teletoon is a TV channel, and in this ad called Baby, it's a bumper for the night station where we see a stroller sitting outside at night. We then see, like, a big rock thing with a fake face on it, as it starts to move, and then eventually a mouth opens it and rips and then covers the camera. The text Teletoon then comes up on the screen. This is like if Pee Wee Herman had a bad acid trip. Montana Meth Project, ER. ER is a Montana Meth Project PSA released in 2011, where we see a girl staring at the camera as she's being moved on a stretcher in the hospital. Obviously, ER stands for emergency room, so the girl's being taken to the emergency room as we hear her narrate the ad. She says, if I had asked, would meth make me become an addict, or can you really lose it on meth? 
We then see her freaking out in the stretcher as she keeps on narrating. She goes on to say, or if I had asked, would meth become the only thing I care about? I wouldn't be asking. Ad cancel. Crashing glasses. So this PSA is a part of the Driving Can Kill a Friendship PSA campaign that aired throughout the 80s. In this PSA, we see two glasses of wine as they're approaching each other. The narrator talks about how when friends don't stop friends from drinking and driving, friends die from drinking and driving, as the two wine glasses smash together. We then see another set of glasses do the same thing with the car crash sound effect over it again. As it's about to happen for a third time, a third hand comes in to stop one of the glasses from crashing into the other. And then we see the text, drinking and driving can kill a friendship. Montana Meth Project, Kevin. Another Montana Meth Project PSA, but this one was released in 2010, and it follows a kid named Kevin narrating the PSA, talking about a person that got addicted to meth. They first mention where they went to school and where they beat up their best friend. The PSA then goes on like this, talking about how he used to dig at imaginary insects under his skin, and then finally shows where he spends 23 hours every day at, as he's being strapped to a bed at a mental institution. Finally, at the end of the PSA, we see Kevin is narrating the PSA, and he says, this is what I said when he told me I was going to try meth, and all that follows is silence. This is one PSA in a running campaign where they had the same kind of scenarios play out, such as PSAs called Ben and another one called Jessica. Partnership for a Drug Free America, Rodney. This is a Partnership for a Drug Free America PSA where we hear a narrator talk about a man named Rodney as we see a photo of him. Then we see a photo of Rodney on heroin as the narrator says it's a photo of Rodney on heroin. PSA keeps going back and forth between the photos of him on and not on heroin. The PSA ends with a photo of Rodney on heroin as the narrator says that was my friend Rodney, and then the text Rodney Harvey with a birth and death date comes up. It's actually one of the good Partnership for a Drug Free America PSAs, which is a rare sight to see. Dale Fruit, Face Morph. Face Morph is a 1991 French commercial for a product called Dale Fruit, and in the ad we see a man grab a product from the tree and take a bite of it. After he takes a bite of it, he whacks himself with a cartoon hammer as his face morphs, and the product comes up at the end of the ad. I am very confused about what the hell is going on in this ad, but alright. Amazon, human face dog. A Japanese Amazon commercial for Amazon Prime where a dog has a man's face is talking about Amazon Prime video as the dog's doing normal activities. There isn't much else to say about this ad besides from saying it looks cursed and it reminds me from Korn's music video for the cover of the song Word Up. Which let me say, the music video is so fucking weird but the song's a banger. Mr. Soapy. Mr. Soapy is meant to be a Japanese commercial for a company named Misawa, which I assume they're meant to make a soap product. But in the ad, we see a mouth over a bar of soap as they're talking to us saying that they are Mr. Soapy and that the most important thing to do to not get sick is to wash your hands. Then a man in an army outfit finishes up in the toilet as Mr. Soapy says remember to wash your hands, but the man just brushes it off and starts to walk away. As that happens, the bar of soap hits him in the face and knocks him out, and then we see him knocked out as Mr. Soapy reminds us to wash our hands. At the end of the ad, we see the same man that got knocked out using Mr. Soapy to wash his hands. Lucasaid NRG Desmond the dog. This is an advertisement for Lucasaid energy drink where a woman's singing about Desmond the dog, which is a puppet dog and walks up to the lady. The lady then talks about the Lucasaid energy drink to Desmond and lets the dog try some. After the dog tries some, he turns into a CGI dog that starts to dance and move on his own. As the woman's scared of it, she tries to jump out of the fake window. As she's trying to do that, the dog sees her backhand as two bits of ham and probably does something to her backhand. But the company's logo comes up as Desmond breaks through it at the end. This is just fucking strange. Nickelodeon, blood and guts. Okay, so this is apparently a lost Nickelodeon bumper where a thing that's meant to be blood is singing as the guts are farting. This is just extremely cursed. I can barely understand what blood's saying half the time. Who thought that this was a good idea? Like, just watch it and you'll see what I mean. I ain't no scab, so don't call me that. I live in this basement where the guts are that rat. Tax Doctor Tax Doctor is an ad from the 2000s that advertises that you can get a tax doctor to help you with your taxes. It's literally that simple. It's just a tax doctor basically saying if you have over 10,000 in taxes, you can ring them and they'll help you with their taxes. But are people really that scared about this? Like, hey, I know the tax doctor that's in this ad looks cursed, but it's not that scary. SWR Day Trip Oh boy, a German PSA from the very controversial PSA company, SWR, released in 1999, shows a man and his son walking around the streets to see different horrific things, from a dead man on the road to a woman possibly being under a store. 
The PSA then ends with the text, what you would never show your children in real life, they shouldn't see on TV. T8. Ad Cancel. Lauren Cox. Lauren Cox is a 1997 PSA from Ad Cancel in partnership with the US Department of Transportation. And in this PSA, we see footage of a baby meant to be Lauren Cox that was recorded in 1992. As the home video is playing, the text Lauren Cox, killed by a drunk driver on April 1st, 1993 in Louisville, Texas, so were her parents, comes up. These PSAs are part of a campaign and ad council was running through the late 90s, showing how sad it is that young kids were dying as a result of drunk driving. Ad Council, Jessalyn Rose. This is another PSA that's a part of that same campaign that I literally just talked about in the last entry. In this PSA, we see some footage of Jessalyn Rose waving the American flag for a marching band at some game, and after that, we see a bit of text that comes up on screen. The text reads, Jessalyn Rose was hit by a drunk driver and died. But then we see footage of her in the hospital suffering from that accident. Then more text comes up to say 11 years later, as the campaign Friends Don't Let Friends Drive Drunk comes up. These are disturbing, but really well done in my opinion. They don't show you anything gory, but your mind just fills in the blanks as you like read what's going on. Partnership for a Drug Free America, Crackhead Bob. Crackhead Bob is a partnership for a Drug Free America PSA where a man named Crackhead Bob is in a classroom on his own talking to the camera. Crackhead Bob is trying to say the alphabet but can't say it properly as text comes up on the screen talking about how he's Crackhead Bob and that he has permanent brain damage from crack. The PSA ends as he's struggling to sing the alphabet. Texas Department for Transportation, Jacqueline. Jacqueline is a PSA release from the Texas Department of Transportation in 2004. The PSA shows a woman holding up an old picture of herself before she got into a car accident caused by a drunk driver. She explains how she ended up in the situation and what happened to her until near the end of the PSA she pulls down the photo to show how she looks now after the accident. This is more of a depressing PSA than it actually being scary as it's sad to see someone had to go through so much from this accident. I've talked about this PSA quite a lot but basically the accident happened in 1999 and she eventually went on Oprah to talk about this whole situation as well. Unfortunately, Jacqueline did die of cancer on the 20th of April in 2019. Ad cancel. I didn't mean to shoot daddy's gun. This PSA was released around the year 2000 from Ad Cancel, and the PSA shows us a drawing from a kid where they're narrating the PSA. They're talking about how their brother had a hole in their stomach because a bullet hit him. But then it's revealed that the boy narrating the PSA accidentally shot his brother in the stomach, as it was just sitting there in the garage, and the text, an unlocked gun can be the death of your family comes up. Like, holy shit, alright. Ad Cancel. Tick. This person that made the iceberg really loves Ad Cancel, don't they? But yeah, another ad cancel PSA, and in this one it has kids saying tick, as some of them are saying about heat waves and global warming between the kids saying tick. The whole PSA is meant to tell people that something needs to be done about global warming, or their future's at risk. Partnership for a Drug Free America, Snake. Snake is a PSA from Partnership for a Drug Free America, released in 1986, where we see a drug dealer talk to the viewer about how they're a snake dealing in weed, coke, and crack. They go on to talk about how if you do it, you'll do anything to get more, such as steal from your mum and cheat on your homeboys. The drug dealer is slowly forming into an anthropomorphic snake as he's talking to the viewer until at the end of the PSA he is a snake man saying, Do I look like the kind of guy that do that to a kid like you? Yes. But hey, all I can say is that I have an exclusive design of this snake man on my merch store at zakar.store. And over the holiday season you can get 10% off your order with the code HOLIDAY10 at checkout. But hey, I do have a snake man sticker, shirt, sweatshirt and even hoodies, so go check it out, links in the description. But as this PSA goes, it's so funny with the YES at the end. Like, I love it. Also, you should take out my snake design on my merch store. Luke Starler. This PSA is about a man that's suffering with AIDS as we see him trying to get out of bed as he's struggling. We see that he has stage 9 AIDS and it takes him a whole PSA just to get out of bed as we see and hear him how much pain he's in and how much he's struggling just to get up out of bed. The PSA ends with a text and you think it's hard to get out of bed to get a condom. Africare. Shoeboxes. This PSA from the company Afrocare Rwanda Relief appeal in 1995. In the PSA, we see footage of African children walking around upset, as the PSA tells us that we know that you hate giving money, so please send your old shoeboxes. After that, we see dead people all over the ground, with more text fading and saying we're running out of coffins. I don't find this one as disturbing as other people do. It's disturbing, but it's not this disturbing in my opinion. Go Gentle. Stop the Horror. Stop the Horror is a 2017 short film from Australia in the state of Victoria where we get to see a man suffering in his last few days alive in a hospital. It's about 6 minutes long and throughout the whole thing there's a button on screen saying stop the horror which ties into the message that no one should have to suffer like this man has. 
If you did click the stop the horror button, you'd be taken to a page where you can support the cause by signing up to the cause for support voluntary assisted dying instead of making people suffer. The whole short's based on a real story where a man named Greg Sims, who suffered through his battle with brain cancer, especially in his last few days alive, was in constant pain. What makes this so disturbing for me is that it isn't bullshit. This actually happens to many people in hospitals that are suffering. Dunkel Ziffer, Tentacle. Tentacle is a German PSA released in 2008 by the company Dunkel Ziffer. This PSA tackles the long-term effects of child by using a tentacle as a metaphor for those events as the main character remembers. We follow a young girl with a tentacle staying with her as she grows up. She keeps getting older and older as the tentacle stays with her until she's an old woman that eventually passes away. When she finally passes away, the tentacle leaves her as the text fades in saying if children never get help, they never outgrow their trauma. PSAs like this just disturb me. They just get to me and disturb me. Tier 1. Smoky Bear PSAs. This is a PSA campaign telling the viewer that only you can prevent forest fires, and is without a doubt the company's most well-known campaign. Probably ever out of any other campaign in the world. This campaign in particular started in 1942 when the US government lost the rights to use Bambi in their fire safety PSAs. After losing the rights, Smokey Bear was finally created in 1944, and the long-running slogan of the campaign, Only You Can Prevent Forest Fires, was created in 1947. There's literally so many different Smokey Bear PSAs. Some are good and deliver the message in a well done way, and there are other PSAs such as a PSA where Smokey raps about forest fires. But there's no doubt about how much of an impact these PSAs have made on people, as it's still running almost 80 years after the campaign started. Vincent Larry. Literally about the thousandth time I've talked about Vincent Larry, but hey, let's do it again. So this is a PSA campaign and all about getting people to buckle up, as only 14% of people in 1985 actually buckled up. Both Jim Ferguson and Joel Machak came up with the idea to create two crash test dummies that loved doing their job of being a crash test dummy. This idea came after they were thinking of making the PSAs more disturbing where the dummies were being dragged into cars to get into crashes. They ended up making the campaign more lighthearted, and honestly that's why I believe this campaign is remembered so fondly. This campaign ran for 12 years starting in 1985 and ending in 1997 with the PSA called Backseat Baby, and it proved to be very successful and probably one of the most successful campaigns of all time. It spawned a toy line from Tyco, which actually caused a lot of controversy because the PSA campaign was still running as the toys were released in 1991, and some TV stations even stopped airing the PSAs because of the toy line. A pilot for a TV series that didn't go anywhere was made, and a fun fact about the pilot, it would have been the first CGI animated TV show if it became a full series. McGruff McGruff the Crime Dog is a series of PSAs that started back in 1981, and mainly had PSAs about, well, crimes. Adore. Most well known in this series is about kids talking to strangers, where McGruff tells us that 60 kids disappear every day in the US and that you shouldn't talk to strangers because they might have intentions of kidnapping you. I've mentioned quite a few times that even family have made fun of this PSA where Brian becomes McGruff's sidekick. I'd cancel actually did make quite a few PSAs of McGruff all the way through the 80s and 90s. The series is still around today and there is a McGruff the Crime Dog YouTube channel but they seem to have separated from ad cancel at one point. Also, the most recent appearance of McGruff is in the Chip and Dale movie as he shows off as a background character in one of the scenes, and that's quite interesting. Crying Indian Crying Indian is a PSA released in 1970 where a man is in a boat in a river sailing along the river. We see as he's going through the river that more and more rubbish is showing up in the water, and then we see many different buildings in the background as he's sailing past them. The man arrives on shore with a bunch of rubbish on the sand as he's walking off his boat. An narrator comes in to say, Some people have a deep, abiding respect for the natural beauty that was once this country. And some people don't. When the narrator says that, the man sees someone litter out of their car. As the rubbish lands at the man's feet, we see him shed a tear. A booklet comes on screen saying, 71 things you can do to stop pollution. Then the campaign Keep America Beautiful comes up. People really praise this PSA so highly. as like one of the best PSAs of all time. And I really just don't see it. It's okay, but Eddie Cancel has honestly made better PSAs than this one. Friends Don't Let Friends Drive Drunk A PSA campaign that was mainly popular in the late 90s, but actually started back in the 70s, is all about showing the horrible effects that drunk driving can have on people. There are quite a few of these PSAs, and the most well-known ones being Lauren Cox and Jessalyn Rose. Both PSAs have home video footage of a victim of drunk driving who doing normal activities before the accident that caused them to die. Text always comes up about 10 seconds into the PSA, explaining what happens, such as in the Lauren Cox PSA, which is about a baby. 
The text in that PSA explains that Lauren died by a drunk driver on April 1st in 1993 in Louisville, Texas, as well as her parents. There are a few others such as PSA having glasses smash into each other as the campaign comes up to the end, and even a Star Wars PSA released in 1979 set in Moss Eisley Cantina from A New Hope. The Star Wars PSA is so strange because if you're making a PSA about drunk driving, the one thing you shouldn't do is make your main characters aliens? It's just so strange. Love Has No Labels Love Has No Labels is a 2015 PSA that takes place on Valentine's Day where there's a massive x-ray set up with people in different races, orientations, and religions going behind it. Each time the people come out of the x-ray, it will say things like Love Has No Labels, Love Has No Religion, Love Has No Race, and so on. The PSA was actually a pretty big deal when it was released, as not many PSAs really talk about just loving people for who they are and not judging someone for their beliefs and other things. Tier 2 Stroke PSAs So this is yet another series of PSAs, but these PSAs released in 2004. All of the PSAs have some celebrity if it's Michael Clark Duncan, Don Rickles or Sharon Stone, and they all play the part of being the physical embodiment of a stroke. They all talk about how no one likes them and how they like to attack people no matter who they are, and they all come out to say that they're a stroke. In all the PSAs, each actor makes strokes look really threatening with the way they're acting and talking to the viewer. And it's pretty well done. PSAs A series of PSAs released in 2002, obviously talking about the attacks that occurred on the 11th of September in 2001. Some of these PSAs are trying to lift people's spirits after what happened, and in one of them there are many different people saying I'm American. There's another one that's actually meant to be kind of disturbing, and it's quite strange as it starts off in a church with a funeral, as the priest says be careful going home. We see that it was all taking place in someone's basement as they're all leaving. The text what if America wasn't America, and then freedom, appreciate it, cherish it comes up. So yeah, some of them were quite disturbing, but I really do like the ones that try to make people proud of being an American, instead of just scaring them. Also, the whole what if America wasn't America was a campaign that aired in 2002 that all follow the same idea, trying to show the viewer scenarios where people don't have normal freedoms that they do in America. Child Car Safety Child Car Safety is a 2010's PSA trying to tell the viewer about child safety in the car, talking about things like booster seats. In the PSA, a car's driving down a road as a narrator is asking, Are your children in the right car seat for their age and size? Is the seat supposed to be forward-facing or rear-facing? This keeps going on until one car flips on its side and goes straight for the camera as the narrator says, It may be too late to check when you're on the road. That car looks so fake. It literally looks like green screen footage you just download off of YouTube and they put it in this PSA. But the narrator then says, Fortunately, you're on the couch. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Don't think you know. Know you know. All I can say is just why. Like, Vincent Larry made child safety seat PSAs much better than this one. So why even make this one? An unlocked gun could be the death of your family. A series of PSAs that came out in the 2000s? I'm not sure, but the PSAs are right to tell people to make sure to lock up their guns so kids don't get access to those guns. The most well-known one in this campaign is by far the I Didn't Mean to Shoot Daddy's Gun PSA, where a kid tells a story about how he accidentally shot his brother in the stomach. There are other PSAs that follow the same kind of structure, such as one called Kaylee, where in that one, a girl narrating the PSA accidentally killed her baby sister after finding a gun in the drawer. Shit, this one's really dark, and in my opinion, this one's more effective than the I Didn't Mean to Shoot Daddy's Gun one. Get Up Get Up is a 2007 PSA that was released around the time Shrek the Third released, and in this PSA we see various characters from the Shrek universe interact with the kids to tell them to get out and play for at least an hour a day. It's mainly Donkey telling them to get out of play as kids go to a playground and play. We also see the other Shrek characters playing on the playground with them. We even get to see Puss in Boots busting a move and then at the end of the PSA, Shrek tells the viewer to gap and play for an hour a day as he gets hit in the head by a frisbee. The weirdest part about this PSA is both Eddie Murphy and Mike Myers are voicing their respected characters in this PSA. It's not someone trying to imitate their voices, which is usually the most common thing in ads like this. It's actually them voicing their characters. Online Predators this is a 2000s PSA all about predators that may be lurking online, and in the PSA we hear a man that's meant to be a predator talking about how it's pretty easy to meet a teen girl online by just going into a random online chat group and just talking. We see a girl as the man says, Most of the girls are usually so insecure and desperate for- But as he says attention, the girl talks about how- Attention from older guys is totally flattering. They're so much more mature and understanding than the guys men. The predator continues and says that- Age actually works to my advantage. They like to brag to their friends that they're dating an older guy, so I just play along and pretend I'm really- The girl then talks about how they- Interested in the same things I am. 
You can talk forever and really get to know someone without worrying about looks or whatever. That's the best thing about The Predator talks about how chatting seems unthreatening to them, so they lower their guard. After a while, I start talking about how we're soulmates and how lucky we are to have found each other. And the girl says that Other people don't understand. I know what I'm doing. If you really care about each other, there's nothing wrong with it. We then see the Predator as he talks to the viewer about how meeting them is the goal. And that things get interesting when they meet them. The narrator talks about how online predators know what they're doing, as the text don't believe the type comes up. See More Smoke See More Smoke is a PSA about smoke detectors released in 1996 that even has Gilbert Gottfried voicing the smoke detector. In the PSA, we see kids in a kitchen as a toaster is smoking. The smoke detector is coughing and the kids look up to ask who the smoke detector is. See More Smoke introduces himself and talks about how the more smoke he sees, the more noise he makes, and he says that he sees more smoke coming from the toaster. The kids realize that they left toast in the toaster that's actually causing the smoke, and the kids thank Seymour for telling them. But Seymour says that it's his job, and that he makes this certain noise when he sees it. And let me say, that moment's horrifying. Seymour ends the PSA by asking the viewer how many smoke detectors the viewer has in their house, and that you should count them, and that a smoke detector should be sitting right outside your bedroom. Word Pictures a 1989 PSA has words like dumb, pathetic, and stupid written on a piece of paper by a child displayed on the screen as kids are saying things like You're pathetic, you little brass. The narrator comes in to say Child abuse is also known by some other words. The narrator comes back in to say Words like these can hit as hard as a fist. A pretty simple PSA, but I quite like it as it's effective. Camping Camping is a PSA about well, honestly, I have no idea besides it having something to do about teachers telling better stories than everyone else. It's strange, but the PSA has people at the campfire as one person asks a lady how's work going. She then goes on about some story about an outbreak of a virus and that eventually all the living were dead by the time they learn a lesson about how quickly viruses spread. For real, can someone please explain to me what the hell this PSA is actually meant to be about? I really don't know. Can someone please help? The text. A 2009 PSA shows a car accident as a person in the accident narrates about how they wish they could go back and change it all. We then see that he was texting as he was driving and he says, I would. We then see different things happening in his life as he's talking about how he wishes he could go back and change it all. And in the scenarios, everyone else just stares at him at the end of each scenario. The PSA ends with a shot of his eyes as he says he can't change what has happened. Family Violence Prevention Fund a series of two PSAs made in collaboration with the Family Violence Prevention Fund was released sometime during the 90s. The two PSAs are called Neighbours and Stairs. In the Neighbours PSA, it follows a couple in bed as they can hear a couple arguing in the apartment above them. We then hear that the woman is being abused as the couple in bed don't do anything about it and try to go to sleep. After this, text fades in saying that it is your business. In the Stairs PSA, it follows a kid sitting at the top of the stairs as they're listening to their parents argue. We then hear that the father starts to abuse the mother because the father didn't get any pizza. In this PSA, we only see the kids' faces is watching in shock about the whole situation. The PSA ends with the text, children have to sit by and watch. What's your excuse? I mentioned previously that some devious little devil tried to pretend that this PSA was on the VHS tape for TMNT, like the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Fight Back and Win Fight Back and Win is a 2002 PSA about fair housing, and in the PSA we see a nice house as text comes up saying this could be a home of your dreams with car music playing. The PSA then goes on to say that it's a nice neighborhood with the right schools and safe streets, until the text, but you'll never see it, comes up. The music changes to be more unsettling, and then the text, if you're not the right race, comes up as the narrator says that Racial steering is illegal. If you think you've been a victim, call the National Fair Housing Alliance. We'll respond within 24 hours and help you take action. T3. National Guard and Reserve. This is a PSA campaign that was running during the 80s and 90s, saying that the National Guard and Reserve are an important group and that if people are going to help the country, companies that the people are employed to should let them go help their country. There's quite a few of these PSAs around, but they all just show how people are helping the US military, and after doing that with the National Guard and Reserve, they go back to their normal lives. It's on us. We can. I honestly find it strange that this PSA starts off with Casey Neistat. But this whole PSA has people that are representing the campaign. But this whole PSA has people that are representing the campaign telling us that it's on us to tell the viewer that they are to tell people when their drinks aren't safe. So yeah, this campaign's tackling the issue of people spiking other people's drinks and that people need to speak out when they see it happen to someone's drink before something serious happens to them. It's a pretty simple PSA that just encourages the viewer to let people know when people spike others' drinks and to make sure they're safe. Earthquake PSA. A PSA that features Dwayne The Rock Johnson? 
But anyways, this PSA is all about earthquakes as it first shows some random footage of some movie is in. I don't know, there's a million fucking rock movies that seem exactly the same. But then The Rock himself is sitting in a movie set talking to the viewer about earthquakes and that what you see in movies is one thing but what you see in real life is a completely different thing. The Rock then explains that just because you can't predict when earthquakes will happen doesn't mean you can't prepare for one as The Rock gives the viewer the advice of drop, cover and hold on. I know that this would have been and probably still is a big issue in America and hey, it's just a simple and well done PSA. Matches Matches is a 30 second long PSA released in 2019 all about lung cancer. In the PSA, we see a set of lungs made out of matches as the narrator talks about You quit smoking and thought, that's that. After that, the matches on the lungs start to light up as the narrator talks about Here's the thing about lung cancer. By the time you see the symptoms, it could be too late. We see the lungs burnt out, but then they go back to how they were at the start of the PSA as the narrator talks about how But now, there's a new scan that can detect lung cancer early. And they encourage people that have just quit smoking to go and get a scan. Prevent Child Abuse A series of three different PSAs released sometime in the 90s or 2000s, as they all show something as a narrator talks about the normal use of these things and what people expect from them. Then a narrator says something else, such as To someone else, it's a place to make a kid shut up and listen. To someone else, it's a place to teach a child a lesson he'll never forget. Or basically just hurt or traumatize them. The whole point of the PSAs is for people to do something about the massive issue before it starts or whenever they can. Small Step Campaign Smallstep.gov is a PSA campaign from AdCancel that encourages people to change ways they do things in their life for their health. All the PSAs follow a different scenario where people find body parts. All the PSAs follow different scenarios where people find parts of the body that seem to be overweight, such as stomach, hips, double chin, and even those fat ass cheeks. I'm pretty sure this is only in 2004, but I may be wrong. They basically use the ideas to stay healthy that are on the website and make a PSA out of it to convince people to do some of those steps. Do you still like me? This is a 2003 PSA about the fair housing campaign I talked about earlier. And in this PSA, we walk into an apartment room where someone's sitting down saying, let's play a game. The man then goes on to say, Let's pretend for a moment. You own an apartment building and I want to rent from you. They then go on to say that, I have a steady job. I make a good salary and have a good credit history. Would you rent your place to me? Then he changes it into a different person of a different race and then says, How about now? He then keeps changing it to different people of different races, asking if your opinion is the same or has it changed. He then asks things like, Or a last name that sounds foreign. What if I have a disability? What if I'm a single parent? As he asks again if you'd steer him away. The narrator then says that, The Fair Housing Act protects your right to live where you want. The Boss. The Boss is a PSA made in collaboration with the company That's Harassment, and it's all about workplace harassment. In this PSA, it follows a boss played by David Schwimmer and a worker played by Zazie Beats. There's a full version of this PSA where the boss can't figure something out, so the worker fixes it for them, then they obviously chat for a little, and then the boss comments about their earrings and goes in for a kiss. Obviously, she's not comfortable with that at all, and he tries to act like it wasn't a bad thing that he was doing. The PSA ends with the text, if you're a victim of harassment or assault, or you know someone who is, ring 1-800-656-HOPE. This is one of a few different PSAs, but in the other PSAs that take place in different places, such as like in a shop and at the doctors and stuff like that. Science of Childhood Trauma A 30 second PSA from 2016 has a narrator talking about the science of childhood trauma and how it works in the brain. They talk about how The more neural connections are created in regions of the brain that involve fear, anxiety, and impulsiveness. Then they say that the The good news is the young brain is malleable and fostering stable, supportive relationships can prevent or help reverse this damage. And that you can learn about changing minds through their sight. Unique. This is another PSA released in 2016 that is for changing kids' minds, but this one centers around someone talking about how no one should have to go through all the fights and violence that happens in the world. They talk about how one of their friends was stabbed and other horrible things that really impact young minds and make them more aggressive. Another person then says that the kids have something to say but aren't being listened to, as we see the text saying that your everyday gestures can help them heal. Then after that, the changing minds image comes up at the end. Journey. Journey is a 2013 PSA that follows a bottle as it travels around to different places. The bottle keeps rolling around different places as someone is talking about the bottle, saying, Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. 
At the end, the narrator says, But I didn't listen. As the dog rolls the bottle along until someone comes up and puts it in the recycling bin, and the narrator says, And now, I'm what I've always wanted to be. As we see the bottles recycled into a bench. Hashtag do the vape talk. A PSA released in 2022. Oh God, I was literally about to say 2023 because this year only just started. But in this PSA, it has a dad talking to the viewer about how kids are vaping and they can't let it happen to their kid. His dad talks about how it's awkward to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping. So instead he decides to take different approaches to get their attention to talk to them about it until he gets the fucking backpack kid to do a TikTok dance with him to try and get his daughter's attention. <laughs> the daughter asks why he's here and then joins in with them to do one of the most cringeworthy dances I have seen because they floss. This is literally the kind of shit that Eddie Burback talked about in his truth video where he talked about truth's TikTok PSAs. This is really cringe. But after that, they show the dad and daughter just talking about it, which really, this PSA would have just been much better if they showed the dad getting the daughter's attention by just asking them to talk instead of this. <laughs> Stroke Awareness Stroke Awareness is a 2000s PSA where a man walks up to a guy sitting down asking how's it going. Then we see the man that asked the question has an arrow in his chest and after that the man sitting down asks if he's okay. Obviously the arrow in his chest is a metaphor for signs of a stroke and at the end of the PSA a narrator says You wouldn't ignore this, so why ignore the signs of a stroke? Honestly a pretty smart PSA that really gets the point across that you should pay attention to the signs of a stroke. No Extra Life no Extra Life is a 2020 PSA where a man's walking into his house. As we see, the point of view looks like a video game with a map and a chat on screen. And the chat is literally just like subtitles of what is being said in the PSA. The man's walking around the house to try and find out what's going on, and then realizes that the gun is gone from his drawer. But he then realizes that his son has a gun in the bathroom, so he rushes to the bathroom calling out his son's name whilst banging on the door. Then the text, with gun, there is no extra life, comes up on the screen, and we still hear the man desperately trying to get into the bathroom. People really hate this PSA, and the main thing I personally don't like about it is the voice acting, especially at the end, it almost sounds like he's laughing. I don't know if it's just me, it's just shitty acting. The PSA is actually unlisted from YouTube because of the backlash, but I think showing this as a video game is kind of stupid, and they could have had a better approach with this. Opioid Addiction PSAs This is a series of PSAs released in 2018, made in collaboration with Truth Orange, a company I have talked about way too many times now. But from what I could find, this is a series of four PSAs where people tell their stories about their addiction to opioids and the things they did to get back on opioids. One person intentionally crashed their car, someone broke their hand with a hammer, another slammed a door on their arm, and the last person dropped a car on themselves, and they all did that just to get back on opioids. These are actually pretty solid PSAs that just visualize the stories people are telling about the things they did to get back on opioids. There's actually a fifth opioids PSA as well. But instead of the approach of the other PSAs, this one decides to show the videos of a person named Rebecca while she's on an opioid withdrawal for three days, and her full three days is shown in the public of New York. This PSA in particular has two 30 second cut down versions of it, but the full thing is six and a half minutes long. I actually like the approach of the Rebecca PSA more than the other four opioids PSAs. This honestly just makes me mad because I know Truth can make good PSAs, but 99% of the time they just don't. Play Place a 32nd 2018 PSA shows an adult mother climbing through a play place to get to their daughter. We see her struggle to get through the play place, and then we see them still trying to get through as a narrator comes in to say, If you love them enough to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov. I don't know much to say about this PSA. It's just what you see is what you get. Buzz the warning signs. Buzzed Warning Signs is a PSA campaign that aired in 2019 to make sure people are aware of the signs of someone being too intoxicated to drive. In the most popular one about American football playoffs, they do this by having people watching an American football game at a bar. One of the men sitting down on the couch says that when they're too buzzed, they're on their phone, so they miss what happened in the game. Apparently this is a sign of someone being too intoxicated to drive. Then the man behind him grabs his phone as the man sitting down gets up to get his phone. The text, Buzz Driving is Drunk Driving comes up. What is this PSA saying? For real, wouldn't it be a better idea that he has his phone so he can get an Uber home instead of trying to drive home? Seatbelt A 1999 PSA where a couple is in bed and the lady asks if their partner can get up and get some ice cream. The man gets up to check to see if they have any in the freezer, but they don't, so they have to get their keys and go to the store to get some. As the man's going out to drive and get some ice cream, a narrator is saying, Some things you just can't do without. 
It happens every night all across America. After he says that the man's reversing out of his driveway, and as he's about to drive forward, a car crashes head on with his before he even got his seatbelt on. The text, didn't see that coming, no one ever does, comes up on screen. Tier 4 John Bon Jovi PSA. A short 10 second PSA featuring the well known artist Bon Jovi talks to the viewer about how if you are living on the streets, you should ring the Covenant House phone number because the streets are tougher than you are. Just a really short PSA encouraging people to ring them if they are homeless. Elvin and the Chipmunks Smokey Bear PSA Elvin and the Chipmunks have a PSA released in their 70s, and in this PSA, Dave is trying to get the Chipmunks to help Smokey Bear out by recording a PSA for him. Instead of recording the PSA, Elvin fucks shit up by screaming like an idiot, and at one point spraying Dave with a hose because they're trying to recreate the sound of a waterfall. But then the Chipmunks say Smokey's ABCs with the first three letters of the alphabet, starting a sentence about things to do to prevent forest fires. Rocky and Bullwinkle Smokey Bear PSA Fun fact, this one was actually before the Elvin and Chipmunks PSA, as this one was released in 1969. But in this PSA, we see Bullwinkle on a forest as he's reading a script for a Smokey Bear PSA. Just the same plot as the Elvin and the Chipmunks PSA, but this time Bullwinkle actually just does the PSA and that's it. Rocky doesn't even show up in this PSA, it's just Bullwinkle reading the PSA. Ooh, I'm gonna read one for Smokey Bear. I don't know if that was a good impression. Playing. Billy Eilish PSA. Yeah. Billy Eyelash even had a PSA with ad cancel. And this one in particular was released in 2019, where it's all about mental health as Billy just talks about her experience with her mental health journey. She does give some good advice about how people shouldn't be afraid to ask for help and that you aren't weak for asking for it. It's about three minutes long and hey, it's a solid PSA. Sometimes just having a celebrity talk about their experiences with the issue or just addressing the issue and being honest about it is all you need. The Awkward Silence Hello everybody, my name is Margaret Blaren. Holy shit, it's really him! But in this PSA, released in 2018, it shows people being awkward as they seem too awkward to say something. We even see another YouTuber, Tyler Oakley. But after the awkward silences from many different people, we see them all say something asking questions about someone's mental health. So yeah, this PSA basically encourages the viewer to not be afraid to ask questions to their friends about their mental health if they don't seem to be okay. The PSA ends with the text, reach out to a friend who might be struggling with their mental health. And hey, that's a good message for viewers to preach. Alberto Del Rio PSA Alberto Del Rio is a former WWE wrestler and was a part of the WWE at the time this PSA was aired in 2015. In the PSA, we see Alberto go around and say, Behold the angry giant to the big show first as he shakes his head no. And then he does the same thing to Kane and Kane just gets shitty and walks away. He then says it again and then says it for a fourth time as he's reading a story to his child in bed. The text that only takes a moment to make a moment comes up, obviously telling fathers to spend more time with their children. Organ Donor PSA And not in his PSA obviously about organ donors, and in this PSA we see someone fall through thin ice into ice cold water as someone sees this and starts to run over. And narrator is talking about Someone out there needs help, and you've decided to save them. Then we see the man in the PSA with rope running, and then he makes it and throws the rope for him to grab it. The narrator keeps talking, but talks about how thousands die waiting for organ transplants they need to stay alive. And if you're an organ donor, you should tell your family. But the PSA ends when the narrator says, Otherwise it's like throwing a 12 foot rope to someone who's 15 feet away. Then the text, share your life, share your decision, comes up on the screen. Child Prevention PSAs. These are PSAs that were released in 1976, all about preventing child, and there are two PSAs, one called Prisoners and one called Memories. In Prisoners, we see a man in prison as the narrator says, You are looking at an abused child. We see more faces behind bars, the narrative goes on about how Most men and women in prison today were abused children. Then the narrator says that there are at least a million cases of child in America every year as we see plenty of people in prison cells and that child can be a cycle and they want to stop it. In memories we see a person walking around a house as the narrator says Something's wrong. For last year in the United States, an estimated one million children suffered needlessly. At the end of the PSA the narrator says But it doesn't have to be. For more information on child abuse and how you can help, write Prevent Child Abuse, Box 2866, Chicago, Illinois, 60690. Tightrope. Tightrope is an 80s PSA where we see a woman walking on a tightrope as they're saying about how full term and premature between healthy and sick. This keeps going on and then says that don't put your baby's health on the line. Take care of yourself so you can take care of your baby. So they encourage you to get prenatal care early for your baby as it's the best step you can take to ensure that your baby is healthy. The TV Boss A 2009 PSA where a man's sitting in his living room with someone else that looks like a junkie. 
but the man thanks him for stopping by and says that he's a fan of his work in a certain show, but his drug use is too adult for the kids, so he has to block him. The man walks out of the room as the junkie says, Yeah, nice lady. We then see the text, Be the boss of what your kids watch. Why would young kids be watching any material with heavy drug use anyways? Video Boy Video Boy is a late 90s PSA where someone's playing video games in a strangely lit room. They end up celebrating because they did something in their game, but they end up getting tired pretty quickly like they're 300 kilos or something. Like literally, they're celebrated for like, what, 5 seconds and they're already tired? They literally don't even move much, but they get puffed out so easily. And then a narrator comes in to ask, Exercise lately. As we see the text get up, get out, show up on screen. Obesity Prevention Sesame Street PSA This Sesame Street PSA has a character named Luis with Elmo as they're both jogging in the spot. Luis talks to us about how, as a parent, you should make sure your kids are doing physical activity and are eating right to make sure they're healthy and have healthy habits. Louise then says that it's the small things that make the biggest difference with yours and your children's health, and then Elmo says it's nap time as he falls asleep under Louise's arm. Tier 5. Cookie Monster PSA You can really tell how old this PSA is just by looking at the quality of it. But in this PSA, we see a cookie monster at a table as a narrator asks if they're going to eat cookies. Cookie Monster then says no as he pulls out different healthy foods such as meats, vegetables, and fruits. Until after Cookie Monster drinks milk, he gets a whistle on a plate. The narrator is obviously confused, so he confusingly says a whistle, and Cookie Monster says that it gives him strong lungs. And after blowing the whistle, he says cookies as a bulldozer tips a bunch of cookies on Cookie Monster. 55 saves lives. In 1977, PSA talks to the viewer about how 55 miles per hour saves lives, and they do this by starting off the PSA with a narrator saying, For hour, you save gasoline, which is real money these days. At 55, you save yourself troubles you really don't need. The narrator then gets to the main reason, and that's because 55 saves lives. Since 1974, 55 has been the single biggest factor in reducing highway deaths. As it's the main reason why less people are dying on the roads at the time, and apparently reducing the amount of deaths by 36,000 people. Babysitter. Oh boy, so Ad Cancel really thought it was a good idea to collaborate with Autism Speaks, hey? But in this 2000s PSA, we see a mother as they're gonna leave the babysitter with her daughter, as the mother tells her that she has left all the details she needs around. Narrator then says, The odds of a babysitter calling 911? 1 in 1400. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism? 1 in 150. This surprisingly isn't a terrible PSA, but not a good one. All I can ask though is, what does babysitting have to do with autism? Did they literally just use this just to have a comparison? SUV A 2009 PSA follows a family in a car as one of them in the car smells something funny and the narrator talks about passing gas. Everyone hates the smell and they all cover their noses and this is how the PSA ends. Kids shouldn't be exposed to secondhand smoke. Don't pass gas, take it outside. Yeah, man didn't shit his pants, he was just smoking in the car, and honestly, I understand why they would cover their nose for that too. Cigarettes fucking stink. American Car American Car is a 1975 PSA where people dance to a car with an American flag on it as they get in the car. The whole PSA has people talk to the camera, encouraging people to carpool as less people are on the road when people carpool, and the song's being sung throughout the PSA about carpooling. Did there really need to be a PSA about carpooling? I sure as hell don't think so, but hey, obviously Ad Cancel thought in the 70s that they needed to do that. Big Daddy This is really strange, a PSA with fucking Godzilla in it. Yes, this is real. But we see Godzilla spending time with their child as the song My Best Friend from BG Studios is playing. But the footage we see on screen is from the 1967 Godzilla film called Son of Godzilla, and in this clip we see Godzilla's having fun with their son. This is until the narrator comes in saying, you don't need to be bigger than life to be a good dad. You just need to spend time with your kids. 